the bad randoms. Welcome to the Brawl Stars World Finals. Let's get rolling! What it do, baby? What's good, Brawl Nation? Hello and welcome, because it's time to do North America. It's F Dot here in the building as usual, and I've got T Kenny and Ready, and you guys here along with me. What's up, Ready? How you doing, man? Dude, I'm excited. It is the best time of the month. Every single month, we get to see the best players in North America. And now, it's the best for last in the sort of monthly final series that we get every month. Kenny, good to see you, bud. Good to see you as well. Favorite time of the month as well. Home region, almost to the halfway point in the year. Big month right here to see these teams compete. 
Great point. Halfway point into the year. But if you're just joining us, this is what we do on the program. So we're here for our monthly finals. We've got one region split into two pretty much. So we're going to take a look at North American East and North American West. And this is how we do it. Power match format. So you're familiar with the game, doing the same thing, picks and bans, etc. Eight team single elimination bracket is what the whole thing looks like. But we are looking at the semifinals here today. And of course, best of five all the way through. We play the real game. And so that's what we're jumping into. Tribe Gaming leads the North American East region with Monomami's in that second place. And Untamable Beasts, Tribe's opponent here in the semifinals on top. So throw the bracket at me. Let's take a look at where these guys are playing. Kenny, as we take a gander at said bracket, like I said, we're starting with this Tribe Untamable Beasts matchup, but Motomami's and Chazmat Gaming also playing today. Oh. All four of these teams very familiar with each other. Tribe Gaming, Untamable Beast, a little rematch as well. We'll get to see if Untamable Beast can bring it to the table this month. But for now, Tribe Gaming, last month's champions. I would assume the favorite for many coming into today. But on the second half of that bracket, I'm really excited to see if Chasmic Gaming in A can finally break away from these three, two losses. They've been so entertaining to watch, but just haven't quite made it to that grand finals yet. Shout out to Peaky Penguins, the real ones, Team Jesus, and Octos as well. Remember, it's like a super open, this is a super open format of gameplay. You qualify in the game. So come out, show up, and see if you can get up there and see what magic you can make as far as that's concerned. But right now, like I said, jumping into the semifinals, and we're going to do some predicting as well. So go ahead and get on event.brawlstars.com and toss your own predictions into the mix. But this is what our commentators have gone with. I think Tribe is kind of a standard look. Ready, set. Yeah, pretty much. I mean, we're looking at Tribe Gaming here. They did really, really well at a LAN just last month. I'm sure a lot of you tuned in to see what was going on in San Diego. Tribe took second place. So it's a good look for them. Also coming off of the back of the last few months, they've taken first place. Notably, though, being upset by Motomami's on one occasion. So will that happen again today? Motomami's, they've got to make it through that semifinals match first. And it's going to be a tough one. Uh, we seem to agree with that mentality as we're all predicting Chazmac to take the win in that second semifinal. I do think that second semifinal is going to be a little bit closer. Kenny, how are you feeling? You know, it's never super confident in North America. It's been a lot of craziness this weekend as well. I know you got to cast some EMEA. We just came off of South America where it was Upset City. We could be completely wrong coming into today, but I'm all about the chaos. I love to see what these teams can bring to the table. I think this is finally the month that Chasmic Gaming can break away. Tribe still the favorites for me. They most recently won. They had a solid showing at LAN a few weeks ago that we got to see as well. I think it's going to be interesting no matter how you spin it. But for now, I'm going to ride with Tribe Gaming. Yeah, it's going to be an interesting one for sure. And of course, like I said, this is just one side of the country. We've got another region coming at you as soon as the Grand Finals finish, like not even a break. So a lot of Brawl Stars action on the docket here today. Kenny, I want your thoughts on this next matchup, Tribe Gaming Untamable Beasts. You went with the Tribe Gaming prediction, but dig deeper. Give me more. I mean, I think Untamable Beasts are a great team, really fun to watch. I think their draft style is something unique to them, and they're a type of team that really likes to play with brawlers that they enjoy. Now we get a little bit of newness in terms of balance changes, some new map pools. I'm curious to see what Untamable Beasts bring to the table. Had the luxury of getting to watch some tribe scrims as well, and I've seen some interesting brawlers come up across multiple regions this weekend. Got to talk to Corey a little bit too, and I think some of these new brawlers may show up from time to time for either of these teams based on what I've seen. So I think we could have some fun. I'm watching out for Meg. I'm watching out for Amber. Everybody else is. But Shelly's kind of on my mind, depending on the map, too. Mm, we did see some Shelly across the world. So we are going to see the first match right about now. Kenny, we'll catch up with you after the business is dealt with and get your perspective on this one. Untamable Beasts is the squad formerly known as West Coast. Alex, second best in Toonie. Well, maybe not so much. Never mind. Alex, second best in Toonie. And then Tribe Gaming, Zulon, Tyrant, and as Livy are going to be the guys up front and ready. Listen, I asked Kenny the same thing. We, You went Tribe Gaming as well, but give me a little bit more. What's Tribe feeling like right now? 
Look, I, and really it goes beyond just what we're feeling right now, but also over the last several months, maybe even going all the way back to last year, they are simply the most mechanically skilled players in North America. A lot of players will, uh, players themselves, of course, putting these Tribe Gaming players in their top five repeatedly, every single one of them. The only area where they fall short is a draft. They seem to get out drafted every now and then uh, in some of these lower stakes matches, even nice. in the high stakes matches. Yeah, it's, it's a serious deal. <laughs> So I'm anticipating some <laughs> outdraft potential from Untamable Beasts. That is possible. You know, in Untamable Beasts, again, when we look at Alec and second best in Toonie, these guys have played on a number of different teams, sometimes even together as well. And these guys, listen, Alec knows his stuff. Uh, a big fan of the region, I would say. Alec is a, Alec is a guy who is very interesting. He takes the game seriously and is definitely a competitor. But he seems like he just is a big part of the spe uh, scene no matter what team he's on he's just out here coming to play Alec goes back in the scene a long way. I think especially if we look at like 2019, DreamHack Dallas uh, coming out a champion in that department and still sticking around in the scene, making a name for himself, turning a profit for himself too, and paying off, well, a lot of those, uh, you know, life expenses too. It's a lifestyle, the brawl brain, uh, brawl brain, of course, in full force. And looking at the predictions, it's not looking too hopeful for the Untamed Beast. I don't think it's really this dark though. Not dark. I don't think so as well. When you see a 70, when you see a 97 to three differential, it is important for me to tag that that's where people are voting, not how split the matchup is. And while Tribe Gaming is definitely the top card, I don't think it's that lopsided. Picks and bans are out. No Ash, which is one of the more favorite brawlers in this region, and no Mag, which is Mag. So first pick is Colonel Ruffs, the dog man. I yeah, love seeing the Colonel Ruffs in here. Just on this map in general, I think it also is pretty good at countering out a good number of things. Seems like Untamable Beast, they really don't like the stew either, which is one of those brawlers that does get countered out by Colonel Ruffs, but there are plenty of other things that this first pick deals with. Tribe Gaming, though, they do have to commit to a mid here if they want to be able to make full utilization of their last pick. They'll go ahead and pick that Gene, then follow things up with the Rico. And we know how scary literally every single one of these players can be on the Rico lane on this map. It's just one of those things that goes together with Hard Rock Mine, like bread and butter. Rico's so, so yeah. good on this map. So we'll see how Untamable Beast respond. It's going to be a tough lane to fight. I like how you mentioned all three of these players are kind of dirty on the Rico. I think that's the same thing with the Stu, is that Stu's just a brawler that, listen, if you're good, you play him real well. And uh, Ash comes, oh, is an RT ban. My mistake, friends. <laughs> Quick look at the bans, <laughs> incorrect, and Alec locks in the, the Ash. I just assumed they'd be banned in the Ash. Oh, well, Hard Rock Mine features the Thick Boy. This is totally true. I mean, well, I mean, one thick boy out of here is 8-bit, which is a little sad to see go. We'll see Untamable Beast get rid of that one, but it totally makes sense here that you would be, you know, getting rid of some of these prime tank counters if you're going to be picking one for yourself. Tribe Gaming, they're forced to respond by picking a tank counter. Surge is so, so good at this, but really, here's the way yep. you play this matchup. They picked that Colonel Ruffs really early on. It's, I think, quite clear that they were anticipating a possible Surge pick on the enemy side. Another thing is that by picking the Ash on their side, also notably, not banning it. They planned to have this go down. They have denied really the true potential of having a last pick on your side where you get to pick that ultimate counter yeah. pick. So I like the draft from Untamable Beast. It looks like it went pretty much exactly how they wanted it to. The Tribe Gaming has it on yeah, lock in the mechanics part. Yeah, I love the B selection there as well. Kind of just taking one last kind of tank jabber away. Mid control. Looks like it's reds, but it's not that cut and dry. Tyrant's pushed out a little bit, but second best still can't get in there. So good presence by Is Livy to kind of push this mid laner second best out. And honestly, Tyrant trying to step up might have a better shot at grabbing these and grabs too. Good stuff for both sides so far. Good number of gems acquired, but Untamable Beasts are playing this one very, very surgically. They kind of are in the driver's seat in this department unless they lose track of these lanes. We'll see Zulon sort of swap over to the left. His ideal matchup is versus Alec 26. That's a brawler that he counters. And now switching over to the right side, it looks like, nope, over to the left. It's so complicated to switch lanes as Surge in the early game if you don't have a super. He's so slow. Big pull, though, on the right side. Alec 26 falls. Zulon gets a free super out of that. And now Tribe Gaming get to start walking over this mid area. 
with as Livy falling. But the Zulon up. Super was was the Zulon Super reason enough for that pull? Because wouldn't you look for the the gem carrier? This is totally true. There's just no reason to go for a pull on second best because he gets to throw down that honey molasses and he has plenty of time to react since he's staying at just the edge of your range. It's a tough matchup here for Tyrant to pull the mid laner, so he's going to have to go for the side lanes and try and help out his teammates to win those individual matchups. All right, now Tribe Gaming two away from the countdown. Ultimately, it's pretty even as far as mid control is concerned. Alec gets pulled. Tries to get away, mid lane's popped, so is Alec. All three players down. Zulon's gonna zone up for the squad. 16 gems in Tyrant's pocket. 12 seconds to go before the dub. There's Livy, Tyrant, very secured all the way in their own ramparts. Tooney trying to push up second, looking for much of the same. The Protesto, really the logo of this team coming out, but no win to match. Tribe Gaming, despite a pretty slow start, have managed to pull things back in a pretty rock star victory in game number one. Loved seeing them force some of these lane matchups. I think it also looked like Untamable Beasts were getting a bit impatient. They didn't want to play this sort of like ring around the rosy, right? Swap the lanes the entire game and see where it goes from there. They tried to play it the old fashioned way and they were outmatched on basically every lane here. They might opt to take a different strategy in this next one or see if they can brute force it. Alec inching up early. And the Rico doing a good job of dealing with him and popped by Tyrant. That said, Untamable Beast kind of stepped forward, win the left lane matchup as well, and scoop up four gems just like that. Good start for Untamable Beast. It's going to be tough for them to maintain this as Zulon is pushing up versus Alex 26. Tyrant also trying to chime in. Here comes a big pull of free super for Zulon. It's already the exact same cycle that we saw in the last game. Tyrant, he's not going for the pull on Tooney or second best. They have a way of blocking the pull, but versus an Ash without a super, you're absolutely defenseless. Pulling them right into Zulon's clutches is basically a death sentence for any tank. The Zulon might have gotten a little overzealous. Here it comes. Big combo, a pinch on the left side. And now when Tamo will be to get to start sort of engulfing these back lines, especially out 26 as he tries to disrupt things. Not gonna be taken down quite yet. A good position for Untamable Beast though, they just need one more gem. Zulon versus Alec, and Alec is doing a great job here of just zoning out the opposition. Zulon can't get involved in the mid because he's gotta worry about this Ash. Nobody's paying attention. And because of that, Untamable Beast have mid control. They've got the countdown, and it looks like they've got themselves a game three here in our first set of the evening. Hugely, hugely punished there. I think really this all came down to a mistake from Tribe Gaming. We saw Zulon switch lanes, push up the left side, got way too aggressive versus Ash, and he paid the price when he got pinched between Ash and B. Unfortunate circumstance for Tribe, and it kind of stinks that you got to learn a lesson that way, but they do have a bit of a safety net. <laughs> they can still sort of take things back here. It is all tied up though. Untamable Beasts are just as close to taking the set as Tribe are. I really liked Alex, Alex's performance in that last one. His job as the tank, sometimes you usually, I think it's really easy to say, yeah, the tank goes in mid and kind of pushes players out to allow gem grit. No, Alex just went backline and sat there and demanded people pay attention while the rest of his team robbed the bank. Really, really cool kind of positioning coming out from the tank player there. And it's really one of the paradigms that makes Ash one of the best brawlers on this map. You're able to get into those enemy defenses and completely disrupt things. It's not really even about playing lanes there. If you completely disrupt the yeah. enemy side, then they're all forced out of position. And then Untamable Beast get to reap the rewards. But Zulon's playing hyper aggressive this time, but he's getting so much value already. Pushing backwards, Tooney forced to that back left. Alec 26 and a two-man pinch. There's just no escape from this. <laughs> Untamable Beast try to pick up the pieces, but Tribe Gaming have already gotten it decently. Yeah, definitely, and Tribe's just gonna continue that big pull out of the gene that has us tied up at five. So a lot of work just to kind of keep things neutral. And the gems are popping out here. Untamable Beasts can't grab it, but neither can Tribe with Alec lurking on the side. Zulon jumps on him, wins. And because of that, it's not a three on two because it's Libby pushed out by Tooney on the bottom side. Still comeback potential for Untamable Beast, so it's just going to be very, very difficult 
They're already at a decent deficit. Big pull on the right side, combo in from Zulon. He's got that level four. Whole lot of damage, whole lot of range to work with, and so much speed as Livy with the takedown on the left. And second best, forced all the way back to the respawn. It just doesn't really seem like there's a comeback potential here for Untamable Beast. Alec 26 can try and push up, but he's countered out by the left and the right lanes. Tyrant safe and sound all the way at the back. And there's just no way for Untamable Beast to get back here unless they really grit their teeth and get down to it. Alec 26 tries to circle around the back. Tyrant's pretty lit up, but there's That's not it. enough time for Alec 26 to make it over there. Tyrant with that final pull just to show up. Off, and that's set number one going to Tribe Gaming. Well played by Tribe. Really enjoyed watching uh, how Tribe kind of embraces their own individual play styles. We've seen Zulon time and time again on the Esh, and he utilizes his like eagerness to get involved on those tanky characters. Well, the surge works out as well by farming those supers, being able to pop them often and just being like, surprised, I'm already three, I'm already four, I'm just here to do damage. You mentioned it in that in that uh that third game where Zulon was just playing turbo aggressive. Oh, yeah. And honestly, I think the third game came off of the back of that performance. I think we got to see so many great sides of just Zulon's playstyle and what he can bring to a usually pretty passive tribe roster playstyle wise, but also just how he's playing the Surge and how it's pretty different from how we usually see it played. You'll notice if we had a heat map, I'm sure we'd see Red Hot in that mid area where those bushes are on Tribe Gaming's side. Just for Zulon, he's staying at mid for a good portion of the game, knowing that Ash is going to be waiting those bushes to figure out where Surge is before he makes a call. Ooh. Am I going to push up? Am I not going to push up? I think really Tribe Gaming, uh, other people should be taking notes about how they are playing the Surge into the Ash here. Though, on Table Beast, they got some pretty good stats on their side. Tony's looking pretty clean. Yeah, seven kills. Lucky for him and Zulon matching up there. Alec, on the other hand, this is interesting. You know, I said, ooh, as soon as I saw it, doing just 59 average DPS. But when I looked at their performance that they won off of uh, Alec's performance on the Ash, he was really just zoning. His job isn't to do damage all the time. His job is to take up space. Sometimes that's by way of dealing damage. But if you're just playing back and forth against the, uh, against the, the barrel, it's all good. So play the objective. But you got to find the win. Tribe Gaming one in the pocket. Now looking towards Heist. And the picks and bans are here. And the Dynamite has been banned. And the Nita has been first picked. Welcome to your 2023 monthly finals. <laughs> yeah, and welcome to North America, too. We, we get to see a bit of wackiness yep. up here from time to time. But I'm sort of curious as to where exactly this Nita is going to fall into place. One of the big things that stands out to me is they have gotten rid of a thrower that can hard counter in a lot of ways. Barley is another brawler that would be fairly good versus Nita. Um, I think another thing that Untamable Beasts are considering here is that, once again, Tribe Gaming have that last pick, and they don't want to get dominated by something that gets all up over their safe, something that dominates in close range. So pretty wise for Untamable Beasts to be forward thinking like that. Is Nita the way? I guess we'll find out if they actually manage to win well, with it or not. <laughs> I mean, we've seen we've seen a little bit of Nita uh, internationally. I think we've seen Nita in Heist before. If you're going to pick Nita, Heist is kind of a nice spot to really be playing her. Map dependent for sure. We'll take a look at Hot Potato specifically. But also, don't forget the recent buff, 20% extra damage out of the bear. So certainly a reason to look is, is what I'm going to drive home there. Yes, I'm a fan. I think it's a nice pick. But paired up with the bell and the penny. A lot of everything here. So you've got the turret. You've got some up close and personal with the bear lady. And then, of course, long range nonsense out of uh, out of uh, bell. I don't hate this draft. Me neither. I mean, well, well OK, I, I love it from the perspective that we get to see Nita on the screen. One of my favorite brawlers to watch in this game. And Toonie, simply one of the best tank players, if not the best in North America at the helm of this brawler. It's going to be an absolute treat to watch. My main concern, though, is just that, yeah, I can get pretty outranged. And yeah, here come Tribe Gaming with the last viable thrower. But also, where exactly is this going to find value? You will be able to get good area control. You'll also be able to take down those penny turrets quite effectively since she has good range. It's just not very good yep. DPS. So if a bear gets down, it could be quite troublesome for Tribe Gaming. I like the... I like the Willow pick for no statistical reason. I just want to see Willow played. Gotcha! <laughs> That's it! That's the whole reason! But for real, 
I am excited to kind of check this out and check it out from Tribe Gaming's perspective also. I think when it comes down to Hot Potato, this is a map that will allow a lot of the nonsense in the mid. So I'm here for the Nita pick and Alec is using the objectively correct skin of Shiba Nita. So of course this character is just, can you get that, that super or not? Zulon's going to use the range and the curveball against her. So I like this right side matchup for Tribe Gaming. Yeah, it's going to be very difficult for Alec26 to fight this one. We'll see if Zulon's going to falter at all. Tuning on the left side, though, has managed to push through. Tyrant also dispelling things in mid. Has that speed at the ready as Livy also trying to defend things in close range versus Tuni. Not having a whole lot of luck. <laughs> Still take down with the poison damage and Zulon getting some chip damage on that safe. We're not seeing a whole lot of huge damage dealers like we typically see in a heist. Really the only exception to that would be Tuni on this penny. He needs to reliably get up that turret though. As Livy also on the left side has his Ooh. turret at the ready. Ouch. Take down at mid. Now this could be the opportunity for Tribe to push things forward but Untamable Beast keep this aggression moving forward and and while they are dying quite a bit, they're keeping the line of scrimmage at mid. Alec made the lane swap from the right, went mid, had a lot of success, went left, and immediately got killed by his Libby. And that opens the door for the left side push. So far, Tribe Gaming doing 30 plus percent. Untamable Beasts just under 20. And Alec trying to change that, but can't and won't. The rest of Tribe standing strong. About a minute to go here, ready. And the lead in Tribe's hand, but I'm not sure this one's over. Now, well, if Zulon manages to punch through on the right side, it could be difficult. Here comes the bear down with the faux fur. Zulon has to get rid of this. Alec 26 continues to push through. Tyrant may be taken down. As Livy also has this super he can use to get a bit of bonus damage, but it's not going to just yet. Easy take down to Alec 26, and they're just playing for control. They have this lead. Don't want to let it go. Is Livy still going to go for something here, though? He might go for that control on a tuning, but second best comes in with a pinch. It's an easy kill for him. Tyrant also pushing forward. Easy kill at mid, and a little bit more chip damage in on the same. It's not over yet for Untamable Beast, but they are operating at a huge deficit. Love the turnaround there from Willow. It's Livy did die, but wound up trading out, which is super important so that the kill doesn't lead to any damage. Tribe's still only 25% done on theirs as they continue to wreak havoc across the way. Seven seconds to go. That's about it. Untamable Beasts watch as their safe is broken open. We don't actually hit zero. Tribe Gaming just do the damage. Because of that, they'll take game one in our heist. Brilliant stuff so far for Tribe Gaming. Love the way that they managed to play the Willow here. They didn't actually make that much use for Super, which is a little disappointing from a viewer perspective, but I completely understand from a competitive perspective, right? You're basically playing like a longer range Barley that has a bit less DPS and doesn't have that Super that gets you a ton of zone control. There's Livy though, over here on the left side, cornering in Alec 26. It's the optimal lane for him, really, since there's nothing that Alec can do versus Will as long as she has those walls up. And even if she didn't, it would be so close or rather so difficult to get close. First off, Tribe Gaming getting those entry frags. A bit of damage in on that safe two. Nothing huge yet with the speed coming in. Zeon could wreck havoc. Tyrant just winning in the mid lane. Great shade over from Alec, but he can't make it happen. That's exactly the rotation he needed to make. But as Livy steps up, takes down his lane opponent. <laughs> and finds the kill real quick, allowing Tribe Gaming to step up. Get a quick 31% done. Easy. Now, uh, they sure do make it look easy. Untamable Beasts are also feeling a lot of the pain. Here comes Zulon, perfect placement over here. Lots and lots of damage on that safe and does end up getting taken down as everyone respawns, but it's a huge, huge amount that he contributed. 12% there and Tribe Gaming still decided 100% on their safe team. Starting to play control though, trying to push things back. Slivy not quite able to shut down that turret, so he's going to have to basically play versus two brawlers at once. Big action on the right side, too, as Alec26 and second best get a takedown. They finally get to focus in on this safe. Alec26 also takedown on the right side. This could be good for Untamable Beast as we dip below a minute on the clock. They have done that first bit of damage on the safe. Big window open, but not a lot of damage dealt. Alec, the second bear of the game, better than the first one, but not by much. Second best kind of watched Bruce get taken down by Zulon. And now mid and left lane pushing forward by Untamable Beasts. Alec kept at bay, which is the worst situation for Untamable Beasts. 
And Tyron says go. Max Speed is activated and is living on the left-hand side. Nobody to deal with him. Just going for the safe. Right side, Alec dies as well to the spike. And it's just big, heavy damage here, ready, set. 15 seconds to go. I don't think Untamable Beasts are going to be able to match Tribe's 29% left. It's not probable, and it might not even be possible either. Second best is going to give it his all and get a bit more damage in there, but it's just not even close. Another Protesto down from the guy, but a signature pin from Zilon's side too, celebrating a victory in the second set going their way. First of all, a steamroll pretty much so far from Tribe Gaming. They've only dropped one game along this way, and they're looking clean. As Libby always leaves everything on the field, every single time we come to him after, in, like uh, game one to game two is whatever, but at the end of a set, he's always just like, every time, even when it seems like, no disrespect to my friends on the beasts, but that one looked kind of easy for Tribe Gaming here. Really not that much competition across the way. Um, and, you know, I think I think my thesis here is just the, the Nita position. I don't see why you don't just shove her mid in the grass to farm that bear. This is true. I mean, she's really outmatched in a lot of these situations. Another thing is that Untamable Beasts, or rather Tribe Gaming, can rotate their brawlers on really any lane that counters out Nita. I think it was, well, there's no doubt about it whether it was a bold pick, but it probably wasn't that great of a pick in retrospect, right? There was just not a single brawler that Nita was very viable against on this map. She's outranged and outgunned by Spike. The exact same for Willow. There's just not even any getting close to Willow on that matchup. And versus Max, okay, you know, maybe it's a bit more debatable, right? Maybe more what you're saying, F dog, sure. where it's like, let's shove her up in the bushes, but the stats don't lie, right? This was a complete knockout from Tribe Gaming. Mm-hmm. And last match, I said, you know, Alex's job, and I, I'm always the guy to kind of mention how sometimes your role doesn't wind up on the scoreboard and like that, you know, that just stinks, bro. Nah, this time you have to put up numbers, man. You're playing a damage dealer mm -hmm. and it just didn't happen. Let's focus on the positive though here. Tribe gaming 200 plus for all three of the players. That's really what did it. At the end of the day, you do zero DPS while dead and tribe gaming killed everybody 32 times in total for the boys. And so because of that, we move on to hot zone. Two big ones for Tribe Gaming. One away from taking it and going to finals. We're doing Ring of Fire right now. We'll do Ball Ball, Backyard Brawl, and Knockout out in the open if we get any victories from the Untamable Beasts. But for now, Tribe's vibing like those crocodiles. Just chill it, man. Moisturized and in their zone. <laughs> in their zone and well that's another kind of uh, descriptor i would use to describe untamable beasts or at least what i would expect from them this time i really do expect them to have a pretty strong presence in the mid capturing that objective this time because even though like in spite of those stats that we saw post set in the last one untamable beasts still had a formidable presence at mid they were dying repeatedly yes but by and large they were keeping the fight at mid and didn't have their safe taken down not all the way down to zero yeah. at least so we'll see if tribe gaming are able to grapple with this one. Tribe are much more of control players. I'd say they're a bit more prone to, yes, playing for control, yes, getting more kills, but not getting that capture on the zone. B, I think, is going to be a brilliant tool for establishing the control, but it's another one of those brawlers that yeah. I can very much see staying off of the zone for a long time since uh -huh. she operates at peak performance at max range, which yeah, does not put her right. on the zone. First pick Penny for Untamable Beasts. Immediately like this better than the Nita. Uh, not specifically with Brawl, but as far as, uh, not specifically Brawler overall, although probably yes as well, but also just the science of the selection. Mm. First pick Nita, like you said, you're gonna be asking for some counters. First pick Penny, doesn't really tell anybody else. Uh, doesn't really tell anything. Amber and B across the way. Tribe Gaming taking Ring of Fire literally here. <laughs> I mean, this is totally true. Uh, I think I think that Amber is. Um, I, I want to just best. sit back and just like watch her do her thing. 
because here's the deal. She has this new gear that slows down enemy brawlers by 20% as long as they're inside of her fire fuel. That's it. It's, it's just a passive ability. That means that an Amber can throw down a super on a lane that she decides to not play for the entire game, never burn it up, and just let that teammate playing that lane fight versus a slowed down enemy for the whole game. It's really, really strong if you can play it correctly. And Tamil Beasts have a tall task on their hands of countering out the Amber. The Crow is an absolute classic way of doing that. And if Alec 26 is on the Crow, then I'm excited to see this in action. But still, I'm trying to have one more brawler that they can use to accent all of this. Always a fan of Gust paired up with an assassin. You give a you give a backline diver a shield, and that's just frightening. So a nice look there for the Gus. Immediately, I like this comp better on the side of Untamable Beasts than their last go around. And Tribe Gaming bringing exactly what you want to the tape. This is the composition that you kind of want for Ring of, for uh, any real hot zone, in my opinion. You've got giant area denial, giant area denial, and giant area denial combined with long range damage. The B was the last one. But realistically, man, you just there's going to be so much garbage on the point that Untamable Beasts are going to have a hard time uh, safely standing on anything. Yeah, so hard to agree here. And I think another thing worth drawing attention to is that this Mr. P pick here from Zulon is going to be good for taking down the turret that Tuni throws down. There's yeah. not an effective way of firing over the walls unless it's, you know, Tyrant throwing that oil. But it's probably better for him to actually to throw that oil on the left side and then rotate over to the right. I mean, look, I'm no coach, but it could work pretty well. Could be the slow coming in <laughs> at mid. Yeah, here's Alec 26 slowed down. And as Libby's going to try and reap the profits of this, consistently lining up the shots. But second best still seems to have some good dodges in here. And the Table Beasts actually are nice. taking this early game lead. Or not. Let's try the gaming fire back. I made that call a little too early. Yeah, it was, it was Tyrant winning on the left-hand side that allowed everything to open up here for Tribe Gaming. 21 and counting now. As is Libby positioned on the point. Zulon on the right hand side. Tyrant is just being a nuisance. No more bushes, no more life. Everyone's slowed in the middle. Uh, Amber is going nuts, but really it's Tyrant that's playing. But Untamable Beast just avoid the Amber player, push the right side, and try to win that way. Tyrant now expending that last gadget, also throwing down some slow, burning up Alec 26, taken down. Tuni on the right side also has a super that he can work with, has a gadget. Zulon closing in. Yeah, a bit of discovery of each other in those bushes. Zulon gets a last laugh, take down, and throws down the turret. It's really tough for Untamable Beast to grapple back and get any kind of control here. Tuni will assist throwing down his turret on the left side, but I don't really see Untamable Beast bringing this one back. This is toxic, man. This is toxic. Tyrants just... And see, this is the thing that we're seeing out of these Amber players! <laughs> he finally lights it up! He dies for it. Oh, I was just about to bring up how you just use half of your super. You don't actually light it on fire because you're looking for the space control. But there he does, lights it up. on Tamo Beast can't contend. 35% for them and sort of counting. But I think their positioning on the point ready is a little fleeting. Certainly is, as they're running out of gadgets here, especially Toonie. No more salty barrels left, a little slow action in here. No one contacted with it, and in fact, Untamable Beasts are dodging so effectively that they could get pinched. Here's Toonie falling on the left side. Second best is up next. Does manage to throw that shield on himself, but it's just temporary. Tribe Gaming, get that team kill. And Toonie, not going to be able to ameliorate any of this. Tribe Gaming take the game win, and they head on to a match point. Well played by Tribe. I think they used exact... This is what you want out of your professional team. Listen, they're bringing the new stuff that just got patched and they're playing it correctly. I think there's going to be a lot of beauty in watching these pro players kind of decide how long, like, how much oil to leave on the ground versus when you actually light it up and say, go. That's going to be fun to watch for sure. And, and the Mr. P, man. Obviously kind of taken to deal with Penny Turret, but also just providing good damage. Zulon's out here just being weird. Exactly, like being weird. Like it goes beyond 
just the Mr. P and what his kit is specifically, but also Tribe Gaming sort of playing outside of what they usually would. I think they've really broken things down and analyzed, you know, what helps another top team in this region, especially after the last land, what propels them to the forefront of the meta and picking up some of Which these is brawlers. Huge. Yes, you have to learn from other players within your region, even if you're a top player. And they're doing that so effectively. Tyrant, of course, on the Amber also just playing a brawler that he's comfortable on uh, that has also gotten a recent buff. It's just a great thing for Tribe Gaming as a whole that's, you know, not within their control. The balance changes are not within their control, but they have managed to get right. a good bit of control at mid. Untamable Beasts are firmly pushing back, though. Well, that's part, that, that's part of it. I mean, uh, dealing with the variance. Right now, a little bit of variance in our gameplay as Untamable Beasts find the lead and for the first time, all set, pretty much. But quickly, second best find himself teammateless. But here comes Toonie. Nice kill on as Livy. That's going to open things up a heck of a lot. Alec even follows up. Get on the point, boys. Untamable Beasts. They are gaming right now. And they're opening themselves up for some W. It's hard to precisely pinpoint what is working so much better for Untamable Beast here, but it seems like from a top-down perspective, Tyrant is having a much more difficult game this time. He hasn't been reliably getting those supers out, but he is getting a kill, getting another super, and just as I say that, they might actually get this comeback. 92% so far captured for Untamable Beast. It's just got to be a good, solid push-in from them. They have plenty of time to do so. Take down on the right side, out 26 Bro. gets to heal up from the Ghost 2. Second best now entering his Livy, trying to do his best to keep things off, but second best in Alec, enter from the right. It's a comeback, a take back for Untamable Beast as they prolong this match point. Really, really well played by Untamable Beasts. I think one, they paid a lot more attention to the Amber, and I think Tyrant's decision to uh, to light the oil was also wrong this time around. I think it was right in game one, and I think it was wrong in game two. I don't think that's why they lost Greddy, but that is going to be a big playing point of this character for sure. And so that's my eyes are all over the super and how Tyrant utilizes it because I think it's a big impactful point in this matchup. Not only that, but who's playing on his lane? We saw just that. Alan 26 is going to get taken down. A little parting shot there, but now Tyrant is out of a super that could have been used for burning up more bushes or for getting some slow out here. We'll be returning back to the battlefield a bit faster. Here comes a gadget in the left side, trying to auto-aim down. Alec 26 could get the last laugh. Alec avoiding all that burning and getting the lane victory. Second best, much of the same with some slick dodges versus as Livy. Now Toonie in able to push up on the right side with that shield active. Great prudence from Untamable Beast as they match up Toonie on Zulon, knowing that he can pierce through a lot of these enemies. So as Livy mm. and Zulon get a good pinch. This is the teamwork that we got to see. It's kind of probably put Tribe Gaming back on the hot zone here. Still got to get past second yeah. best's pretty slimy dodges. Well, Alec and Tyrant, the matchup goes the way of Tyrant by way of second best. Those assists are really what's making UB work out. Alec has been the large, I, I think Alec's success has been the biggest difference here for Untamable Beasts in game two and now in game three. The Crow has just been confirming these kills and it's so important to get these guys off the field rather than just pushed out. 75 to 30% at the moment, Tribe Gaming on the point, but Untamable Beasts on the lead. Tribe Gaming starting to push back though. Second best is staying just out of range on the opposing side. Well, Protesto down from the guy too. Tuni also holding on to that super pretty securely. Take down the left side as Alec 26 falls. Tyrant now gets to push up with that slowing down. It's gonna be so dangerous for second best to try and push in and stay alive. That said, really just one push is all that Untamable Beasts need. And we're gonna take a victory here and head into the following set. Tribe Gaming continue. Their assault on the left to take down to his Livy could be a death sentence, though. Troublesome. As red are on the point now. 90% is hard to come back from. And just like that, mid lane gone. Zulon here, but the game not. Untamable Beasts get the game and the set. And we're going to Brawl Ball. Exciting, exciting, exciting. And hey, I'll tell you what, I called it. I called it. This is really just favorable to their play style. This is really just how Untamable Beasts play. They, you know, might go down frequently, uh, but they'll still have that sort of positioning. I'll also say, though, I was really impressed. Um, something that I wasn't really expecting was 
how effectively second best was able to face on that gust lane versus B. Typically, B yeah. is such a problem to face. Second best just had those good dodges in. Also kind of took advantage of how Tribe Gaming have a tendency as a group to play this game. Second best, he'll go for those dodges. As Livy, he'll try to stay at the edge of his range and play things really carefully, right? Play those footsies, stay just on the edge of his range. It pushed Tribe Gaming off the point consistently, and Untamable Beasts were able to reside on there longer as a result. As soon as you're bringing that up, we get a chance to see second best. It's essentially SB's highlight reel, where he's just <laughs> dodging everything. So apropos. But I also think that, not to take anything else away from Tooney and second best, it's like you said, the gust play was fantastic. I find that team, I find that Alec teams wind up in these situations sometimes where it's just, they're pretty good, but not finding the dubs until Alec just goes, all right, man. I guess I'll do it. <laughs> 12 put downs for the Crow player. And again, a lot of damage coming from specifically mid lane, but then Alec supering in and confirming the kill. And Hot Zone is absolutely one of these modes where there's a difference between, you know, some, some game modes, a, t uh, a technical knockout where you get them 5% and they got to push back and heal up. Sometimes that's good enough. But in Hot Zone, you need to confirm these kills. And Alec just gets it done really really big part of what allows his team to find this w in my opinion and we'll head on to set number four brawl ball and again we're going to knockout if the beasts win this one as well but they do have to get there and so brawl ball on the docket what are your thoughts as far as big picture compositions what do you want to see uh, I mean, you say big picture. I, I almost went ahead directly into, like, the minute details. I want to see the Alec 26 buzz, man. I really hope we get to see some of that stuff here. But still, a uh, lot of other options in here. RT absolutely comes to mind. A brawler with essentially no counters, really. You get in close range of the guy, boom. He uses his super and hits you for 4,000 damage immediately. You want to play long range? Good luck, because he's going to follow up with a really high damaging shot if he's hit you for the first time. And that mark lasts for a very long time as well with the use of the super. Until it be so, they have a few good brawlers in their arsenal already. There's a strong combo of the Gene and the Max, and it also sets them up for yeah. getting a pretty solid final pick, something that benefits a lot from the max speed it's also just so incredibly generic yes not neither of these characters need somebody specific to help them out just max goes fast on brawl ball and gene is, has the gene hand right like that's whatever last pick you need to pay attention to the enemy comp to pay attention to what you guys are talking about maybe somebody's hand hurts and needs to play a different character you have a completely open-ended draft here for untamable beasts so we like that note in for production rt is going to be joined here by amber as we get the lock in there forgive our graphics for the moment third pick here for tribe will be that's the end of my sentence oh b get it uh, to be or not to be is often a question we have to ask ourselves in the North American scene. And yeah. We should both be fired. <laughs> it looks, looks like <laughs> Tribe Gaming went with, yeah, well, we'll never know which one they <laughs> which one they chose. Okay, but in all seriousness, Untamable Beast, this is actually kind of a tall order for what they'll respond with. Buster, Buster. is their selection. Okay, you know, love to see the Buster from time to time. He's also able to reflect a lot of damage, especially if we look into someone like Zulon um, on this Amber, who I'm sure it will change hands. You know, maybe we'll see Tyrant pick up this Brawler instead. But that said, so, uh, Alec 26 is going to be able to reflect a lot of the damage here. We could also see this Brawler change hands. Tooney is kind of the resident tank player on this roster. A whole lot of potential for counterplay here, but I would say that Tribe Gaming do have the advantage for the majority of this set. Absolutely. And I, so I really like Untable Beasts. I think Tribe Gaming has, I agree with you. But Untamable Beasts have some real cute stuff going on here. I want to point out mainly the interaction with Max and Buster. If Buster's using slow-mo replay, I mean, getting the getting the pull while sped up by Max is an oppressive combo. You just get eaten by that. And even if not, you're just getting chased down by Buster damage as well. So Tribe Gaming have a very traditional composition, but Untamable Beasts have some things kind of in their pocket for sure. Unless they just lose, <laughs> left side wins. Alec in trouble, gets pulled, but honestly, as Livy's kind of happy about it, respawns come in probably too soon. And yes, Zulon can. No, he can. Just the sheer perseverance 
to walk through all those players. I was going to say, I think I found what they had in their pocket, but it wasn't quite what they wanted, right? Ball pocketed on their side. Now they try to shift the tide. Second best pushing up on the right side. Uh, 26 soon to follow. Take down on the left as Tooney falls as Livy and Zulon attempt to play defense. Good slow and Alec 26 also getting pinched around the left side. Fire down from Tyrant. Now Tribe Gaming get to bounce back. That was actually a splendid reaction Dude. to that push in from Max. Great reaction to that yeah. speed, which can often be really, really tough to weather. That was a pro play. Like, give us the replay, please. <laughs> push up here from Tribe Gaming. As Alec trying to zone as Libby sticks him in the corner and sticks him in the ground. The rest of the team, though, in trouble as it's a three on two here after as Libby falls down. And the other two aren't really doing much. Ooh. <gasps> Just kidding. Tyrant does it by himself. <laughs> 1v2, V3, baby. Zulon gets the kill, but, you know, this is why it's important not to stagger your deaths or, or your kills, rather. Because Tyrant gets in there, but everybody dies after the fact, so the respawns come in, and defense is good. I call this guy best Amber NA for a very good reason, and we're seeing it really before yeah. our very eyes. Take down to Alec 26, like it's nothing. And Tribe Gaming get to start pushing things back. If they get a super, they could actually end this one right up the middle. Great pull in. Is that what Tyrant you want? does get taken down, though. Second best also has that speed. This has got to be the hero play. Some kind of push in. No, almost looks impossible, actually. Ten seconds left. Just no way of accessing that ball. That's going to be it. Tribe Gaming here, one goal to none. And Tyrant just still doing it, man. I have been an Amber fan since this brawler came out, and Tyrant is just paying off. Give it up to Tyrant Star, playing the flamethrower, and just what's cool is that Amber is back in the meta or in the meta because of that change to the gear. And that's not what we saw here. We just saw Tyrant wrecking people with her basic attack and that's just cool exactly that i mean we're seeing sort of some of the talents of tribe gaming being drawn out by a minor meta shift but it also goes to show just how huge these tiny tiny changes to brawlers can be in this respect it is a tiny change because we're not even really seeing him make use of it he does try and get that slow on a second yeah. best looks like he'll still get the takedown Tuni also at risk of falling an easy pull on a tyrant could secure him a kill but he doesn't want to risk it just yet. Looking to utilize this for defense instead. And if second best manages to get a speed after a single kill, they might be able to push things to the other side to get a quick goal. Grouping up against the Tyrant Amber is probably not the play, boys. And Untamable Beasts. Thought they were going to shift to the right lane, but that's not the case. Tooney looking for a pull on the Tyrant. The tyrant knows it, so he's pushing him away. Let's take a look at the other side as Zulon and Izlibi also have supers available. When are they going to make their move ready? Is it after that death? Is it after that death? Is it after that death? I think so. <laughs> Goal open, and Tyrant's the one that scores. Brilliant plays really from everyone on the roster, but my eyes are pretty much locked on Tyrant. This guy has been getting so much value for his team, and that there's a pretty good reason why he's also repeatedly getting pulled in by Tooney. He's looking to try and maybe shift over to that left side for that valuable pull. Second best does have a super, though. Here it comes. Got to see a good pull in. Chuni gets that pull. Take down into Tyrant. But now 26 also falls. Second best could go for the play. He's got to use this gadget. Maybe a little bit early, actually, as his Livy is now mm. able to defend this side. No more invincibility for you. And take down. No more life for you, either. Sent back to the respawn. 35 seconds remain. The Table Beast tried to Has maintain this offensive push, but it's just running out of steam. Hesitation leads to devastation. Oh, yeah. You know, if Max goes in there and goes for it, maybe he gets the goal. But by sitting there and trying, we watched that decision be made. And by taking time to make that choice, you have 0% chance. So Untamable Beast's kind of stuck in the mud here. Good pull in from Alec. Doesn't get the kill versus Zulon, and that might be it. If Big Z falls down there, I think Untamable Beast ties it up and brings us to an overtime. Instead, they do no such thing, and Tribe Gaming bring us to the finals.
beautiful performance here from Tribe Gaming, and just about what we expect from the guys too, but it never... It, is that guy still wearing a wristband? That's like from weeks ago, dude. That thing's gotta be nasty. You gotta take that off and hang that up on the wall with the rest of the decorations. Not to take any respect away from the champions here, though. They're going on to the grand finals with an amazing performance. It's great stuff. Tribe Gaming coming out here and playing. This is kind of what we expect out of this squad. Storied, and you know, we kind of touched on it, but I want to go deeper. I, I, I want to drive this point home right quick, is that Tribe Gaming are known for being kind of the standard metagame players. They play what the tier list says, they play what you're supposed to, and we're seeing a little bit of different stuff this time around. Now, Untamable Beasts are really doing the weird stuff, but Tribe Gaming are venturing outside of what used to be their comfort zone. And I think for a team whose, you know, big picture storyline is trying to return to greatness, I think that's exactly what they need to do. And I'm seeing shots of brilliance like I used to see with Old Tribe. And I think really this can be the new normal going forward. We're seeing just gradually creep towards this kind of stuff. But in playing the Amber B twice in a row, they have sort of revealed their hand a little bit. Oh my gosh, holy stats on the side of Tribe Gaming, but <laughs> really more talking Tyrant here, 14 kills. There was just about nothing that Untamable Beast could do versus this, and we didn't even really see the slow being in play that much, though we did see moments nope. where it shut down an entire lane. It was completely unplayable for the Beasts, and I think this is gonna have to be a hot point of banning and in discussion in the Grand Finals. Well, the MVP coming at you. I would have voted for Tyrant after that one, and with you guys voting on event.brawlstars.com, you make me look smart. Tyrant is going to be the most valuable player here, as he certainly was the most valuable Amber in some of those matches. But yeah, I mean, Tyrant just gets it done. Real, real cool stuff. So fantastic job here by Tribe Gaming. They'll be going into the finals and should be a fun gander. But first, ready. What do we have to do before finals? Well, I mean, we got to take a little bit of a break here, but we also have to determine another sort of set of brawlers to face up versus them. And this one, I think, is going to be a whole lot of fun. You almost got there. We have another semifinals to get to. We've got Chaz Mac Gaming playing against their opposition. We'll see you in just a few minutes. Don't go anywhere. We'll catch you after the break. those dinosaurs it's f dot and kenny in the building one semi-finals down tribe gaming waiting in the finals motomami's versus chaz Mac gaming kenny what's good how are you i'm doing good that was a nice little round one there of semi-final number one we got the prediction right which is always nice but it was really exciting to watch tyrant is quite the spectacle on that amber so much fun in that first one yeah, I mean, this is a, an enigmatic character, plays a little different from other brawlers. And this is always what's fun, is that she's always had that level of devastation, but maybe a little bit left to the wayside. You give her gear, and all of a sudden, not only do we see that gear at play, but we see all of the other elements of her kit as well. So very cool to see Tyrant kind of lock that down. I wonder if we'll see that out of the free agents or CMG here, as we've got a whole nother set of semis to jump into best of five as per usual. Motomami's took down Team Jesus in a 3-0. Chaz Mike Gaming did lose one to Octos, but it do not matter. Both teams are here in the semifinals looking up at Tribe Gaming. 
yeah, both are going to be looking for this opportunity to rematch them once again. I'm sure Tribe Gaming would be welcome to either of these teams as well, as it was a close one against Chasmic Gaming last month in a 3-2 situation. Of course, month number one, they played Moto Mommies, and Moto Mommies actually won that matchup. So I'm sure both these teams are very keen at some revenge at Tribe Gaming. I think it's going to be a hard-fought one, to say the least. Hard-fought. Yeah, I'm going to go with that. That's what we will uh, see for sure. Off the top, Motomami's Luffy, Solar, and Killer. These guys, Luffy has been a pillar of this scene for a long time. Solar and Killer, certainly no slouches themselves. Give me the beat report. Give me the scouting report. Give me the, give me the do's and do nots about Motomami's, Kenny. Moto Mommies are a great team. I think this is somebody that's really proven that they can be at the top of the region at times. You know, a little slower last month. Didn't quite make that grand finals appearance like they did in month number one. But nonetheless, still have a lot of points accumulated. When you get those grand finals and make them consistently, it's going to allow for them to kind of pave the way for them to get that LCQ spot, that world finals guarantee spot. All four of these teams that we see today definitely have a chance at that. But making another run of the grand finals here would be huge for them and even bury CMG further down the leaderboards, which could be even more important for them. Tostadas, RBM, and Fade in the black and yellow here for Chaz Mac Gaming North America. Again, a storied team. These guys, we know what to kind of expect out of these guys. We've seen them all the time. I just like watching Toast, Fade, and RBM. I think they are fun to watch. Full stop. I'll give you analysis later. But these guys just have fun on the field, and I appreciate that. Yeah, this is definitely a team that has piqued my interest as well. They've been super entertaining to watch these first two months in the semifinals, but they haven't quite gotten over that 3-2 loss. It's been two months in a row. It's been got to be devastating. The mental game has to be one thing to keep in mind, but seeing all these guys in the same room is also super exciting. It shows how seriously they take this, how badly they want to finally make that grand final. So of course, for Chas McGamey as an organization, they've been at this for a little bit now. Lots of rotation in these players, so getting a win here today and making a grand finals would be huge for them as players as an organization and for NA East in general very cool to see Chaz Mack all squatted up as well that's an important part I mean synergy in esports sir uh, we say those words all the time man but it's real and we've heard from a number of teams that you know squatting up in the same physical place is super super good does present some sort of you know negative aspects that you have to learn for sure but i think Chaz Mac are pros they've been around the block before and so this is all positives for them as we jump in to our first matchup here or our second matchup of the day on this side of the coast and so Chaz Mac gaming coming in here is it fair to say that moto Ma is it fair to okay 85 percent of the audience <laughs> think Chaz Mac gaming are going to go ahead and take it i put my prediction there as well is it fair to say that Chaz Mac gaming is the top card to be fair, I don't know if it is. I think Chaz Gaming. a lot of people believe in them. They were challenged Tribe very closely last month. They were close against Moto Mommies in month number one, but nonetheless, they still haven't gotten to that grand finals yet. I think 85% to 15%, it's something you talk about especially, doesn't always reflect the odds of them winning necessarily, but honestly, they haven't gotten a grand oh, yeah. finals under their belt. Moto Mommies do. A little roster change here, at least in terms of a player we saw as well, Solar getting in the mix too, so that's a little unknown as well, but nonetheless, I'm putting my faith in CMG here as well. I think they finally get it right this month they've been so close clearly a good team and a great start to their draft Ooh. as well well meg is just full stop one of the best brawlers in the game in my opinion right now recent change uh she's just better aggression does hurt her a little bit and looking at this draft we've got the big stun out of buzz gray coming out and luffy on the gale I uh, went very confidently into this composition here, Kenny. But this one's a little, uh, a little outside my comfort zone. Oh, I've missed the old man, F. Dot. Gale is my favorite brawler. I love watching him play. He has not been nearly as strong in recent history. I don't know why. I couldn't tell you, to be honest. <laughs> Normally, we're here to be analytical and precise. Sure, Gale can do well into Buzz, but I never would have seen this coming. Maybe this is a way of them that they've found to sneakily stop Meg. I really don't know. This is something that's very Ooh, unknown for me, a that's... little new territory, but this might be a creative way to deal with that. I like that idea, yeah. So, I mean, Moto Mommy's it's not banned out. Meg is not banned. And they didn't 
kind of selected. So you go, you're essentially saying we know you're going to pick the Meg, in my opinion, and so you try to combat that. I think the Gale, some pushback uh, against the Meg might be a nice look, but the B will prevent a lot of what Monolamis want to do, I think. So Solar rushes up, grabs the blue star, but immediately trades it away. And that can't be what Motomami's drew up here as Chaz Mac had the lead. Yeah, it's a really interesting composition that they go for. And the past Gale's been great here. I, again, it might just be they didn't want that to be picked into Buzz, a solid brawler, but certainly not a meta option here. It's going to be a very different approach, and they do the hard work for them. CMG just line up the shots and just take away Solar and get the blue stars from themselves. So now they're the ones with a one-star lead here. All right. Really just taking inventory here. Solar does have that stun available. Watch out, Killer. Inching up on the left-hand side, forcing out the Honey Molasses out of Toast. So won't be able to use that in the mid for a little while at least. Killer slow damage going the other way. A trade out in left lane. Ultimately, since it's a trade, Chazmag still in the lead. Solar goes in and nobody dies. Until Meg shows up, seven to three, Chazmag Gaming. Great swing of momentum here for Chaz Gaming. His killer's still trying to deal with this left-hand side, but that Honey Molasses pot, so valuable right now, and now RBM's gonna be charging up a super of his own with his gadget, trying to get there, and a simple swipe will certainly keep killer away. Fade owning the right-hand side as well. Luffy with the super in hand, they're gonna have to try and take advantage of that little teleport that Gray can provide. So they're gonna need a very big super here. Little prediction there on that right-hand side, and that Tar Barrel is gonna do so well at trying to get those stops on Buzz. I really like that position of the Honey Molasses. I questioned it, using it in the corner, wouldn't allow her to use it towards mid. But Killer going towards the opposition, big damage as the time ticks down. Killer gets the goal against Toast. But Chazmac still in lead, Luffy falls, and that should confirm it. Chazmac, 14 to nine, takes game one. I love that little interaction at the end there. A little protect the president type style, if you will. Low yep. HP, throwing down the salty barrel. Got to make sure you keep the teammate alive. Stars on your side. Perfectly executed right there. I think that was awesome to watch CMG from the get-go. Just kind of show up, stick to the strategy. They don't get overly aggressive. That's a big part of Bounty. It's not always about getting kills all the time. It's when you get the kills. Reset. Blue star on Moto Mommies. That's what they were trying to do before. And now Chaz Mag being aggressive. Everyone pushed into the corner and pushed into the cookie jar. Kill one way. Chaz Mag take the goal and the blue star. Solar rushes in, loses the trade to fade. RBM's right there. I don't like that play. Yeah, a bit of a bold move to say the least, and I think even joking on him a little bit, a little jester emote right there as Fade's having some good fun with it. A lot easier to have fun when you have a lead as well here. It's Toast with a super in hand, Fade with a super in hand, RBM with plenty to work with, and now a penny turret on the ground. Even worse now looking for Moto Mommies as they're trying to creep up this map, but the giant monster truck just fearless right now as they control the mid. Troublesome, yeah. How do you deal with that long range mech? Nobody on in, in a blue jersey is allowed to step up in this mid lane whatsoever. Luffy, yeah, I feel you, man. <laughs> what is Greg supposed <laughs> to do here? Try to walk up and just has to TP away to survive. 40 seconds on the clock here, Kenny. Six to one. I think it's going to be really tough for him, too. I mean, you got some huge heavy hitter solar trick play of its own, though, putting in some work right now. There's one kill. He's looking for a second, finally going down. Now four to nine, still five stars as Killer gets a stun, looking for the takedown on Toast. Doesn't quite get there. It's going to come down to the wire and a countdown here for Moto Mommies. Real rough as that was one of the better plays Moto Mommies have made all set, and yet they still trail by five. Ten seconds on the clock have to go now it's gonna be right side diving in solar gets it still not a lead there it comes and there it goes and there it comes back 14 to 12 but at the last second chas mac take the game and they take the set at literally the last second 15 to 14 thanks to the answer
Oh, that has to be heartbreaking. We finally see some signs of life coming in from Moto Mommies. They get some pivotal takedowns. The Buzz Supers kick in. They were running away with it, a team wipe, and they still can't jump out in time. A really interesting composition didn't quite pay off there, but at least in game number two towards the end, we got to see what it could do. There was a really, really great adaptation from Moto Mommies that I want to bring up. Uh, obviously, Meg was just destroying everybody, and we brought that up. Gray, and I don't know if this was an adaptation, uh, a case of conditioning or otherwise, but Gray steps up, tries to deal with, with Meg. Meg beats him up. He falls back. He does it a couple of times, has to TP out, but now the TP's there. And so he does it again, and he messes with Meg, but this time... Buzz comes in, gets a stun from the other side, and Meg was just so conditioned into, yeah, this is easy shoe, yeah, this is easy shoe, yeah, this is, not paying attention to that mid lane jump in, gets smoked. Like I said, that was the best play they had, but it still didn't bring Moto Mommies the victory. They had to do another one of those big plays, and it still just didn't bring home the goal. I liked their performance in, in game number two much better, Kenny, but ultimately, Chaz Mack just had the upper hand. Yeah, I think it's a really interesting composition. I think they're just kind of sticking to their guns and going with probably a particular three set of brawlers that they think works. I think Buzz was maybe an attempt at being a solid brawler on this map, trying to deal with Meg a little bit. I think coming up next, too, they're going to try and make some even more adjustments. They're going to be subbing in Zeus here for Solar just to try and mix things up. That's the three combination that's been working for them these past couple months. So they're going to go back to the basics here. And you see that launch pad just barely miss. I mean, so low HP. Yeah, that, that's an honest reaction. Didn't know that was coming. <laughs> Great job to see behind <laughs> scenes but just a genuine moment for me of just I, I didn't i thought they might get out of there they couldn't quite do it a lot of heart racing for us here on the stage too for sure as the numbers reflect pretty much what we expect especially in bounty you know this is this is uh elimination match you're just trying to get these kills out here and that's exactly what we see rbm with five nice performance down to the three-letter man you love to see it. Chaz Mac Gaming up one set to none as we rotate and push on into our second set here. We're going to be playing Knockout on Flaring Phoenix. Up next is Gem Grab. And we got Hot Zone and Heist in the wings should we need them. But Knockout definitely, I think, is sort of an equalizer here. Some teams that are a little bit too aggressive wind up playing more passive in Knockout. And on the other side, some teams that are passive wind up playing more aggressive on Knockout. I find that it really shows the other side of your play style a little bit more because you feel that pressure in this game mode really heavy. Yeah, and a quick correction too. It looks like they are actually going back to Solar here. So it's going to be the exact same three brawlers. RT going to be the first oh. overall selection. No surprise at all. He's still a really strong brawler, especially with talking with several pros this weekend, just trying to get a feel for how much worse he is after this nerf. Doesn't seem to be much, to be honest with you. I think pro players are still valuing him very highly as they should. He's been a force to be reckoned with this weekend. Our team makes it through P's and B's. Meg doesn't. Unsurprised. <laughs> Option over to Moto Mommies. And it's going to be Gene. First pick here for the M&Ms. You heard what I have to say about Gene every single time. He's got the pull. That's pretty much it. I've got no complaints. <laughs> and his teammates here. What do you want to see paired up with the Gene in Knockout today? You know, I think Gene's certainly something that you can pair with a lot of different things, right? Moto Mommies, if they want to get really aggressive here, go for some area control, they could go with something like Max, which usually sharpshooters will struggle into a little more. It's also an older time Brawl Stars combination. They could try and bring in a thrower of choice. I know we see Tick, Grom, and uh, Sprout banned here, but, you know, still some on the table. These indestructible walls have really allowed for all of these brawlers to start shining. We've even seen Willow in some particular spots where I didn't expect. Knockout would be one that would shock me. And uh, Gray surprised me a little bit. It makes sense. Again, this might just be a brawler that they really like rolling with. The teleport's a really cool feature, but I think the excellent response here from CMG to pull out Colonel Ruffs and the Buster. Again, not my tank of choice necessarily that I've seen on this map, but I, I certainly see why it could work. The blocking factors, everything that Buster brings to the table and never upset with a good old Barley. Barley's a great choice here, especially when you look at the wall situation. Obviously, Chesbeck has a little bit of wall break, but barley a nice choice here flaring phoenix specifically this map it's a lot of nonsense for a knockout map i feel like most knockout maps are a little bit more vanilla 
But here in Flaring Phoenix, we just see a lot of grass, a lot of walls, breakable and non, even some water here. And so some of the more interesting abilities like Big Gene Pull, Little Gray Pull, Teleport, those are kind of interesting to me here as we jump into our first knockout match of the day. I think Barley could be really solid here as well. Indestructible Walls have certainly helped a lot of these throwers out. He's great for area control compared to some of the other throwers as well. Big pull going down there on this right-hand side as the Rocket Rain touches the ground. Fade pushing it forward as a result. But RBM just could be able to passively get RT some extra HP, which is a huge threat, especially in those in-game scenarios. Well, Fade, now a little bit closer to the action where he wants to be. We saw Buster perform poorly earlier on because of being able to be zoned. And well, Luffy's got some pretty long range. Solar, not a slouch himself. And so Fade really wants to find the opportunity for the super. Can't get in there. As Motomamis are just keeping Fade at bay. Toast with over seven. Even this barley work doing good job, but here comes the gas, Kenny. Faye's going to be pushing up, and they're looking for an initiation. Big takedown right there as well, but a return. It's killer low HP trying to throw down the herbal tonic. Can't quite keep himself up. Finally going down. Luffy with a teleport low HP. Oh. The kill's necessary. The fog closing in at a perfect time. Moto Mommies get bailed out. Big damage out of Luffy, but also just I, uh, a little... I want to say poor positioning by Chaz Mack, but it, it, rock in a hard place, right? Either way, shake it off. Time for a new round. Fade still on the right-hand side. Had some trouble here last game, but it looks like Chaz Mack are just going to wait for that, that gas to come in, make the map a little smaller, and just give Fade less places to traverse. That's got to make it easy, right? Yeah, it certainly helps, but now Solar with a pull two. They're certainly equipping themselves for an even better round number two as each side going to be slowly taking their time here at the beginning of these games. I think they're both just trying to set themselves up for the end. Of course, Toast can deploy himself with a super two, take the head and just kind of become that Jackie state of form, which can do so much damage all at once. Obviously, Fade doesn't really need too much more HP to be distributed to him either. Colonel Ruff's just going to be powering up Toast as he's growing closer and closer to 8K. He's going to need all he can get to as this fog closes in. Here comes Fade, trying to get a grab, won't be able to get it, and so wasted whiff of the super. Fade, pushed down as well. Toast gets a kill, but probably just, no, he gets one kill, and everybody's stuck. Luffy doesn't even, Luffy gets bailed out there <laughs> by the RT dying again to the gas. Gas MVP, both of these games, huh? I was going to say, the green smoke for MVP, that's a couple big takedowns there as well. I mean, they timed it pretty well. I think RT had a fighting chance, though, and we actually got to see a little bit of what I think Chasma Gaming are trying to go for for these end games. If you just walk forward with Buster and his super, other than Barley, who can hurl some shots over some walls, Gene, Gray aren't going to be really able to do much, but an early game instigation going sure. down here. RBM needs to be very careful as Gene's looking for those extra shots. They're just going to all hunker down together, take their time, and get a little regroup going here. Force the buster out early. And, you know, if what you're saying is what they're thinking. Gas comes in. Fade goes W. Well, what if there's no fade? That's a good question to ask. And that's a, a pull. And there's no fade. <laughs> Three on two here for Motomamis. Beautiful stuff coming in from Solar here. Good to see him finally playing and getting some action in this month. A great roster that they've got and trying to prove themselves once again. Even up the score line as Chasm Gaming took our first set. Continued 3v2 situation. Toast being pushed back. Curious to see if they fight for this or if they just go to the fog. Missed pull here. Solar's not going to have a super for now. Herbal Tonic touching the ground. Teleportation in. Luffy picks up one. Toast goes down. Clean up here for Moto Mommies. And they take the round. This is the first one where we didn't see these players get trapped. I mean, you, you, you take a look at this. You have the unbreakable wall on the left-hand side and then these yellow barrels with this wall on the right-hand side, and players are just getting stuck in this funnel. They, they find themselves just nowhere to go. The Moto Mommies are in trouble because of that, so they decide to get aggressive and look for an early end, and I like this choice. Fade baited into using the super again, man. Nothing coming up for the Blondie.
Yeah, I mean, that's just a tough moment. I think Bonamamis are playing this really well. I think their composition is doing exactly what they want. I think a lot of that is because of Killer and the pressure he can comply. He can just stay back, lob shots over these walls, and now it's a little flip as the blue team's on top, red team's on the bottom. They're still together here. RBM very weak, though. They're going to have to protect for him a little bit here, but they can't give up too much. A teleport in, a takedown there. Toast rotating left, separated from Fade. The pool goes through. The takedown eminent and the herbal tonic should all but finish. Fade, low HP. Luffy still saves alive and that'll do it here round number two going to motomami's well done here by motomami's just looking clean but also doing exactly th this is what you need to do if you want to play at this level motomami's taking this knockout on flare and phoenix this is just i think Chaz mac had a bad draft and you have to beat this draft that's kind of if you don't beat this draft, you know, I think you're having some issues here. So they deal with the Buster correctly. Buster could have been an easy trap to fall into. We see how constraining this map can be. I see these lanes where Buster is able to just okie doke you and Motomami's were just too good of a team to get okie doked. So I like it. This is, this is Motomami's kind of putting their money where their mouth is and saying like, remember, We've got a big victory here on this stage before. We can do it again. Chat Mac Gaming, yes, you are a legendary squad, but don't put, don't pick that busted nonsense. See you later, buddy. Yeah, it's really interesting, right? We saw some South American shenanigans in that first one with the combination that they ended up rolling with, and now we're in the second one here. I'm not sure where Chasma Gaming got the influence from. This is another combination that I'm not as familiar with. I was informed that Motomami's first draft was based on some other plural players as well who've tried to pull this out, which is just really fun to watch. All these guys getting inspired, and you know, when new balance changes kick in with these new maps, or some of these old, for example, come back into the mix, all these guys got to try something new. We are very, very fresh off the heels of all these balance changes and new maps. I mean, we haven't even had a full week's worth of competitions under our belt. So it's just a lot of piecing yeah. it together. And I think both of these sides are kind of showcasing that here. Fade with 32. All right. I won't. Gem grab. Gem fort. That's our third set. This one. We've seen some different stuff. I uh, am probably banning Amber. If I am one of these teams, if I'm not choosing to select her off the rip, I think Amber has been impactful in a lot of these games, and this map specifically is calling her name, and there it is. First ban, top ban, is the Amber. Worth noting, Meg also gone as well as some of the usual suspects. No Ash, no B, no Janet, no Max. I don't always mention every ban here, Kenny, but this is pretty much the top of the tier list, so I want to see where everybody else goes. First pick Penny into an RT response from CMG. Ooh, and a Jesse as well. Okay. I think this is something worth mentioning too that I think has not, you know, kind of flown under my radar this weekend, but it's certainly worth mentioning. One of the new mythic gears coming into play actually is this pet rework. Some of these brawlers like Penny, like Jesse, we saw Mr. P earlier. They get a little 20% buff on some of the spawners or their pets, uh, considered those turrets for both of them. So that's been really interesting. I was curious to see how that would play out this weekend. It looks like it's given a little more value than I gave it credit for. So we're gonna see Jesse on a control based kind of gym fork map. Those indestructible walls make it way better for all these turrets to get value. So I'm curious to see if anybody tries to counter that, how they get around it. Both these sides are going to have to deal with that. Surge selected along uh, across the way, rather. Never dislike this character. I think there's some usage as far as the super is concerned here with respect to wall break and whatnot. Gem Fort uh, has big old square in the middle. Two of those corners are un indestructible for sure. But also Surge is a Surge. How do you, do you have to play differently against Jesse as Sandy is selected? Love to see a little bit more Sandy in the meta. But I, I, I peek this question about Jesse. Because of, the, because of the bounce of the basic attack, is that something you have to take into mind and spread out and play specifically differently against Jesse? Or do you just kind of play your own game? I think you have to take into account a little bit, right? I mean, similar to why people avoid clumping up together when they play a bell. It's just those bounce shots can get really valuable. Sometimes if Jesse hits one shot, she gets a little bang for a buck and it could be a little two for one if there's a teammate next to you. You have to be really careful about it. They're going to have to avoid that. And I think not providing supers to your enemy for both these sides, especially right now, is going to be really crucial. You don't want to give away a penny turret. On the other side, you don't want to give away a Jesse turret because if you get it down, you have mid control, you place it on that L wall. It can be really tough. And of course, a Sandy super, those things can be lethal. It's a complete momentum shift if Sandy can pop off. 
Very, very excited to see all these players kind of coming on in here. Big fan of Sandy. I think that's going to provide a lot, a lot of control. Is this the competition to go with her? Honestly, I say yes. I think ultimately the Sandy draft is probably my preferred, but I don't dislike what we see across the way either. And Motomamis are going to be the aggressive ones right off the rip. Luffy and Toast stuck here in the mid. Toast turns around. The trade is good. But Luffy and Solar here back. And Motomamis have the lead. Three to one. Really early gadget pop there from Solar. Needs to be careful because getting tier two is very essential. Again, this is all about not giving away supers this game, but we're seeing plenty of aggression. RBM now in the mid two as Luffy has control. All the gyms in his hands and Killer throwing down that super. The invisibility really going to be able to help on this map. And RPM gets a surprising takedown. Ooh. Drops a super of his own, but is going to fall as a result. However, CMG's teammates now can move forward and at least try and hunker down in the mid. Chaz Mac, yeah, like you said, they've got they've got some mid presence now for sure. Fade lurking in the wings here. Could jump on Killer, but is afraid of the answer back from Luffy as RBM wins over there in left lane. Fade being chased out right side. Wants to be a little sneaky, not thinking about his super just yet. And I think that's going to be a, a big difference maker as we're tied six all. Got to be careful of that penny turret too. Toast really receiving some damage from that. Don't want to overly do it. It's kind of just free tags if you're not moving your feet. Killer catching Ooh. fade off guard too. Really nice plays and now complete shift. They've got their footing in this mid. Great shots coming in from Toast though. Ninth gym being picked up from Luffy. Gonna have to run away for now though and be really careful with this. Salty barrels can be bounced off from Jesse's shots too. And now that turret being deployed. This is getting really scary even though it is just a cute little rubber ducky. Definitely got to be afraid of the quacker as Fade turns around and takes care of Killer. Great job there using the little stuff. As Fade gets popped. Tenth gem on the way. Either team could take it, but the Sandy Super all but confirms it for Blue. Luffy gets it and Killer going to go ahead and zone out. And here comes Fade. There goes Fade. Countdown for Moto Mommies. Looks good here. Solar playing... Defense, but it's Chazmak that steals it away by grabbing the 11th gem. RBM with a big pickup there too. Luffy trying to move forward. They need 12 gems. It's going to take a kill at this point. Is only ones on the ground. They're slowly just backing this away though. Jesse Turret goes down. Plenty of space to work with. It was a close call and a little extra overtime in that gym grab game, but ultimately the same result. It's going to be Chazmak Gaming backing it up and taking our first. Beautifully done there. I think I I think I posed a little bit more of a panic moment than the players were feeling. You know, I presented this, there's the countdown, and I think we saw the players across the way like, chill, bro. I'm going to grab number 11 and walk <laughs> away. Chazmat Gaming were not threatened in that situation. I won't say in the slightest, Kenny, but I don't think they were that concerned. No, I think that's completely fair. I mean, for us, too, it's very stressful. I can't do the things that these guys can do. They're pros for a reason. I We are just fortunate that we get to sit back, relax, and enjoy in all the chaos that is this game. It's been a great match. You're so relaxed? Far. I mean, I'm not relaxed. I'm on the edge of my seat. But, <laughs> you know, at some point, you, I just have to accept that I can't do what these guys can do. I'm Trust just be messing with you, buddy. <laughs> Much love, Kenny. It's been a great year working with you. <laughs> and right now, Chazmak certainly working the opponent here. As a little drop of the quacker. And Toast just drops Luffy. Two gems on the floor, but Chazmak unlikely to pick those up. They've got six in hand and lucky number 11 on the floor. So good mid control from Chazmak, but I think this might be a shift. As Monomamis are stepping up. Luffy in trouble. Dodges the fade jump. And Fade going to have to play it careful. Still, though, blue team in mid. That was a fantastic Salty Barrel gadget there. I mean, Luffy able to dodge that Crow Super entirely, and so much control was in Chaz Gaming's hand. And now all of a sudden, Moto Mommies could really shift this. Penny turret going down, but the invisibility really helping out. Toast tried to keep that thing energized and alive, but couldn't quite do it. And now Killer in a really aggressive stance, preemptively popping this gadget, looking for an opportunity. Connects to Fade, missed shot from Luffy, but gets a second. And now with this Penny turret on the ground, they're going to be able to lob up some serious shots here. Killer by himself. 
And Fade wins the duel. 48 HP on the Assassin. But it's all well and good. Who's got the gems? Toast falls down with all of the gems. Great positioning, though, by Killer, making sure to push out right, allowing Luffy to go ahead and grab them all. A dozen on the clock. A baker's dozen in the pocket. Solar pushing up. Killer doing so as well. And Motomami's grab game number two cleanly. We're going to game three. This is a huge moment for both of these teams right here. Taking a 2-1 lead gets you a little bit of a cushion, of course, since it's the best three of five. And we've really seen both these teams shine throughout the day. But this one has been as exactly as intense as I hoped it would be. Coming into this, you know, we had the 85 to 15 percent split. And like I said, I don't even know if that was fair. As somebody who picked CMG, Moto Mommies are the one that have a grand finals this year. They're the ones that have made it that far. We've seen them hit that peak. And I think we're really starting to maybe doubt them a little too much here. I think they deserve some more well love. Yeah, I mean, you said it earlier that this is a squad that, you know, I think a lot of a lot of people kind of count out for no other reason than than, than name recognition. I mean, this like you said, they won, man. And we're seeing their their gameplay for sure. Monomami's do have a game, a little graphical there for the moment as we are in game three. Luffy trying to play on the right hand side, but it's Chazmat Gaming kind of have mid control solar and luffy can't get in here by themselves they need help from killer but rbm playing goalie keeping killer in base nice positioning aggressive positioning from cmg's rt yeah, the RT gameplay there was awesome to watch. I mean, putting himself and his legs down on one side and goes to the other. That's two Jackies on two different spots. No way to get around it. Big jump in, though. A lot of action going down the mid, but ultimately resulting in Luffy picking up these three low HP salty barrel on the ground, but needs to watch out because those bounce shots can be catastrophic. Toast dropping the rubber duck once again. Fade cleaning up the rest of these gyms. And now a walk away here as the countdown begins. Smooth plays here. Gems are split, so a kill on Toast or Fade is good enough. But you got to get there first, and both of these players are all the way in the corner. That be that, Chazmat Gaming gets set number three. Two to one, CMG. Wow, what a set. I mean, this has been awesome to watch. It feels really similar to what we saw in month number one when the fireworks flew between these two teams. I'm really impressed. I think both of those drafts are things that we're not necessarily used to seeing, but also we've got Jim Fort coming into the mix as well. This is a very old timey map that now has some indestructible walls in play. I mean, that was pretty cool. You know, when anytime we can see Jesse make a resurgence, some of these older brawlers that, you know, you mentioned as well. Sure, we've seen Amber from time to time, but that's somebody who's even entering the band stages now. It's what keeps Brawl Stars so yeah. fresh and so awesome my mind i love seeing these two teams adapt to that yeah the jesse's an interesting look i uh ultimately don't know how much i mean i absolutely didn't hate it but these are some of the changes that i think we want to see where she didn't completely meg the round let's say <laughs> sometimes meg feels like she just takes over jesse did her job and it was impressive and that duck did a lot of damage for sure <laughs> but i don't think she was oppressive and so I, I like seeing her performance here, eager to catch more of Jesse, without a doubt. But Motomami's played well here, not well enough to earn the victory. Chaz Mack bringing us to our next set, lurking on the horizon. RBM, ton of damage on that RT. Oh man, yeah, he put in some serious work. I did not realize he had that many kills. That's as many as Luffy and Killer had combined. That's some <laughs> awesome stuff. I mean, we can kind of see the footwork going down throughout that set. He was really able to pick up some kills, a lot of damage going down. And again, just one of those plays that we called out. I loved seeing him deploy himself on one side and then just go to the other. He's like gatekeeping the entire stretch of that map. I mean, yep. that is awesome to see and just real veteran work right there. Yeah, it's really interesting how RT can be this long-range sharpshooter or just a zoner. And that sort of dynamic play, the ability to kind of like play two different styles is really what I think allowed Bonnie to see so much play when she was first released. Uh, and I think we're going to see, I think RT has a higher skill floor, meaning E hard. But I, I do think we'll see some of the stronger players learn over time how to utilize not just the long range sharpshooter, which we've seen a lot of, but also maximize that split super as well. And so we'll jump into parallel plays here. And Kenny, strong stuff, banned out. No, RT and Meg, the gray, the Sam, and the Ash are gone on the other side. 
Yeah, now Bonnie in the field as well. I think the Penny's a strong pick here too. And once again, I think we're on Jesse watch for this map. It's a brawler that used to show up a lot here, depending on the combination that they run. Could be a real pest too. I think a Penny turret gonna go a long way. Bonnie, of course, with the dive that she can have, really gets you across the map quickly. And now she's gonna be reunited with her circus sister. The act is back in action. Like that choice. Not just the Vorthos in me, I do like the lore, but like, you've just got some real oppressive, Luffy can jump in and Killer can fly in and what are you going to do about it? Real scary stuff, but it's about how you kind of pair things up. I like the Jesse note, players are going to be grouped up on the point, Jesse's going to punish that type deal, but at the end of the day, Carl is always available, rarely do I not like Carl? So here we are. And the B, long range damage, honey molasses to control the point when you get it. And should you want to pair Luffy or Killer up with a thick tanky boy? Well, B's there as well. So Chaz Mac Gaming locked in with Penny, Carl, and B. Give me a letter grade, A through F. What is the composition on the right side? Feels like a pretty strong one. I mean, gotta think it's around that A, right? Three really strong brawlers, and we could have oh. in the mix, too. I don't think I would have seen that coming on the report card. What it do, BB? BB into I a like B. That. Really interesting. And then Salty Barrel for Penny, too. I think they actually have ways to kind of address this, but like you said, they've already picked some really oppressive brawlers, right? And that's exactly what BB can be. If you get some good dodges, if you can be a great tank player, which could be any of them playing, but particularly Killer, of course, going to be known for some of the tankier options that he has. I'm curious to see what they can do with this. This certainly isn't a brawl I was expecting to see here on Parallel Plays. Yeah. This is this to me is an all-in for Moto Mommies. BB is either going to be oppressive or oppressed. She's either going to push people around or be pushed away. And I I'm not even saying that as as a lead. Sometimes I say these things and like, you know, choose your own adventure, but really we all know what's going <laughs> to happen. Not the case here, man. I'm eager to see, well, okay. <laughs> Hopefully that's not the tone that BB has all set as we see Carl get the kill right away. Blue team counting up from 20 on their own point and Chaz Mac kind of abandoning their point and playing more aggressive. This could be tough now for Killer. He's somebody that really has to take advantage early and BB on defense not nearly as valuable as getting to the other side and putting on some pressure. Moto Mami's trying to cap off their own and sure it may look like they have a lead but positioning is all in CMG's favor. It's all about getting to the yep. other side which CMG has already touched down on. They're now having to back away though as Killer getting really aggressive here. There's one swipe, a couple and a BB bubble as well. Still gets taken down. Luffy able to clean up a little bit though as RBM takes the other side. A little split here on our hands. Bottom side claimed by Moto Mommies, and that's what you were talking about, the lead kind of deceptive here, because the other half is much more difficult to achieve than your own. Killer pushing up, and well, doing some damage here against Fade. Throws the super, gets the kill as well. So Killer actually dealing with the 1v2. I say dealing, not succeeding, but gets a lot of point value up there. 69% to 78%. And we're stopped as nobody really on a point that matters. Yeah, and CMG are going to be able to take advantage for now. They're the ones with the lead. Penny Turret putting down some pressure as a drop the base hits the ground from Solar 2. But Penny Turrets can shoot back. They're just playing defense for now. Still plenty of time on the clock left, too. We did some big work yeah. early on in this matchup. But CMG, if they can just touch down on the other side, they will certainly expand this lead. And that's exactly what RBM looks to be doing right now. Killer just stuck. And RBM going to send him all the way to the home screen. And here comes Chaz Mag stepping up, finding themselves on the point. Three players strong, counting up. And Chaz Mag Gaming confirm game number one. Hot zone. Not easy, though. A lot of times they come out here and be like, easy. Not easy for Finch this time around. A little bit of a difficult game for Chaz Mag. I want to see more in the Moto Mommies. I like their approach. Not sure if I like the BB. Let's try again. Yeah, great point. Let's try again. You know, on to the next. Not the start that they probably wanted. I'm going to be curious to see if they mix things up. And it looks like they are. They're going to throw Killer on defense here. Maybe instead of being the aggressor, he'll just play goalkeeper, keeping them off of their own. Bullying RBM right now on this left-hand side as he pops a catch and forcing RBM all the way back to spawn. But they still end up winning this. They've now sent two brawlers right, only one on defense. It's going to allow for RBM to just slide on over and take advantage. You got to take those fights. I don't hate that. I think BB absolutely has to just brawl with the Carl. Hopefully you win it. But if you don't, like I said, it's an all-in strat. 
BB loses, and because of that, RBM is able to walk up like a Sunday drive. More than half HP, getting hit a little bit by the super, but still throwing out that hammer. And RBM does a half, 25% on the opponents, 25% on their own for Chaz Mack, which is very, very healthy. As Luffy goes to the back line and gets shoved out that easily. Yeah, I mean, that's a fair point. This lead's even more expansive than we think it is because they haven't claimed their own territory. Solar cleaning up his own side, though, as Fade looks to continue the pressure. Luffy trying to help out as well here, but it's tough. Finally going down, but 86% is a lot to work with. They've now capped off their top right-hand home side for CMG2, so the last 14% they need is just awaiting them on Moto Mommies, but they're going to have to strike back in quickly, too. Again, a lot of time left in the clock, but we got to see some serious offense coming in from Moto Mommies. Man, the Penny Turret is so powerful against Slow Cannon Bonnie. As the Stun Woman falls down, Janet takes to the sky, doesn't get the kill against Toast, and now the battle is the way of Toast! And that's all Chaz Mack needs to confirm the game, the set, and the match. Chaz Mack Gaming headed to the finals against Tribe. Yeah, I mean, it's the matchup they probably wanted, right? Obviously, they've been waiting a long time this year to make that grand finals, but now they're going to have an opportunity to prove themselves. They played a close one against Tribe last month. They've had too many three twos to count at this point. I'm sure they want in on some action where it counts. Huge point swing for the leaderboards. Moto Mami is going to drop down a little bit here. Now we get an awesome grand finals on the way very soon. Yeah, certainly what you want to look at, certainly what you want to see if you're a Chaz Mag fan, Chaz Mag versus Tribe. This is a real kind of classic situation without a doubt. And so a nice look for the Chaz Mag Gaming boys. Forgive us real quick. This is Chaz Mag match victory. And so you'll love to see the squad kind of coming out here. I don't think the BB worked. That's yeah. the end of my statement. <laughs> yeah, yeah I, I, I can feel it too. You know, sometimes just keep it simple, right? It really is that simple. Uh, the BB didn't work this time, you know? I think this is a few times now we've seen Moto Mommies kind of call their shots, and I like that. I like seeing that as a fan, right? It's, it's more fun. Same. Everybody has their unique style and things like that, but I think back to the drawing board on that one a little bit. Maybe a change of style. Maybe it just wasn't into the right composition, but nonetheless, it was a lot of fun. Yeah. Great team, but for now, it's still RBM's world. I mean, yes, we're all just living in it. 11 kills for RBM. Fantastic work. And uh, drumroll, please. The MVP coming through. Toast, fade, RBM is going to be the guy. Unsurprised here, Kenny. Of course, MVP voted on you guys by event.brawlstars.com. I think this was a good victory for Chaz Mac Gaming. I think Toast had some moments. I think Fade had some moments. But I think this is an easy MVP call for me with RBM being the guy. Yeah, I feel like he was just instrumental to what they were trying to accomplish here today. He's a huge part of this team, was a major pickup for the organization, had a great 2022, and has continued that in 2023. This is a really strong four-man roster for Chaz Gaming and A. Awesome to see them unfold, and, you know, we've seen them a little more consistent here. I'm curious to see what Reddy thought, because that was honestly a really good time. It was a great match. I really enjoyed watching it, but I think also my expectations came true. Love to see Motomami's play. I expected a CMG victory, and I'm excited to see actually a rematch between CMG and Tribe of the Grand Finals. It should be a lot of fun. Like we said, this is a matchup that we've seen time and time again, uh, honestly, for years. And so it should be a kind of classic jump in as we take a look towards the future. We see the past as well. Bracket coming at you live. And it's a finals, like we said, that we've seen time and time again. Tribe to get here took down the pesky penguins and the untamable beasts. And Chaz Matt Gaming took down Moto Mommies. Obviously, we just watched it. You enjoyed it. At least I did. And also Octos as well. So... An exciting one for CMG as they find their way all the way there. And this is kind of what we expected as far as the desk is concerned. As far as me, I put in my predictions for Tribe on one side, Chasmac on the other. And I do have Tribe Gaming taking this grand final. Y'all copied my homework. I see how it is. 
Yeah, I mean, it is what it is, right? I mean, we're all kind of thinking the same. It happens. Maybe it's for the better. Maybe it makes me feel a little bit more comfortable in a very uncomfortable season of predictions. It's been hard this year, fellas. <laughs> we called our shot early, though. Usually we get the benefit of seeing all the teams played, but we went ahead and just put in Tribe Gaming. I mean, for me, they won last month. I don't know if you all feel the same. I don't know how close you all are going to feel this is, but I think after seeing CMG today, this could be another 3-2 kind of feeling to it. Ooh, interesting. Ready? Rebuttal? Uh, not not really much for rebuttal. I actually really agree with this one. You, you've actually said it. We've seen these two teams have some rivalry, right? Some 3-2 action going back for quite a while. It's not just this year. And also, under the name of Chazmek, under the name of Obey, okay, whatever. It's like the same players. And Tribe Gaming have gone on the record saying, yeah, this is one of the hardest teams for us to beat. And it shows in the scoreline. So I'm excited to see some of that happen again today. And will Chazmek finally get their chance to claim a monthly final victory. Should be a lot of fun. I'm going to go troll chat and let you guys have it. <laughs> Kenny and Ready Set, going to grab the mic for the grand finals. Chat, do me a favor. Press one if you think Chaz Max going to win and press two if you think Tribe's going to win. I want to blow it all up. See you guys later. Bye. <laughs> Some yays or nays in chat. It's going to be a whole lot of fun. Of course, share also in chat. Who's your favorite among these three that we've already gotten so familiar with? Zeolon, Tyrant, is Livy. The same players we've seen it take Tribe Gaming to greatness. And of course, Corey on the sidelines too, making some calls and some coaching in there too. Some great highlights as well from this team in the earlier stages of today. And Shirley setting the expectations high going into the Grand Finals. I'm really excited, man. Tyrant was popping off, especially earlier on the Amber. Amber is somebody that's gotten increasingly strong, too. And now we get to see them showcase it against a really powerful foe. Untamable Beast, still a really solid roster, but I think all of us at the booth, at least, were kind of slowly awaiting to see if Chasmic Gaming could finally make this grand finals. And I think Tribe, a team that's equipped to deal with just about anybody, like you said, they've got a tough foe on the other side. Toast, RBM, and now Juan Carlos. This is a strong four-man roster. They can rotate any of these guys. Not every team can make that work, but this is a team that's humble enough to put themselves in a spot where they feel the best players are going to play every time. I'm liking that you made that call because, yes, the four-man roster has a whole lot of advantages. There's one disadvantage, which is that, well, you can only scrim with three brawlers at one time, right? So someone's got to sit on that bench, and someone's not getting as much practice, two players at least, if they're repeatedly switching out for each other. And if there's any really redundancy on this roster that comes to mind for me, it's probably Fade and RBM, both being really, really good at some of these tanky options. Of course, having some things that they can switch on to, like Penny, Fade, RBM, both completely capable of playing that brawler at a very, very high level and carrying it in some instances. So I'm excited to see who gets specialized, right? Thrown as like the special operations unit in this circumstance. I am too. I think it's always super interesting to see what these guys end up picking. I think Chasmic Gaming especially has had some really fun ones here today. Some of these pet gear reworks have been interesting to see too. We've seen Jesse. We saw Tribe pull out the Mr. P. I mean, there's going to be a lot of fun here. Again, one of my favorite parts about Brawl Stars is just it's always evolving. It's always changing. And both these teams, some of the smartest in the game, some of the most fun with their drafts. You know, we talk about Tribe a lot of the times being that safe team. FDOT said it's just picking the top of the tier list. But today, a new tier list is being formed in front of our eyes, and I can't wait to see what we get. It's that and then some, right? Because Tribe Gaming are taking this and incorporating it into their own playbook. We typically see Tribe Gaming, yeah, I'm going to agree with FDOT here, like playing it safe, just picking some of the best brawlers and also picking some of the brawlers that they're the best at, not necessarily the ones that have been thrust to the forefront of the meta lately. And I think that today we've sort of seen a new sort of tribe evolving beyond just what the meta is doing at the moment. But Chazmat Gaming and A, they've also used, also kind of abused the power of some of these new brawlers that have, as I've said, been thrust in the forefront of the meta. So bands are going to have to get rid of some of these lest we uh, find ourselves in some pretty decisive matches. I think decisive is a great word. This, I don't know, this just screams a really close one again. NA East has been awesome all year round, but oh, 90 to 10. That just, <laughs> ah, that just seems disrespectful. Look, I pick Tribe, you pick Tribe. F dot pick tribe, but that does not mean I feel 90 to 10 percent confident. I think CMG deserve a little more love than that. Well, well I, I think you've already given us a good idea of precisely how you feel, and I'll echo that too. This is a pretty close matchup. It's like the two three action, like you were saying. Really, the head scratcher now is well, who's that two? 
And welcome down to who drafts best. At least that's where it'll start. Janet for selection from Tribe Gaming. Very safe stuff, very versatile brawler. And honestly, if you're pushing up that left lane and you drop that base down with that gadget, uh, your enemy is not going to be having a very fun time. So throwers are definitely in order here. Maybe Willow could be sneaking into this draft. Oh, naturally, there's a Sprout quite early on from CMG. So if they go for the Gene here on the next one, it would be a little predictable. No, Penny selection from them. I'm interested that they're leaving as such a strong thrower counter open. Yeah, that's really curious. I think Sprout can be a nice pickup, though, with these indestructible walls. A lot of throwers can be great right now. I think that's why Tick and Grom get the ban boot from CMG. But they do leave space for themselves to draft a Sprout as a result. Janet as a first pick. It does make sense to me as well. It's kind of one of those safe options, like you mentioned, right? It doesn't lock them in into particular strategies. Not a lot of hard counters or anything like that for Janet either. And definitely has the range to at least compete. Wouldn't call her a sharpshooter necessarily. But on the other side, we're going to get Barley in for dry season and past. You would never really see a pick like this in olden Brawl Stars days. But now the dry season's returned, new indestructible walls. Naturally, all of these throwers are kind of in a stronger spot. So we're even going to the depths of the throwers as well. Barley somebody that's good, but usually not the first choice on Bounty. Yeah, you say the depths. I say they're really scraping the bottom of the barrel now because he's not really a favorable. <laughs> <laughs> he's not really a great brawler to be picking here, all things considered. Now, the way that the draft is shaped up, it's completely viable. Grom, Tick, really the better options here have been eliminated. Here's so Livy also with that. Oh, Gene, final selection from CMG. Yeah, they needed to get some mid brawler action in there, so it's good that they finally got it. It's less than optimal that they got it as that last pick, but hey, sometimes you gotta pick that thrower a little earlier on when your opponent is tribe gaming, and they are a bit susceptible to uh, being confused when some of those things are thrown their way. So I like the draft from both sides. Really, to me, I feel like Tribe Gaming might have the better draft here. Uh, well, on paper, I think Chazmat Gaming in a like wins draft wise, but I think Tribe Gaming will be able to execute on some of these brawlers better. Yeah, I think it's a toughie, right? I mean, I'm not used to seeing Gene be a last pick. Usually Gene's one of the stronger ones that goes in that one, two, or three slot. But hey, it's a new world of Brawl Stars that we live in as Livy. Of course, playing the Nani. Nani can be so powerful with the hard hitting shots. But again, I, I don't really know if I have a hardcore winner on draft on paper. I think it's going to all come down to this execution. And for now, a huge advantage will be given to whoever can get this blue star first. Well, it looks like Chazmec Gaming NA is already executing. Typically, we see Tribe Gaming be the ones to lay down the law in terms of mechanics. They're going to have to play aggressive here. A little bit out of their comfort zone, but it also plays into the hand of Chazmec Gaming NA here. They've played something very, very control-based that's going to be that much more elevated if Toast can get a super and if RBM can get his. Zoo on the left side is trying to push in. Tyrant's probably going to want to rotate over to that lane if he manages to get a turret down. Big takedown actually for Juan Carlos. And they've not only claimed the blue star, but they've gotten a kill. It's a great start for Chazmec. Great start, and Juan Carlos has a super in hand as well. Having those walls cycling in and out is huge, but a huge shot right there. Juan Carlos going to be in a lot of trouble, going to have to stay healthy and well for now. Trying to lob up some shots. Return to Cinder, though, as Libby clutching up right there. Three to three, still blue star for Chasmic Gaming, but they're going to really start to feel some pressure if they stay on these back lines. They seem to be turtling up quite a bit, and they might pay the price, as you've noted. Zeolan and his Livy keep on shoving them back, stuffing them into this respawn area. Juan Carlos can sort of block things off on the left side if he throws down that hedge, but he's being quite hesitant to do so. Probably saving it to block one of those peeps if it comes his way. Zulon taken down the right side. Great use of the salty barrel by RBM. Tribe Gaming are just not really ready to play aggro into this. Chazmat Gaming, they maintain this lead. 15 second countdown active. Tribe Gaming have to make the first move. They've got a penny turret on the back right. Now a pickup from Juan Carlos as well as Livy trying to claim one of his own. Zulon flying to the sky. Toast going to be very weak here. There's one pickup as Livy needs more, though. Throwing the wall down. Zulon trying to touch down in time. One kill, two going down. It's still CMG, though. They hold on and take game number one. Brilliant play from CMG. Love how they started this one off, and they were able to keep that ball rolling the entire time. Saw some moments where Tribe was starting to claw their way back, but it's very clear. Tribe, they're a control-based team. They play passive, and they like to play defensive. Chazmat Gaming in A, they'll play aggro, and then they'll just sit back. And this is kind of what I was talking about with the draft. Like, yes, this works much better for Chazmat Gaming in A in terms of the brawler selected, in my opinion. I didn't see them executing on it as well as they have. So already really impressed with what Chazmat Gaming and A has had to offer. They might be able to keep this momentum going. Blocked off on the right side is Tyrant. Zulon on the left side, sort of trying to push in. But now we're finding ourselves in the safe
same scenario that Chaz Mag were in the late game where Tribe started to bring things back. Yeah, they're starting to get really comfortable with their spawn side right now, but they're going to have to stay alive. A lot of low HP brawlers trying to claw their way back into it. Magic Puff's certainly going to help that out as well. Big thrower battle on this right-hand side as Zulon's just kind of chilling out on the left, taking advantage of that three-pronged wall. Penny Toast now grouping up together too, as Livy with the super is definitely going to be something I keep my eyes on as we have a minute left to go in this game. Plenty of time for Tribe Gaming to make some big plays. Juan Carlos doesn't have a super, but as Livy does, this could be the moment where he makes a big play. But someone's got to get low on health as well for him to really secure a safe maneuver. Tyrant also has to retreat. Might be able to finish off Juan Carlos. He's trying to stay alive with the magic puffs, but it just wasn't enough. Now Tribe Gaming get to run things back, especially with his Livy having that blue star in his clutches. Arguably the safest brawler to have that on. It's a good outlook for Tribe. Chazmax still have lots of chances to bring this back, especially if they get a pull on the Zulon. Sprout wall going down, but more importantly, a pull goes through two kills, one on each side, but it's still Tribe with the lead. Nani Peep now being cycled in, trying to find a connection, and they're being very wary of it. Does end up tagging Sprout, but Sprout survives. 15 seconds to go, and Tribe just need to hang on. Chazmak don't get a good pull in here. It's a Tribe victory, and Zulon's already ready to take to the skies. Get a bit of extra damage in there, but as Livy and Tyron are left alone, just four seconds left. Juan Carlos can start bringing things back. Need to see some damage as Livy stays alive. Zulon lands right on top of Juan Carlos for that final kill of the game. And it's all tied up here in set number one. I loved seeing that reaction from Tribe Gaming. It really goes to show just how difficult it can be to play offense on this map. We've seen some, uh, I wouldn't say outcry, but some, um, so, some pretty fiery thoughts, some pretty fiery opinions from the players on this map. And it seems to be probably a result of exactly what we're seeing. The spawn trap is very difficult to deal with. Yeah, now all these brawlers taking the field. This time it's going to be Tribe claiming the blue star and likely a solid defense coming through for them too. It really feels like each time a team has taken a lead, they just kind of go back behind this little indestructible wall side here, especially when there's limited wall break options. You know, you got a gene pull in play, the Nani Peep, you can waver into it, but it's not as easy. And now that we have throwers in play too, you got to be really careful about your dodges. So this time, instead of CMG on the back heels of their spawn, it's going to be Tribe trying to play defense. Well, they are getting battered and bruised just a little bit. We'll see Tyron also. Looks like he's running medical use. Or no, perhaps not. Not just had to happen to heal up at the same time as attacking. We'll see Chaz Mag Gaming and A continue to push him back, though. Zulon also throws down this gadget on the left side. Pours him a lot of area control. Toast, though, finally gets his super. He'll have to get a pull onto his Livy or Tyrant to really secure things. Zulon can still block things with the turret, even if it's at max range. Chaz Mag Gaming and A just keeping this control. If they manage to get that kill in the last few seconds, it would be optimal. It would give no chances for Tribe Gaming to retaliate. But with things so far crushed in this back right side, it might be the optimal time to make a move now. Tyrant going to be in a lot of trouble here. There was a great cutoff of the Whoa. wall there, and it's able to give them an advantage Ooh. now. With a little over 30 seconds to go, a pivotal pick. -up. <gasps> oh, and a nicely placed turret as well from Zulon to stay alive. That would have been lethal. Zulon easily could have gone down there, and now with a super in hand too, he's at least going to be able to respond by flying. Definitely a cop out for Zulon if he needs to take to the skies. Is Livy and Tyrant are the prime brawlers to take it down here. Zulon might have to pop it now. He's going to land actually before that timer expires, so that could be a bad deal. Toast is going to bear a lot of that damage. RBM with the takedown. Just got to see one kill here. Is Livy blocking some of that damage with the return to Cinder? Tyrant's out of range. And Tribe Gaming with yet another one star victory. This match is neck and neck but it still results in a set victory for Tribe Gaming to start us off. Whew, that was a doozy just to kick things off. I mean, so close across the board. And again, it's kind of expectations met so far, right? A very close set. Both teams bringing in some solid plays, some solid brawlers, neither backing down. A lot of back and forth the whole way through, which is what I'm expecting here today. The competition level is just so high in NA East. It seriously is, and especially if we put these two teams under the microscope and have them go at each other, right? Because these two are pretty much the closest in the region. For a time, it was Tribe Gaming and Moto Mommies, but now Chazmat Gaming and A, not only have they risen back to that former status of being the ultimate challenger, 
of Tribe Gaming, but they have now made it to the uh, Grand Finals once again. So I'm excited to see how they progress. So far, this has been an impressive display of their skills, draft-wise and gameplay-wise. Consider how close this match was, and also consider what Tribe Gaming has achieved repeatedly. They're the big dogs here, right? Chazmat Gaming are the obvious underdog, and they're still able to go toe-to-toe. -to -toe. Wow, very close in the kill count too. In fact, it's exactly tied. It's still Tribe ultimately ending up with that. And sometimes that just comes down to blue stars ready. I mean, the game mode really intense to obviously a little change in terms of adding a ceiling to what the uh, score can be with that 20 stars. But ultimately it's just sometimes how you play it right. And I think Tribe Gaming just had those smaller moments that just win their favorite just slightly more than CMG. And because of that, they're able to take away a set. I think another thing that's really worth pointing out here is look at that DPS. I think that the lower DPS on the side of Chazmat Gaming NA is probably a symptom. Uh, and, and them, of course, also being able to fight so effectively toe-to-toe -to -toe with Tribe Gaming is probably a symptom of how they played Gene and how effectively they were able to make use of magic puffs, stay alive, stay close together, and constantly heal, even when they're getting pressured really, really hard. Love the micro plays, love the attention to detail from this team. We're headed into field goal for a brand new kind of brawl. I'm excited to see how the long-range battle goes down at mid as well. You have some short range lanes to flex some of your, well, shorter range brawlers. Also mid range is very viable here. We'll notice Chazmat Gaming also get rid of the B pretty early on, which I like. B is so difficult to fight on this map. Yeah, and we're gonna get a little swap here too. His fade's coming in for Juan Carlos. So going back to what worked for them a little bit earlier today. Of course, on field goal, we're gonna have some interesting choices. Oh. Meg being their first, a very powerful brawler that we've seen this weekend. Obviously, a little rework in how she operates. We've even seen some crazy stuff go down here on this map too, especially for field goal. We've seen Willow this week, and we've seen Shelly in other regions. I am on full watch for some craziness in this draft. I think we are already seeing a bit of craziness is the thing. And, and Kenny, we've already kind of visited this. Like, is it too early to go ahead and call it? She is such a strong brawler. She p feels pretty much invincible at some points. Love the need of response from Chazmat Gaming. Consider here on field goal that there are ample opportunities for Anita to stay alive with these indestructible walls in play. She'll be able to fire some of those shots around walls, just expertly clip them, block a lot of damage from Meg. So I think this is a viable counter, but it doesn't really blow me away the way that Meg does where she spawns with the mech. When she pops out of the mech, she has a 50% damage reduction shield and the mech heals. It is an insanely strong brawl at the moment. Yeah, definitely a really strong one. I think not necessarily overpowered, though, at least when talking to other pros in this region and in NAS, NA West as well. They feel like she's definitely better. Do not get me wrong. Really good stuff. And we've seen some great execution this weekend. And maybe their opinions will change after we get a feel for their first month with the new Meg. But I think there's still ways to respond to it. I'm anticipating maybe that CMG's last pick will be a way to try and address this. Nita, a solid lane here, could be taking this as well if they want to go with one of those tankier brawlers that can sometimes execute well into Meg too. Surge, a great response though a really solid lane brawler but again needs to be a little careful of the spawner a boost the bear something that surge doesn't love to deal with so a little bit of chess going back and forth here gonna have to be really analytical on each of these sides for who they want to take when we say back and forth but we know who's going to have the last laugh which will be chas Mac gaming in a unless the will is just too much for them to contend with we saw in previous monthly finals this month just early on in the weekend how valuable she can be in brawl ball you know get some flashy own goals in there if you want but also very good at countering a brawler like nita so try gaming you're going to have a great matchup in that department we'll see how chas Mac gaming in a respond one final pick to rule them all or to kneel to the opposition. Gray is their pick, and this one has me scratching my head a little bit. I can definitely see the direction, like teleport onto Isliddy, have a grand old time, maybe even break some walls while you're at it. But at the same time, you're not gonna have enough DPS to pop Tyron out of that mech. Yeah, I think your head's in the right place there. It's a little bit of back and forth, right? I think it can be a little favorable in the throwers in general. It's something we've seen pros do. They take gray, they teleport onto the squishy thrower. They get the damage, but Meg's still Meg. That's a lot of HP unaccounted for on this map. And like you said, gray's a single shot brawler that deals good damage, but not a ton to deal with an entire robot. I think this is a situation where Meg might be able to break loose and get out of hand. Well, there's not a doubt in my mind that Chazmat Gaming NA got here and have stayed here because they know what they're doing. So how does this comp fare into the mech? Already takedown into Tyrant. 
Already a good outlook for them. Fade might be able to get a teleport relatively soon. Good jump in for Toast, and already they've taken down both of the side lanes. But here's the final boss. He's equipped with a super. Fade's getting some good tags onto him. No swipe there for Zulon. Little pull onto Tyrant. Some wall break. A pass over to RBM. This could be it. As Livy's got to do something with that ball. A super over to the right side. Teleport back for Fade. He might be able to walk this one in. Zulon needs enough DPS, but he just doesn't have it. And Chazmat Gaming and A start things off with an awesome goal. Wow, that was insane. I mean, really well executed there from CMG. I think HP is something that kind of goes slept on in Brawl Stars 2, and they've got a lot to work with. As much as we talk about Meg having plenty of HP and damage and, you know, pretty much all the stats that matter, it's also CMG that are a pretty healthy bunch as well, and I think it really shined there. Let's see now how Tribe Gaming are able to flex some of the brawlers that they've selected. We'll see Zulon's mainly focused on maintaining the control at mid. He's getting battered and bruised along the way. Chazmat Gaming and a stink just out of range. Tyron also on the level three is looking pretty fearsome, though still could be dealt with quite effectively. So far, Chazmat Gaming and a mostly taking the defensive approach. Not really picking up the ball, not looking to get too aggressive either. If RBM gets this super, it will actually be incredibly valuable for the team. Toast now taken down. This actually could be the death sentence for Chazmat Gaming in A as Livy, Zulon, Tyrant. They storm that goal line and tie things up one to one. Well played from Tribe there in a nice response. Less than a minute to go and Zulon can be right back to the mid. I am all eyes on Willow. If they can take advantage of this super, it can be a game changer. They're going to be really passive about it. They're going to wait for the right opportunity. So Livy's going to keep his distance. going to have to be really careful because a miss of that super could honestly change the way this game goes down. Teleported from Fade, missed grapple there on the Tyrant. Zulon and Tyrant both very low on health. A killer jump in from Toast, crash landing, but he sticks it in the end. A goal in, and Chazmag to gaming take game number one. They're able to hold off Meg. Nicely done from CMG. I think that's definitely a point of emphasis for this matchup. We talked about it a bunch. We talked about it all weekend. We've seen it across the world. Meg is strong. It's all about how you adapt, and they're able to deal with that really well. Kicking off game number two here. It's going to be CMG with a small lead. It's Livy keeping his distance on the right. Zulon already taking some serious heat here, and now a dive in Whoa. from Toast as well. Instant pickup there, but Zulon's walking up the map oh, right no. now. Plenty to work with. A gadget being popped. 588 going out of Meg 4. And can RBM slide it away? Yes, he does! Toast picking up this ball and now dribbling it down the field. Wow, that's a slow reload speed of Meg really crippling her there. She absolutely could have had a goal, but what a hero play there from RBM. Great way to prevent that goal from being scored. You'll see he's also playing really passively on that left side to avoid giving Tyrant his super earlier on in the game. Toast also has been cycling out his supers relatively quickly. Could be coming in with the next one pretty soon. Zulan now back in the Meg. There's a lot of health to work with, and Tyrant gets his first super of the game. Good stuff for Tribe Gaming, now enabling them to push up to the enemy side. But Chazmat Gaming and A are holding strong, not giving up an inch of room. Gotta watch out for that Fade Super 2. Gonna be trying to catch some people off guard. But as Livy has a super of his own, Fade, big pickup left hand side. Three brawlers standing for CMG. Zulu on low HP. Bruce the Bear touching down in the field, and it's a lot of red on my screen ready. Fade walks it in, picks up a goal for CMG, and they're gonna take advantage here in game number two. Could be Tribe Gaming looking down the barrel of defeat here now as Chazmat Gaming and Air just one goal away from claiming this set and tying up the scoreline. We anticipated the 3-2 incoming. I didn't think it was going to get this close so early on. Though, Fade gets taken down on the right side. This is a good opportunity for a push for Tribe Gaming. Zulon with a pass up to Tyrant. No one to protect him on the right just yet. Fade respawns, but he doesn't have much DPS. And Zulon has that shield active. Jump in from Tyrant. It's got to be RBM, but he just doesn't have enough firepower. And it's all tied up in this game once again. Even when she's not in the mech, she's a problem. Zulon getting a major goal right there to tie things up. They're already down one game to CMG. We're going to big teleport there. Tyrant is going to fall. Bruce walking his way forward. It's going to be a real problem for his Livy, who doesn't do well into a spawner like that. Bruce just overwhelming them now. As Tyrant finally comes to the rescue. 3v2 situation. Ball on the tribe side. It's all about who can deal with this best in overtime. Zulon trying to 
push forward once again. Toast holding strong. RBM also looking to farm up that next super. Takes a bit of damage along the way. Nothing he can't recover from. On the right side, Tyrant gets that level three. That's devastating for Fade. Trying to dodge out some of the shots, and he does. But he's only two shots remaining. Zulan also has a super. Here it is, right up the right side. Fade doubles back to pick it up. But Tyrant and Zulan have their number. Easy super in the right side of the goal. And Tribe Gaming tie up set number two. Wow, I thought that goal might have gone in ready. It looks really, really <laughs> close. Didn't think he would be able to get the backpedal in there in time, and he just barely did, ultimately still ending up with a goal from Tri. But sometimes you just got to shoot your shot. He saw the lane and the opening, and regardless, it still worked out. 1-1 one, one overall. We'll see if these teams change anything up. Still going to be a Gray versus a Willow matchup. Zulon just trying to get some heavy firepower down on the ground. Tyrant going to need that tier two, like we say, all the time with Surge. It's so crucial for making him more valuable. And right Right now, it's CMG being forced away quickly. The half field line going to Tribe early. I think really the big accelerant for Chazmat Gaming in A is going to be whether they get that super in early. Toast could absolutely jump over to his Livy's lane. He's pretty low. Here it comes, actually. Jump in, crash landing, and a takedown. It's a 3v2 now. Zulon's still holding strong. That ball is absolutely inaccessible. <laughs> and yeah, get away from me. Throws down the super, <laughs> a swipe right in Toast's face. And that actually shuts down that entire push around the left side, affords enough time for his Libby to come back. Big teleport in from Fade, take down once again. This could be a goal scoring opportunity, but as you said, Kenny, Zulon is such a problem even when he's not in the mech. Yeah, that shield can do a lot of work. Right now, though, it's going to be Toast has so much HP at his disposal. It's going to take Zulon right out of that dive in now. Toast looking for a kill. Does get one. Is he going to get two? Not quite. Is Whoa. Living getting picked up here, though? Fade trying to make a hero's effort. Walking it forward. Can Tyrant Ooh. do enough? Yes, he can. Has the shots down in time. And now it's Tribe. Going to be able to dribble this one up the map. Perfect display of where impatience can take you. We saw just... A near miss there from Fade. He knew he was going to die if he took all three hits of damage, and he tried to bait some of that damage around the right side and was hoping that he'd be able to pass it through. Tyrant just did not have enough time. He's got three shot. Could be devastating for Chazmat Gaming and A, but it looks like they've afforded themselves another good position. Bear down on the left side. Everyone's pushed in. Toast could get this takedown. No, he's controlled. He's now going for RBM. Could be friendly fire. No, not quite. But he's still going to fall on the left side to the poison. Fade has that ball on the right side. RBM just looking to recover that super. They know that they can't really get a goal in this position. They're looking to maintain where they have control at the moment, though, and maybe afford someone a super. A little emergency teleport over there from Fade also gets a good lane flex if someone needs it. Still, though, no major moves. Tyrant also has his level three ready for that extra range as we progress closer and closer to overtime. That is Livy Super is so good. I'm sure he's going to want another of those pretty quickly because it can make a huge difference, especially in overtime. If you're in a 4v2 in a wide open map, it can go a long way. But control right now for CMG is these walls are about to come down. Tyrant trying to force them off this ball. Now jumping in, still goes down though. Fade with the Super, a teleport in. Sulam with the swipe. It's going to be three brawlers now, 2v2. Walking it forward, toast shot Ooh. right past the RBM and a team assist right there. CMG strike back. Tie ball game. Uh, that that deserves a clap. That deserves like a round of applause right there. A little golf clap action because wow, what a shot and what teamwork as well. A little pass up there as you put it for RBM to slot that one nice and easy. But even if they make it look easy, it's anything but right. This is a furious matchup between the two, and we've already seen it get that much closer. Two two one so far, and CMG tie up this match. Yeah, that was insane. I mean, we can't say it enough. I'm so impressed with the competition in NAE. CMG is certainly living up to the hype that we gave them, right? We haven't seen them make this grand final stage yet this year, but they're shining brightest in the big moments. And that's what you got to do, especially against a team like Tribe Gaming. These teams have a long history playing against each other, not just in 2023, but also in 2022. They've had some close calls a lot. CMG have even beaten at them before. Not in grand finals. That would be a big first for them here today. But nonetheless, so impressive and I think seeing Willow super kick in here a little bit too you know kind of curious I came into this weekend not knowing how good she was really going to be but I think this weekend has really illustrated a big moments that that super can go a long way but sometimes the team works just too strong and that's exactly what we saw there with that goal from CMG and, and, and another thing I will I will give you this one I will give you this W because the Meg was not a win condition in this one Chaz Matt gaming in a the, I, I think I was right to put my faith in them actually because you're not picking like the big you know quote counters like the obvious things that are able to get lots and lots of damage dealt versus her because well they just know how this game works 10 kills 
for Fade such an impressive performance that hopefully extends in a Kaboom Canyon unless we see a one-sided match here. And I'm not quite expecting that between these two. Kaboom Canyon is also another map that we're just now seeing re-enter the competitive map pool. So what will have changed? Last time we checked in, Amber was still pretty good on this map. And she's even better now with that new gear. So might be one of the brawlers I'm looking out for. I think a good shout as well. Curious to see if Meg makes any appearances, which no surprise, she's in the band stage. Okay. And there's the one you called out. One for one for each of us, buddy. And we're showing <laughs> up as the first overall pick. And look, the little rework that she got, or I guess a better word would be a, a new upgrade, would be that you get slowed down in those puddles of gasoline, which is so major. You know, we, you guys talked about it and called it out earlier too. Sometimes you don't even need to shoot the shot, right? One, I think they take away Tyrant from playing this brawler, which she excelled mm -hmm. at earlier. But two, now they can try and help themselves with map control, even when Amber's not firing, no pun intended, she could still be a problem. Well, I think an obvious counter to this would be Crow, and we'll see if they decide to go with this here, because it's not banned out. And if you ask me, it's one of the best brawlers on this map. Chazmag Gaming might actually decide to pick it up for themselves, but they have to be mindful of precisely what they're facing against. Eve can be very, very troublesome especially if you're a single target brawler. Not gonna be an issue for Amber, obviously. Lola is a selection here. And I'm liking this, it's good, it's consistent. It doesn't necessarily deal effectively with anything on Tribe Gaming, but I also don't see uh, like the Bonnie or the Eve to be brawlers that counter out anything in particular super hard or have some really big hard counters with the exception of like Colette, which is a viable option for Chazmek. Yeah, I think it could be too. Colette, of course, can be a huge damage dealer onto the heist safe every time that she kind of drives in and drives out with that super about 10% damage. And that doesn't even account mm. for things like damage gear. B, a brawler that this team is so good at using. They have multiple really powerful B brawlers, Toast being one of them, of course. I'm really excited to see what they can do with this. I think B is just kind of a safe option in general. Don't know if it's necessarily hard countering anything. If anything, the spawners could possibly be a problem for B. So lane matchups can be really important here. And of course, boys, a fun one to see the rocket launcher man touch down the ground. It is always fun, especially in the hands of Tribe Gaming. However, what has me wondering a little bit is like, what exactly is this to deal with? They might be able to break down some walls, but I'm not seeing brawlers that benefit like a ton from having walls. Maybe Fade, but even Fade doesn't really get outranged by any of these brawlers. So I think that this is a very directed draft for Chazmat Gaming and A. I think they've gotten the brawlers that they want. Tribe Gaming, it's uh, it's like an assortment, right? It's like I, it's like I reached into a what bag of mixed jelly beans and I just pulled out a few ones and maybe like got rid of the gross ones that I didn't want. And this is what I'm looking at on the side of Tribe Gaming. Not the greatest analogy, but it's what <laughs> makes sense to me, all right? Chazme Gaming in A. Still. Solid comp. I think I give them the out draft here. But Tribe Gaming, the kings of execution. Yep, it's all going to come down to execution at the end, right? You know, the draft can go super well for you, but if you can't play it, what difference does it make? Right now, Tribe Gaming owning the mid ground, but Fade has something to say about it for sure. Throwing a lot of puddles down. Gadget coming in from his Libya as well. A final shot connecting there. It's going to take down Amber. Now some spawners touching down, which also Eve got a little bit of an addition there too. We'll have four spawners touching the ground, assuming they pick that up. It's going to be letting it rain now too. Small lead here for Tribe Gaming. See the Ego go in, RBM quickly loses that. Tyron and his Livy stay alive and even get to heal up some health. As a result, his Livy now ready with a rocket field. Does go for a combo there with Tyron on to Toast, but Toast manages to stay alive, affords himself a bit of time to recoup that health as well. Tribe Gaming are all over this mid, but they're really decisively staying outside of some of these puddles of fire fuel, which Fade is having some difficulty getting back into. He wants to use Scorch and Siphon, wants to be getting that super back for free, but he's gonna have to use his gadget if he wants to do that. And these are in short supply. You only get a few per game. Here comes another super for Fade. Could be getting a bit more area control for him. A little burn there onto the bushes at mid but not quite too much action just yet. Good defense for Chazmek, big destruction of the gas on Chazmek's side. They might finally get a push in. Holy Ego doing just a little bit of work, only about 2%, and CMG really have to take advantage. You know, the time's gone down, Tribe owned control for a really long time, and if all they can get out of that is 8%, it's gonna be really difficult to come back here. Fade letting them have it on the right-hand side as Tyrant, as Livy keep their distance, trying to hit those sharpshooter shots, but now Fade's gonna completely take over on the right. We're gonna need to see Toast, RBM get up there, and have to see some big Lola Ego plays if they wanna do enough damage in time. Sure, his control afforded for Chazmek so far, but they can 
still push up. 90% remains on Tribe Gaming safe. It's a 20% differential that they had to make up in a very short time frame. Tyrant has the Super 40. He's going to clear that obstacle. Fade has to respond. Same for Toast, but he's going to blast through. Fade also going to get taken down in the back lines despite his best efforts of defense. It might still be a victory. No, not quite. Chazmat giving an A fall here. And Tribe Gaming get ahead by one game. Nicely done. Tribe Gaming showing what they've got. And I feel like they were just in the driver's seat from the get-go there. It felt like Sasma Gaming did make a little bit of a comeback, right? They get some positioning under their feet. They're in the mid-ground. But even still, even when Tribe wasn't on offense, their defense was superb. They didn't give up a lot there. And it seems opening up this wall is a huge part of their strategy, maybe to help out Brock and Bonnie and Eve because they've got some serious distance on them so they can open up the map, make it a little easier to line up those shots and not allow for RBM fade or toast if they take over to kind of move up the map like we see Tyrant here. He can just hunker down, hide behind those walls, because they have nothing to get over it. It's a tough bit of terrain to cover. However, Tribe Gaming are certainly cut out for it. We'll cut RBM out of the equation on the left side. Fade now coming in, getting a good bit of destruction on those walls and destruction as this Livy falls. Now gets to use the Scorching Siphon once again. Tyrant with a jump in, not able to get too much damage. RBM has to defend Zulon on the right side. Looks like he'll get these hatchlings out, actually, and a bit of survival here, too. Really troublesome for Toast to deal with. Still going to be able to tank those with the use of Honey Molasses. Great plays from Chazmac so far, but they still have yet to make a significant push onto the side of Tribe Gaming. Yeah, that's right. Only 2% being done. So they're going to have to make a serious push here to try and get some damage dealt. Tyrant, Zulon, is Livy all clustered together here as RBM is going to let him have it. Ego going down quickly, though. So again, not a ton of value out of that. No kills being picked up. No damage being acquired. And Fade still just out of striking distance onto that safe. The Tribe defense has just been something to watch throughout the set. It certainly has playing it really effectively. Ooh, Tyrant not going to be able to clear that wall this time, but RBM luckily falls thereafter. Tribe Gaming will still be able to defend this quite easily as long as they can win a 2v1. Toast falls. Now Tribe Gaming gets to push up once again, but they're being quite conservative about it. They have plenty of time to sit in this one position. It is a small differential, though. Just 10% separates these two teams on the score so far. Now dropping to 40 as Livy gets a big rocket rain in on that safe. RBM's the sole defender versus three enemies. He might be able to get a takedown. No, not quite. Zulon with a jump out, and this is devastating for Chazmac. They only have 30 seconds to respond. Yeah, and they're going to have to get moving here again. They just haven't had a real big movement on offense. It's kind of getting up the map and then getting shut down. And then they try it again, but ultimately it's just tribe and control with 20 seconds left to go. Tyrant with the super is Livy with the super. Now a pickup on the fade. I don't know if there's anything they can do. 10 seconds left. Really just left to sit and watch their high safe disintegrate. <laughs> They're fully at the mercy of Tribe Gaming here in numerous ways. The most important of those being the entire set going their way with Tribe Gaming claiming their second set of this match. Wonderful stuff for Tribe. It's about par for the course. It's about what we expect. But this one was vastly more dominant for Tribe Gaming than in the previous sets. It's looking like a good bit of momentum on their side. Yeah, momentum swing for sure. I mean, that was the biggest runaway of a set we've had for this entire matchup. I think we saw a really good set from CMG, even when they lost in set number one, but that looked to be a little bit on the weaker side for them. I don't know if that's due to the draft, if just Tribe had their number in that, if the strategy was foolproof, or heck, maybe they just played the map really well. Sometimes you just get beat right, but we've seen what Chasmic Gaming can do. Don't hit the panic button quite yet if you're on the CMG side, because still got to win another one here. It is a best of five, and again, we all across the desk really felt like this could be pushed to a fifth set and I still think it could be but now they're in dangerous territory tribe gaming with the lead and a little cushion never something you want to see and especially if you're at the mercy of it right unfortunate that Chazmag Gaming had to be on the receiving end but they do get their chance to strike back we'll have to turn back the clock a little bit and analyze what precisely went wrong we do see Chazmag Gaming getting some commendable stats especially Fade over here with five kills definitely outnumbering what Zulon and Tyrant were able to pop off there but it's Livy here with nine kills what a defense from Tribe Gaming usually we don't focus in on these kind of stats in the heist because the objective is not to kill enemy brawlers it's to well kill the enemy safe 
safe. But still, I think this is quite evident, quite telling, uh, even just looking at the numbers here, of how well Tribe Gaming were able to defend. They were able to maintain control of mid for a good long time, keep CMG trapped in their own spawn, and even when mid was retaken from them, they held fast in that position. There was never a time where CMG was simply raining down upon their safe, and there were ample moments of that coming from Tribe. Yeah, I think that's a very fair point. I mean, you know, kills aren't everything in that mode, and it won't be for Jim Grab either. But if you're almost doubling the amount of kills that the other team has, you got a pretty big advantage, I would say. That's what we saw from Tribe, of course. Crystal Arcade, though, very different game mode than we saw on Kaboom Canyon. The bands might reflect that, but you know what? Some of the brawlers stay pretty similar already. It's uh, once again going to be a meg matchup here. Let's see what CMG does in response. Yep, yet another mag matchup. We'll see if it works well for Tribe Gaming this time. It didn't really work so well for them on Brawl Ball, but, you know, new map, new vibes, same brawlers uh, on the side of Tribe, at least so far. Chaz Mag Gaming and Ave picked up some new ones that we haven't seen rear their heads just yet in this match. Some Gus, some Spike in here, never hurt anybody. And I think Spike is actually a really safe pick. I think a lot of people will share that mentality with me, but something that I will say quite often is this is almost too safe of a selection. We'll see how exactly it's addressed on the side of Tribe Gaming, but Chazmec are also affording themselves a strong last pick, getting rid of one of the stronger tank counters that they could possibly face. Some typical stuff for Chazmec Gaming would be like, go for the Sam or something. But now that Tribe have the wall break, it's gonna be quite difficult to make that work. Yeah, I think Spike can deal a lot of DPS too, which might be an extra kind of motivation to pick this into Meg, right? I wouldn't expect Spike to go mid or anything. That's kind of what I expect Meg to end up doing. I think Colonel Ruffs is a good pickup for them, and Otis, nicely done as well. I really like this composition coming in from Tribe. We're not used to seeing Meg and Crystal Arcade and all of these gym grab maps, but this feels like a situation where she might shine. Got somebody that doesn't deal a ton of damage. I get that you want the shield on your side. I'm not giving up on the Chasmin Gaming comp whatsoever, but so far I am a big fan of the Tribe Gaming one. Same here, I mean, you can't really go wrong, right? Just pick the brawlers at the top of the tier list is what we often see from Tribe Gaming, and this is no exception. We'll see RBM select the Carl here. Like that, it's gonna be difficult to deal with, say, as Livy in close range if he has that swipe. Otherwise, though, I think that this one is, you know, quite effective for RBM. Could also get silenced, but it's not gonna do much as long as you're within that protective pirouette. And it'll also be slicing right through sandbags from Zulon if he runs those. And with Fade and Toast still on the field, I wouldn't be, like, too surprised if he still decides to go for the sandbags. I would say second gadget with that meteor shower is probably more effective here. We'll also get him good early game control of one of these bushes. Once you get into one of these positions, it is so hard hard to shove someone out if you don't have wall break. Kicking off game number one here, it's gonna be Zulon running it towards the mid, the monster truck mech already being a problem as RBM being pinned down right now. Does have a super, Toast goes down here too, sandbags in play. Not gonna make things easy for Fade as he's gonna have a sandbag right in his face. And even though Zulon is kicked out of the mech, still a large lead, five gyms already for Tribe Gaming. Could be compounding, but Toast will be able to grab the first one for his team. RVM now with the big assault forward, going right for Zulon, or maybe shifting gears. Never mind, taking down his Livy. Almost a kill on the Tyrant Curveball claims his life. Never mind, it's Toast. Everyone on Chazmat Gaming in A is calling these shots together, focusing on an individual target one at a time, and it has devastated Tribe Gaming's ranks. Big destruction, too, as Zulon gets that gadget popped on him. Still, he's able to stay in the fight. Sandbags down once again to protect versus Fade on the right side, but it's just too far back. It's not going to afford him too much on that right side. Regardless, he gets to advance forward. We'll see as Livy sort of stick in this position that can oftentimes be impossible to remove someone from. CMG really waking up here in set number four. We didn't see their best work in that last one, but now Aww. we're starting to see them really shine. Dive in from RBM, shield being applied, and he wants more, barely staying alive. 184 HP, let the man collect his treasure. 10 gems now for RBM. All they have to do is play a successful defense, and they've knocked Zulon out of the mech. Gonna be way too difficult as one last swipe goes down for RBM. What a game there from CMG. Beautiful, just beautiful, and an amazing execution of what you can make happen when you give RBM that shield from Gus. It's 
this team playing around their individual strengths. And right here, RBM is just the centerpiece of this entire comp. It's really put RBM in a position and just let him go. Dude's just a Beyblade, let him rip and see what happens. <laughs> it also helps that the guy's spinning, but Zulon spins a little bit too. So, hey, maybe there's two of them on the same field, but they'll go be going head to head quite likely. RBM does get shut down a bit early on. And Tribe Gaming now get that mid control that they got in game number one. You have to recall that CMG did manage to get the retake even off of that with a good play in from Toast and RBM combining their supers. So Zulon is Livy Tyrant. They all need to hunker down and prepare for this kind of instance. That's a great shout. I mean, we did see it. Sometimes one kill is all you need in gym grab, and the most important one they could find is against Zulon. CMG finally starting to move up this map, but really being shut down in this right-hand side as Livy getting a pickup. Zulon helping now, collecting their seventh a huge lead, and CMG gonna have to find a way to once again find a clutch kill. CRBM on the right side. Feeling a lot more opposition this time. As Zulon and his Livy know that he's kind of the win condition for the team. Toast, though, does get a super. It's got to be popped on him because RBM's too low to continue on. Zulon also could be popped out of the Meg. Almost kill shot coming in. Just 14 health left. And yup, yeah, Meg's a little buffed now. She gets to regen that health afterwards. Could be enough to carry her all the way to the finish line. Three seconds left. RBM now circling in, but just not enough DPS. And we head on to a match point. One more to go, and Tribe Gaming could be taking their second monthly finals in a row, trying to make that return and establish themselves as the kings of NA East. CMG got a heck of a fight that they got to put up here in game number three. Otherwise, it's the end of the road. We're going to have to see some bigger moments from them like we saw in game number one, and they're going to have to do their best to not let Tribe overwhelm them early like we've seen in these first two. Well, already strong start for Chazmat Gaming in A. They do face a lot of fire down that mid lane. RBM also in a slightly different matchup than he has been before. He is going to be trying to get some easy shots on Zulon. It's not going to be easy in any sense of the word as he and Toast fall one right after the other. Tyrant gets to collect these gems for himself and retreat back to the bushes on the right side. It's difficult to remove someone from this position without wall break. As I've said earlier, Chazmat Gaming in A are absolutely feeling it at the moment. Fate is trying to get some of these curveball shots in here, but the use of the fat splatter from Tyrant is keeping him back quite well. He's out of these gadgets now. It could be the opportunity for Fate to start pushing in, especially as he has that life plant heal and a super to match. Toast has that super too. Almost a takedown to Zeolon. Once RBM gets that super, Toast is going to be looking to combine forces with him, make a big play. CMG doing everything they can to try and find their way back in this one. Colonel Ruff Super going down. RBM has the extra HP, but going against two Brawlers is tough for anyone, especially when it says Livy and Zulon on the other side. Now being knocked out of that mech as well. 7-4, to four, still a fighting chance in this to say the least, but if Zulon gets another mech, could be too much to handle. Zulon still keeping things at range. Once Toast gets that super, we have to be expecting a big play in. Is Livy much of the same? He's powered up and he has that super at the ready. Zulon's also not powered up. It could be a two for one deal. RBM now circling in, take down to his Livy. Good dodges, but Zulon still gets that kill. Tyrant falls, Zulon picks up a couple more gems, but a lot of area control has been forfeited by both teams, in fact. Zulon's gonna be winning it back for his team, and Chazmat Gaming and AR just one gem away from starting this countdown. Even when they have it, though, they can't afford to back up just yet. Tribe Gaming has a enough time to wait for a couple more gems to spawn. Zulon also has that super for close range combat. It's really, really tough. Both teams want to go for these gems, but they simply can't at the moment. Huge sandbags pop for his Livy, and this is a countdown for Tribe. Those are going to be a real problem for Gus. So much discipline being shown by both of these teams. This is a masterclass of not hitting the panic super buttons. It's going to be really tough here, each trying to establish some serious control as Toast going to branch out now, picking up a second here as well. Countdown beginning, two gyms in Chasma Gaming's pocket extra. Dipping below 10 seconds left. Tribe Gaming need to collect one more gem here. Toast now with the combo in as Livy taken down. Zulon also could be popped out of the mech. Just one second left and not enough time for Tribe Gaming to collect the last gem. We're going to a set five. 
Oh man, ready. I thought they might be able to walk away from it, but Chasmic Gaming, take a deep breath. You can see a sigh of relief on their faces, similar to Ew. how I'm feeling right now too. I was talking about how I was a little calm earlier. That's a lie, man. This is this is crazy. It's exactly what we expected, right? We're in the set five. And like you said, now we just have to find out who the unfortunate victim of only getting two sets is. Uh, you say we expected, and yes, we did, but you called the shot, so I'll commend you there, but I think a lot of people out there are also kind of expecting this close of a matchup, and you totally should, because both of these teams are just so darn good. Chazmec, especially, has been a team that I think has been flying under the radar for a while, and this is a perfect example. Them stepping toe-to-toe -to -toe with a team like Tribe, even though having some moments where they look kind of shaky, they have great ideas that are repeatedly able to propel them to victory. I think that the combo of Gus and Carl was just brilliant. And let's also note that both sets where Tribe Gaming decide to play the Meg, they lost. This is making me question a lot of what I thought I understood about Brawl Stars heading into this new meta. Yeah, I mean, it's just so insane. We're getting to this point where there's so much good competition. It came down to the wire in this game. A good shield being tossed onto RBM there. We've got Zulon getting knocked out of this. They collect that one extra gem, and look how close he was. No, Zulon, it was going into his pocket. I could see it. I could see it, and it just didn't get there in time. That's a, I mean, that's a millisecond. That's got to be. It's really just a microsecond play. Um, I think we'll get to watch in reverse too. Wow, collected right after the end of the match. That has to hurt, but at the same time, right, you're really relying on like a microsecond to determine whether you win the match or not. I think even headed into that, Tribe Gaming knew that this one was done and dusted. It's a set five incoming. They had to expect that. Looking at the stats, so I think commendable stuff on both sides. It's through and through a very competitive last set. Great brawlers chosen on the side of Tribe Gaming. Great control played. But Chazmat Gaming in A had those good combos. They had those good moments. The 2-3 pick of Carl and Gus, I've said it once, I've said it twice, I've said it a million times, but I'll say it one more. Great thinking from their side. Question is, do they have something prepared for the final set? There's nothing beyond this. There's no tie in Hot Zone. It's split coming in. Ooh, and it's a tough final boss to deal with already. Overtime in Brawl Stars, this map has been really tough to handle. The draft's so interesting in this era of Brawl Stars in the blind format. It was already hot enough to handle, but now we're really going to have to see how teams adjust, not only to this map being reintroduced, it's in a set five. It's when the stakes are highest and during balance changes and everything. We're going to have to see how these teams adapt. Two very strong teams are going to be going at it here. And the first overall pick, it's going to be Barley. Interesting first pick here, but it makes sense, right? You've gotten rid of that um, other thrower quite early on, right? Banned out that, that Sprout. There's still other options. I like the reaction from Tribe Gaming. Immediately go for the Stew. That's going to shut down the Barley in a lot of ways, unfortunately. That combined with the Max is going to be super troublesome for Barley to deal with. Might even have to run the Sticky Syrup Mixer, actually, in order to deal with these couple of Brawlers. This, unfortunately, might spell defeat for Chazmat Gaming in A, unless they're somehow able to counter out these other two Brawlers hard enough that Barley can succeed. Could be a Colonel Ruff's choice if it hadn't been banned, so they'll have to think of other ways to block it out. B selection from them. This is the B into Max, and it's really just dependent on how these two brawlers are played. You have speed on one side, you have slow on the other side. Just whoever has the best mechanics wins here, but Tribe Gaming still have a final counter pick. Yeah, this is tough. I mean, we've got Barley, who gives you a little versatility over the walls. We've got Penny, we've got B, just strong choices in general, kind of looking out for some interesting picks here. It's going to be Rico. The fact that Rico's being drafted sixth on this map kind of blows my mind, just because historically, he's somebody that always comes to the forefront of picks. And now we're going to get to put it on a brawler who's really good with it, too. Man, this is going to be a toughie. Of course, Barley does have that kind of favorable matchup into Rico, but I imagine that the stew pick could also be to kind of break open these walls. So a little yin yang here. Here, pros and cons for both sides. I don't know what's going to happen, Ready, but I'm I'm excited. This is going to be a great finish. It's it's going to be a great uh, resolution to this conflict between Chazmat Gaming and Tribe Gaming. It, this is a storied matchup. Chazmat Gaming could finally take things down in the grand finals. Right? They have defeated Tribe Gaming before last year in the quarterfinals. Right? It was not. 
Um, it was not the grand finals like it is here. So this would be monumental for this org. They'll finally get a grand finals win in North America if they can finish it off here. Early victories on the left side for Toast and RBM. Mirrored around the right side, this time by Tribe Gaming, as as Livy is trying to take things down. Still, notice how surgically Chazmac is trying to deny the super to, to Stu. They know that if they give that super to Stu, then it pretty much is all over, especially for Faith. Wow, really strong start and a huge pop-off super there from as Livy finding the perfect angle. And despite all this hard work that Tribe are doing, it, it's complete control right now for CMG. Sure, they have a touchdown on this right-hand side, but they have to make sure that they're doing some of their own as Livy now tucking in here, getting some hot zone percentages as they pick up one kill on the left. But RBM now able to play defense. Zulon, though, not giving up. So relentless, wow. but does end up falling. Big lead here but Tyrant can now start working on this left-hand side. I love this defense of the left side from RBM. He's been defending it for so long, it didn't give a single percentage of capture to Tyrant. But now Tyrant has eventually gotten his super. He's running the long dash too. Zero drag being used full force at the left side. Trying to get in close versus RBM, taken down. Toast also defending furiously. Fade is going to be sort of abusing this matchup on the right side as Livy staying out of range a lot of the time, also popping that bouncy castle to stay alive. Not any connections off of that super, unfortunately. And now with that turret down, it's going to be yet another opponent for his Libby to face on the right side. Still being lured out by Zulon and Tyron on the left side. Great use of the super from Fade. And this might be Chazmeg's chance to push in on the right. This is a defensive matchup at its finest. They got underestimated how close this really was between the two teams. Now CMG finally able to touch down on the right just a little bit. 5% being the difference. RBM trying to keep Stu at bay as his Livy continues to use these bounce shots. It's a great map for Rico and you can see why. And of course, as Livy playing one of his most notable brawlers while doing so. RBM now trying to rush in here, but Tyrant dashing over to the left-hand side. Fade low HP trying to stay alive, but he does slide the shot through and now Zulon's gonna be able to move left as well. Still advantage for Tribe Gaming here. RBM still on the right side. He's playing quite defensively. He has a turret at his disposal if he needs to block out some more damage from his Livy. Take down on the left side. Zulon falls. Chazmat Gaming in a take back this lead. Now, though, the clock is in play. 25 seconds left as Livy could fall. Here he comes. Zulon Tyrant also here to replace, reinforce that right side. They're still behind, and they need to capture this left side. It's gonna be difficult versus Toast. They have to just rush it, as Livy might not be cut out for the job. He does get a big super in here, but not that many connections. Zero drag from Tyrant isn't enough to dodge out those shots from RBM. Takedowns on the right side, too. It's a Chazback Gaming victory, as they push things to a match point in their favor. CMG one away from making history could have some serious first here for North America for some of these players like Thade and Toast could pick up their first grand finals whenever we could have yet another first as well as it would be our third different grand finals winner in NA East legacies on the line and Chasmic Gaming with a real opportunity to cause an upset. Well, Chazmat Gaming are going to have to do it again. And Tribe Gaming might already understand their tricks here. Looks like they're already trying something new. Tyrant on the left side, still taking that lane, but as Livy's here to reinforce, Zulon's also getting a good bit of capture on the right side. Fade's trying to keep him back, They're just playing at the edge of each other's range. Zulon just playing so surgically. Make sure he's at the edge of that range. Take down the, onto Tyrant on the left side. Chazmat Gaming in A gets an early lead, but Fade has to back up on the right as Zulon starts to rack things up on the right. Inching forward, but Chazmat Gaming in A is notably ahead. There's a lot going down for both of these sides. I mean, each kill is going to matter so much. I think Fade is giving Zulon a good bit of trouble here, not allowing Zulon to easily just step on the hot zone right here. Now with the super going down, Max is going to be forced away. RBM and Toast still in complete control of this left-hand side. And unless Tyrant can kind of break through here and open up the map a little bit, it's just going to be a wide open range. And even if they do, B and Penny, sharp shooters, Whoa. everybody rushing this right-hand side. But nonetheless, it's going to be Fade staying alive. It's now a monstrous lead for CMG. Tribe have some serious work cut out for him. Uh-oh, bit of a misplay by Fade though. He was forced to get too aggressive and in that pinch, he ended up feeding Tyrant a super. This is it, this is the big play for Tyrant. He's trying to make it work, but RBM's ready with a salty barrel. Here comes that trash panda, now down at mid. Turret firing down upon Zulon. 
And there's Livy on the right side, has a super at the ready. Difficult for Fade to play this lane because he can't safely get inside of here. And now Tribe Gaming might actually have some comeback potential here. Zulon Biva misplay on the left side, still able to get a trade. And Tyrant still out of a super. RBM's been playing this one really, really well, really, really patiently. Almost a takedown for Fade. Zero drag all the way to the enemy. Spawn, fresh meat for Toast. And Chazmat Gaming in A still remain ahead. But this time, they're going to get tied up pretty soon by Tribe Gaming. Oh man, 2% being the difference right now, and Tribe just have to find a way to play defense and offense all at once. CMG now branching out, major tag onto Tyrant, it's gonna be a kill as well. Here oh. comes the rush, and a big shot in from Toast. Zulon low HP, gonna be in some serious trouble, trying to do the best to dodge, but now two brawlers hunkered down right hand side. Huge advantage for CMG. It's almost impenetrable for Tribe Gaming. They gotta make something huge happen. Zuon has no gadgets, but does have some dodges. Toast with a final takedown. RBM and Fate constructing a fortress on the right side as Levy taken down. The spins are out. The pins are out. Chazmat Gaming NA are your monthly finals champions in NA East, East <laughs> in May. Uh, Wow, it's moments like these that completely annihilate my vocabulary because this is a first for a lot of things. We finally see the Toast team take a monthly final victory. That is insane. There's a first for everything, right? Like you said, this is a big moment for the organization, for North America. We've now gotten our third straight different champion this year. NA East is wide open. I mean, these leaderboards, by the end of the day, too, we're going to get all the math checked out in a little bit, but I really don't know what's going to happen here. You know, we've got LCQ spots on the line. We've got World Final spots on the line, and now Tribe not picking up that 100 points they need. CMG being in the lower side of this four teams, now getting a Grand Finals win of their own. Anything can happen at this point. We have entered halftime with quite an interesting storyline on our hands. Dude, it's just crazy. It's crazy. I mean, a, a part of me thought it would just never happen, right? The one consistency in NA East is that this team gets so, so close to taking down Tribe, but it happens to go down to a double match point and they fall just short. It's happened, I think, three or four times at this point, and this time they make it work in the grand finals. An amazing new chapter of NA has really just started for Chazmat Gaming NA. As an org, they've gotten one monthly final victory in Brazil, now replicating that over in NA. I'm so, so, so happy for Chazmat Gaming NA in this moment. It does make me feel a little sad for Tribe, though. They were finally sitting atop this mountain once again after being unexpectedly taken down by Moto Mommies in that very first month of the year. Now, Chazmat Gaming NA takes that spot, and what a show we've had. Wow, 10, 10, and 7. The kills just piled up for CMG North America. I'm just so impressed, man. This four-man roster, so good. I think the people at home are going to have a tough time on voting for MVP because in my eyes, there's just so many good directions you can go. Sometimes there really is just three right answers. I mean, what a rock star performance from these three and brilliant drafting along the way. RBM, your MVP for this match, and I absolutely agree. If it were not evident enough by me constantly calling out that, yeah, he's <laughs> holding down that left lane, he's not giving a single inch to Tyrant on that stew matchup. No wall break for you, no room for you. I'm just throwing down the salty barrel time after time, and you're going to have to deal with it. I agree. I think a great choice as well. And we have called that man out quite a bit over the last few months. He's worked really hard to get back into it as well. Been a little bit since RBM's claimed his own grand finals and of course won Carlos too. I mean, just so impressed with these guys. I think this is really hard fought and a real big mental swing for them too, because now this region's just wide open when you look back on the day. Just such a brilliant matchup between the two. Tribe Gaming putting forth an amazing performance. Chazmat Gaming doing much of the same, and it's influenced our bracket in a huge way. Tribe Gaming advance on to the Grand Finals, taking down Untamable Beast. Chazmat Gaming took down Motomami's FA on their ascent to the Grand Finals, where Chazmat Gaming NA took that victory, claiming the number one spot in NA East, and of course, getting that very first monthly finals victory for two of the four players. It is an amazing storyline that has now reached its conclusion and now sort of pushes into a new chapter for these two as they now kind of set their eyes on that world's stage. 
Yeah, I mean, ultimately, all this competition, of course, for money, of course, for winning these monthly finals, but it's all leading up to how those leaderboards shape up. It's all about those world final spot. Only one of them in this region, only one for LCQ as well. And after all of the math being done, Tribe Gaming, they have made a couple grand finals at this point. It is gonna pave the way for them to have a 40 point lead, but Moto Mames and Chasma Gaming now tied up. The rivalry between those two teams is one and one. You know, this is our third month in the year ready. So we've got months four, five and six coming up. These teams got a lot cut out for them. They certainly do. I mean, wow, what a close standing here with Motomamis and Chazmag tied up. Tribe Gaming still sitting at that number one spot, but they're not immune. It's been proven that the Giants can bleed and they can be taken down. And this David and Goliath story, we have a David, right? It's Chazmag Gaming in A for the time being. And I believe we have them on standby as well. We're going to get the chance to speak with one of their players. Toast, it's great to have you here and congratulations how many times has it been that y'all have gone double match point with Tribe, and how does it feel to finally bring that conclusion? Uh, it feels very nice. We've definitely gotten double match point versus Tribe so many times, not even this year, like the past few years. So to finally get the victory was very, very nice. And this was honestly the most confident I've, we felt going into this month. So I'm really happy to get the win. That's awesome to hear. Yeah, you say you come into this one really confident. And going into the grand finals, like, what are your expectations? Do you expect to take down Tribe? Or do you expect to, you know, go to set number five and then see how it plays from there? Uh, I didn't really expect anything, to be honest, going into this month. Like, I knew we were capable of winning. But we've also choked a lot of times. That's always in my head, you know. But so I'm very, very happy just to overcome that. And I hope from now on it's just upwards and we're just going to keep riding this confidence. I'm really happy to hear that, dude. Is there anything specific that you really think helped you take the victory this time and finish it all off? Uh, I don't think anything in specific was different. I think our comps were a lot better than last month. I think last month we kind of played into tribe speciality. So the fact that it was so close last month, even with that, was proved, showed to me that we can definitely beat them. But then this month, we definitely tried to draft more to our style and I think that we all played amazing today, and I think we drafted very well, and I think we've just been working together. We've been grinding even after we lost last month. We continue scrimming right away, so the hard work paid off, so I'm very happy. Yeah, the hard work pays off, and now you finally like have a conclusion to this chapter, but it's not really over yet, right? Now that you've taken a monthly final, where do you move the goalpost? What is your new objective as a team? Uh, the goal remains to make worlds. I think that's definitely what our goal has been from the start. I think it's always an unfortunate first two months. First month, RBM obviously not being able to play sucked. And then second month, losing that very, very close match. But I think we've proven today that we definitely have a shot still. And that's going to be the goal for, to make that worlds ticket. Eyes on the prize even from the start. Dude, it has been great having you up here, Toast. Before we let you go, are there any shout outs you want to make? Uh, yep. Shout out to everyone in the group chat, Untamable Beast, Dog Walkers, STMN. I love you all. all we scrimmed them all, all all week to practice for this. So thank you all for the great practice. And shout out to my teammates, obviously. I love all of you guys. And shout out to Sword for coaching us. And shout out to Charlie Mack for always believing in us through, through everything. That's true. I mean, what a journey it has been to get here. Congratulations once again, and hopefully we get to run this back in the next monthly final. Congratulations again, man. Thank you so much. Have a good night. What an awesome guy. I'm so glad we got to catch up with Toast here and also be here for his first monthly final victory alongside Fade. What an awesome story, but you heard what he said. The goal from the start was to make it to Worlds. It was not just to make it to a monthly final. So this is just a milestone along the way on the journey to the ultimate goal. They've got the bigger picture, right? And I think it was really impressive stuff. He stayed pretty humble throughout all of that. And I think for them, especially, you know, we've watched their journey for a long time. Toast has been competing for a long time. Fade have been competing for a long time. Still a big deal for the other two teammates, but that first grand finals win is a big deal. That's not something a lot of players can say. Hardly anyone can say they make the top eight teams, let alone beat everybody in that bracket. Really impressive stuff. And like you said, they not only have a chance, they're in contention right now for that LCQ spot.
It's true. I mean, the action is not even over yet for the year. There's plenty more Brawl Stars ahead of us in the world sort of scene, but also in the today sort of scene, because this is only the first half of the broadcast. We still have NA West coming up, and you heard Gutos was shouting out some of those NA West teams, so I would take his word for it. Take those vouchers and stick around with us for the second half of the broadcast. We're going to go to a quick break, and we'll be back with NA West. <laughs> The past two seasons have been a whirlwind. And there it is from Zealand! <laughs> he is having the time of his life! But it's time. Get the team back together, starting with Zula. Yeah, babe, you're not going to believe this. These throwers are so good now because of these indestructible walls. Tyrant. Oh, yeah. Featuring is Livy. Mom, you sent me the wrong hairspray and I look like a complete idiot. And now introducing, in the role of a lifetime, former player, bench warmer, content creator, Lobster Fisherman, first time homeowner, and the newest coach of Tribe Gaming, Corey. Did you have to say all that? They all want the same thing this year. Their goal is to get a girl from spinning. They're known as Tribe Hearts. It's been five months since they've played, so it's time for them to get their mojo back. When a player becomes a coach, anything can happen. 67, 68, 69. Blow harder. Yes, super, yes, super. Louder. Yo, yes, super, yes, super, yes, super. Not used to being verbally berated by a former bench warmer, the team did not feel super. Good grief. I am so tired. Yeah, it's time to switch gears. With their backs against the wall, they brought in the ultimate star power. His name is... OJ! It was in that moment that everybody realized that OJ hates notebooks. Dude. What you all have here is unlike any team. It's unmatched. The skill, the communication, we have what it takes to win. Each one of you offers something of grave importance. Oh. Zulon, oh. the way you're able to maintain control on any map. Tyrant, unpredictability, that's your strongest weapon. As Livy, you can hit shots like you can see into the future. And no matter what happens, you're all Brawl Stars in my Brawl. Bro, are you guys even listening? But their Brawl hearts were not touched. Critics are raving this as the must-watch film of the year. A real tearjerker. This film will make you brawl your eyes out. Witness how it all unfolds in. Whoa, I don't know what you want me to do. Can you see me? Oh, I'm getting dizzy. Try hearts. Cut. Cut.
It has all been coming down to this. We gotta turn big dreams into action. We gotta mix action with action. Oh, oh my word! What an incredible moment! We gotta turn big dreams into action. We gotta mix action with the passion. Time short, no time for the action. Be the first and last out, make it happen. We gotta turn big dreams into action. We gotta mix action with the passion. Time short, no time for the action. Without further ado, let's get rolling. Welcome back, Brawl Nation. We are here and ready for our second bunch of North American competition games. That's what we're doing. East is in the pocket, and we're headed west. Still got Ready and Kenny here. Y'all just cast the finals. Pretty nuts. Congratulations to CMG. Uh, Kenny, they finally did it. <laughs> they finally got one. I mean, a lot of hard work, and especially for Fade and Toast, it's their first, but for the other two teammates and for CMG in A as an organization, this is a huge moment. Ramifications are going to be major, too, as we continue. An rivalry here really brewing in West, though. We've got several teams looking to contest for what could possibly be their first grand finals of the year. Absolutely. We've got a whole bunch of teams that have been jockeying for position. And this is the, what the numbers look like right now as far as everything is concerned. Up on top, we've got Dog Walkers. This has been a really strong team just across the board. And honestly, Stamina, they used to be that number one squad. But DW has really put up a fight. Special shout out to Raconic and Wash team also kind of doing the do. But ready, at the end of the day, this Dog Walkers team, is this... Are, are they just the best team in NA West? Oh, I mean, historically, yes, right? They have taken down STMN once, twice, right? And some of them weren't even in a grand final. It's remarkable how well that they've been performing, but I think STMN have ascended to their former glory. And that I've said actually every single month so far. So really nothing <laughs> is certain here in NA West. That's the one thing that is certain is that you will not be able to determine anything accurately. Well, it's not going to be Stamina versus Dog Walkers off the rip. We're going to take a look at Wash Team going head-to-head -head with Stamina. That's going to be our top side semifinal. Wash Team took down B1 and El Tridente falling down to Stamina here to make that one happen. And then the Dog Walkers beat up the Apes and TLG West falls down to Raconic. And that's how we find our other semifinal as well. Kenny, looking at the bracket, DW and Raconic, Wash Team versus Stamina. Kenny and his thoughts. <laughs> Common culprits, right? I mean, these guys are getting very familiar with each other. Similar to East, there seems to just be a powerhouse four. But so far, the story has been dog walkers have found a way to be STMN twice. Of course, they've beaten other teams as well. But when we think about NA West, when we think about the history of NA, we think about STMN. For me, if dog walkers win this month as well, if they get through Reconic and then whoever they beat in the grand finals, if they win three in a row, I don't think there's any other way to spin it. They're just the best in the region until further notice. Well, until further notice, we're going to have to keep our eyes open for said notice. And this is how we're feeling. Caster predictions coming at you. I think I might be. Oh, okay. <laughs> Everybody doing the same thing. You know, I thought maybe, Ready, you might lean towards Washed in the stamina matchup, uh, but not going to be the case. And then I also expected y'all to go dog walkers in the grand finals. Ready? Defend your answers. Look, I mean, I've said this every single month so far, but uh, I, I guess maybe I'll go 0 for 3, right? And I'll do it proudly. I think STMN are really back to where they were. They've made major changes. If you were keeping up on Twitter, right, right after the dog walkers victory in the last monthly finals, you will have seen Bobby said big changes coming soon. And then not even a couple days later, they said, so our coach is no longer part of our team. It's just us four. And after that, they kind of like won a land with 50 thousand dollars at stake so i guess that was kind of a big deal so they're coming in with a really 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 strong performance in that last lan i expect them to take it here man i mean it, it's going to be an exciting one for sure stamina has changed some things around without a doubt dog walkers though i think i think that second semi-final if dog walkers do wind up winning and finding themselves into the finals it's going to be a doozy for sure and so that's where our eyes are at. Kenny, 
Hope your head's in the game because we will see you a little bit later. Take notes and give me all the answers because this one is going to be a barn burner. Payne Baduches and Elianis take the floor against Stamina. Bobby's Orange Sands are out there. And shout out OG, also part of the squad, another four-member team. But when it comes down to Washed, these guys are anything but. Number four in the region, Baduches and Payne and Elianis. These guys are real strong. And I think Payne has really kind of become a spotlight player here, Eddie. Uh, I mean, he's absolutely one of my favorites to watch, but we've seen every single one of these players pop off independently. Betiches, of course. Hey, what's up, man? Good luck today. I'll, I'll wave back. You won't see me on screen, but I'll wave back in response. Good I'm luck waving. to Wash team. And yes, they are a very strong team. Now up against Stamina, I predict them to win the whole thing. So you already know what I think about this matchup right here. When it comes down to this team, very like sure all these squads i think on the uh, in this na west region are a lot of fun bobby is the de facto kind of leader here but sans winds up doing a lot of the dirty work you find sans kind of front and center and bobby <laughs> man, man what are you doing why are you just <laughs> eating you got a whole game to play man i always want to roast this guy but at the end of the day, if he's getting wins, there's not much you can say about it. And so, Bobby, we'll see how him and his team do against Washed. I just want to know, like, what's in the bowl? Is it Wheaties or Cheerios, dude? We, we got to know for sure. That said, one of the other mysteries that we'll never quite get to know from this team. And I'd say they play it to their advantage. And a lot of times it can be quite unpredictable. And we've seen them lever that, leverage that to their advantage at that land that took, last, uh, took place last month, especially them catching Tribe off guard repeatedly. Hard Rock Mine, pretty cut and dry map, but some things can come out of the woodworks to surprise you, like the occasional Ash, and each team only gets three bands. So good luck stomping out all of those little fires. A lot of heavy fires. I see what you did there. Because if we're going to talk about bands, we have to discuss what Amber has been up to lately. When it comes down to gem grab, I, so I think when it comes down to Amber, she's kind of map dependent. We always used to like to look at her with respect to grass. But now, the way the oil works, I think she's a little bit more open. And anytime I'm playing gem grab, I want to control this mid. So certainly worth thinking about. And is that a Shelly band? <laughs> Do we have a Shelly band up there? Yeah, usually, usually when we see a Shelly band, we point the fingering, we go like, oh, whoops, I'm getting a transmission Thanks. from production that was actually supposed to be something else. But no, yeah, the, the Shelly's legit here. So that's um, not actually that mysterious. She's gotten a bit of a buff. She can get in those back lines and STMN do have the last pick. So maybe it's a very real uh, possibility. It, it could be. I mean, Shelly, we saw her played in a different region today. So... Certainly, the rumblings have begun. We'll see what the butterfly effect is a little bit later. For Stamina, RT and a Penny locked in here. Long range turret, sure. RT has been, I mentioned before that I think RT's skill floor is really high, meaning in order to just do the bare minimum on him, you've got to be pretty strong on the camera boy. And so I think we've just now, our team's been out for a little while. We're just now kind of seeing players really kind of utilize the split half nonsense. And I think we will only see better and better RT play as time goes on. So I like, I, I sort of like this choice. We got to see how they play it on the field for sure. Yeah, I think RT is definitely a, a very worthy topic to discuss here, right? Because yes, we see some players exploring like the rest of his kit, because typically the way that he's played is he's either played as just a sharpshooter or he, you know, is a sharpshooter most of the time. And then you get in close range and then he hits you for 4,000 damage and you instantly die. Like, yeah, exactly. just, the, I, I've said it a lot and I'll echo it once again. There's just no counterplay really for this brawler. Now, he might not be the best sharpshooter in the game, but it's the impact that he has on draft simply by existing, by having very few counters that is the bigger discussion to be had we'll see the response so far has consisted of, of the stew sandy is a bit of an interesting one to me from stm in considering that this yeah. um is going to be kept at range a lot i anticipate by the stew so this has got to be more dedicated towards getting in those back lines and doing sort of the same thing ash would do it has the added benefit though of doing a great job of preventing anyone on wash team from seeing these guys. No one on wash team has more yep. than like a single target projectile. They're not able to scout out that sandstorm effectively. Pain on stew. This is a great example of just a pocket pick. 
Stu, good. Yes, we like to watch Stu a lot of the time. He's a great gem carrier. Going to be looking out for him playing. Uh, I expected him in the mid, but and I expected him on pain. But anyways, my point was going to be how well pain plays Stu. So it's up to Alianis to live up to that dream. And Sans just walking him down. See you later. Right side goes the way to stamina, but left side kind of leaning the way towards washed. And mid? Stamina's the one picking up the gems. Bobby, five in total for the moment. As Wash team return the kill on a Sands, but ready. It's all stamina right now. Sure is. That could change, though, with some of these walls breaking on the right side. Good call from Alianis to get rid of that. See Sands sort of lurking very defensively now. Maybe waiting for someone to push in versus him playing to Alianis' defensiveness as well. Bobby also needs to get some gems over here. Going to be zoned out for the time being. Payne might have an opportunity. Sans also taking advantage of that lapse in defense on the Good right super. side. Sandstorm down. A lot of these bushes scouted out in so much area control afforded for STMN. Just one more gem. That's an easy win as they look to walk it back. Got to see a lot of mobility from Wash Team if they want to interrupt. Bobby grabs the 10th gem and then sends a shot wet east side. I might confirm it. Although Batuches is pretty close, Zara's going to shade up, and so will Sands, and that's going to be it. Stamina winds up taking game number one, 10 to 2, by the way. So a pretty dominant victory for the green, black, and yellow. Very decisive from STMN. Can't really argue with any of that performance there, and I think actually the Sandy performed a lot better than I expected, and there's not really any arguing with that. We saw Sands just kind of wait there wait there. Okay, maybe I'll play aggressive. Okay, maybe I'll just win this lane real quick. And that's the rest of the game. Get one super. No one can see. Esteeman gets to clear things out really easily. Sandy, he's been a good brawler for a while. It's just that vision gear is one of those things that keeps him from being that good as of late. And there's not really any brawler that can easily get vision gear propped onto someone, which is a big issue for Wash Team facing the Sandy. That's actually a really, really big deal. Uh, the fact that you just vision gear isn't going to work out on the other side. Sandy tosses down the super, and again, this lets Stamina just clean up. Bobby picks them all up, but Bobby falls down again. And this time the gems are in a bad spot. Wash team could go to pick these up. Now Giannis is low, is on the stew though, so has those dashes. And we see Wash team scoop them all up. Eight gems, five on Payne's bell. Only three on the, on the elusive stew, so the gems popped, and Batuches picks him up. Zarn misses the last Ooh. shot. Here comes Sands. Stamina still can't pick him up, though. Have to wonder how good that gym positioning was for Wash Team because it seemed like they couldn't come to a consistency on who would pick them up. It left that right lane wide open for Sands to sneak back once again, and he gets a super off of it, too. This is devastating for Wash Team. They really can't push out a spawn at the moment. They could even get taken down in their own spawn. Aliana's frozen up. Easy kill for Bobby. Payne taking lots of damage at the back lines. He's marked up, and he's got almost no health left. As TMN get to start to bring things back. A good takedown of Sands on the right actually will allow Wash Team to keep on pushing up, but they're battered and bruised. Not a whole lot of health to work with. They will be tied up on the gym count. This is a fantastic situation for STMN. Eight all. Gem number nine for either team in the middle. And it is going to be Bobby that picks it up alongside number 10. Now, 15 seconds is enough time to go ahead and kind of to match this, so Stamina do need a little bit of control as well. One gem on the floor picked up. That second gem, not gonna, no, Payne tries, can't make it. So close, but so far. And Stamina have one game, one set, excuse me, so far. Perfect example of those moments where as a spectator you go, come on, the gem's right there, like you'll probably survive. <laughs> And no, it was actually never available to you, even as that clock ticked down to zero. There was simply no way for it to be picked up without going down. So unfortunate there, but it was locked down by STMN. It was completely earned and afforded absolutely no decision-making ability for Wash Team. Great pinches, great positioning from STMN, and some crafty drafting on their side. Sands, especially on this Sandy, it's a brawler that he loves to play. There's no secret there. But Sandy has yeah. only barely crept back into the forefront of the meta, and this is not a situation where you usually see him play. 
Well, here I think the Super really did what it was supposed to do. It just creates such a wide, a wide area now that this, we saw the Sandy Super, rather than being used as an integral initiation tool, which is usually what happens, it was used kind of after the fact as a zoning tool, which was, I think, really clever. Out of stands, uh, a slight tweak out of the usual strategy. <laughs> Really, really comes clean here. <laughs> I mean, you, you say comes clean, and he kind of cleans up his own team in the stats department because, wow, 11 kills for Sands. I mean, forget about Ash, dude. Sands is a new Ash here uh, with that Sandy action. Beautiful performance from Stamina. I didn't expect him to have that many kills, though. I got to say, I'm pretty blown away. I don't think Wash team are going to let their guard down like that again. They know that he loves this brawler. He's able to play it. But here's the other thing with STMN is they're really, really tricky. Goodbye to Hard Rock Mine. There's not really going to be another map like it in the rest of this match. So they can afford to let that trick go to the wayside, pull out something new that they prepared for Hot Potato. What do you mean? What do you mean by that? Uh, maps like Hard Rock Mine. It's very control based in a lot of ways, and Hot Potato is a lot more aggression based. I think also the other thing is it's a very cut and dry map, and the vast majority of the remaining maps in this competition today are ones that are just now entering the competitive map pool once again. So, not going to mm. really be able to surprise someone as effectively on these new maps where well, kind of everything's a surprise. Well, our picks and bands are coming out here. No surprise with respect to some of the bands. The RT gone, as well as the Meg. She's been very, very dominant across the board, across regions, just banner out is probably the right choice. The Dynamite ban is interesting, but really what you see is Dynamite and Barley. STMN want to get rid of throwers in general. Asterisk, Dynamite, we've seen some success lately, but definitely just looking at throwers primarily or oh, excuse me, Rico there. So probably going to be selected. So trying to get fewer throwers on the other side. I'm surprised that S team in would, uh, play into Anita when they first picked Barley. It just doesn't really seem like a good mix. Wash team are playing Nita into one of the biggest Nita counters with Zara picking up that one. They still have a counter pick. They might be able to salvage this, but I'm actually not really too hopeful. There's one thing that Wash team do have in their arsenal, which is the Max, which can be quite effective for Ims if you can rush her down. Aside from that, though, yeah, here's the Carl. Close range Carl? versus Ims. Still, I think, going to be quite effective if you're able to close in, but but aside from that, I really do have to hand it to S team in here. I think it might be a blunder to be picking that Nita into a bar lane. A little bit tough here, for sure. I think Nita, we saw some Nita selections uh, recently as well. Uh, Nita, I think needs to be a later draft selection just because this is the second time we've had Nita in a draft and I hear my analysts kind of say, eh, the other team might be able to just step on her. And that's kind of what happened the last time around. So. Hot potato, I think Nita can make use in this middle lane in the grass. But in NA East, we didn't see her play in that middle lane. And so questions abound. Petucci's on the Nita left side. Okay, goes mid oh, man. and takes down Bobby and trying to battle with M's and oh. is able to deploy the bear onto the safe and that's the goal. Wow, well, yeah, Coach F Dot out here knows what's up. Easy rush down with Anita from mid, and Alianis actually gets to sort of finish off the job. Big, big takedowns on that safe 65% remain, but they've taken their fair share of a beating too, especially Bobby on the barley on the right side. Alianis is gonna have to come to deal with him, but there needs to be a pinch to get him out of here. Payne also has some speed to work with, has to defend versus Sands at the same time. Alianis <laughs> might have to take responsibility here. No bear for Betiches. Sands could actually finish it off. STMN. This is actually fantastic for them. They baited out the speed from Wash Team. 8% remain on their safe. <laughs> Alianis got the kill on a Bobby and dropped the stamina pin. <laughs> now that's gaming. But stamina are really the ones with the game in their hands. Bobby gets a kill. Sans and Zar are still feeling pretty healthy. Batuch is slowed down and killed by Zar. That might be the door. Here comes Ems, and it's slammed shut. Stamina take game one. 
amazing performance on every single lane there from Stamina. I will say, though, kudos to Watch Team. They managed to make that need of work in the first part of the game. Rush her up mid, utilize some of those bushes, not only for cover, but also to get that speed and get up close and personal with brawlers that were not strong in close range. They might be able to pull it off again. Pain also going to be one of those brawlers that, well, gives Betiches quite a bit of speed to work with. I think Prudent lane switch also with Bobby now taking the left lane. Betiches didn't switch it up at all, and Bobby's just going to hard counter the heck out of this matchup. So what we're talking about pre-match, and Estiman already gets some easy damage on that safe. I mean, you want to talk about hard counter. I'm looking at Sands here, right? But Tucci's on this. Nita really wants to make use of this mid lane uh, grass that I was talking about, and Ems just won't let that happen. Mm -hmm. Sands has been playing lights out, not just with the selection, which of course is the team choice, but actually the play on the field. Ems has been doing a ton of damage, creating a ton of space, more importantly. And even with Alianas getting the cheeky kill there in the mid, I don't know how big of, how much room Wash team has with Sands doing stuff like this. Two kills for Sands. Zara's gonna come in to finish that work. Bobby also might be able to contribute some. Nope, not even needed. Easy damage in from STMN. These wow. guys are speed running all the way to the grand finals. They've already gotten two sets under their belt lightning fast. Yeah, that was just... All right, boys, clock in, clock out. Let's get to finals. <laughs> These guys are real strong, and they're letting you know it. I, I really enjoyed the draft out of here. A little bit of creativity, but not so far away from the norm that it's wild and crazy kids. So we have Sand, you know, we have Sands playing on his favorite on the on the sleepy guy, kind of working out. Everything made sense to me, and then they brawled it out well as well. This is what you want if you're a stamina fan. Oh, totally. I mean, not only is it a decisive victory, it's a quick one, but you can tell why it works. If we really went through the draft there, though, I think we could also pick out a few things that Wash Team fell just short on. I think the Nita pick, it worked in some departments, but most of the time, it was getting hard countered by Bobby. There just was no counterplay for Betiches to work with. You're not able to fire over those indestructible walls on the left side, and you're also outranged yep. by Barley. There's just nothing you can really do. And considering that that was selected after Barley, really does make me wonder, was this an accident? I don't think it was an accident, because the Barley, it, like I said, I mean, you have two choices. You either play in the mid, in the grass, or I guess face the barley. And they Fair said, enough. okay, we'll just play in the grass and didn't, I, I mean, a Amber, M's. there are multiple characters that sweep stealth. We understand that. And so I think that's really what the issue was. Nita is an interesting choice. 20% more damage on Bruce. We've always seen Nita be attractive in Heist spe uh, specifically. Save her for a third pick, I think. Mm -hmm. I think she has to be an answer. Selecting too early is kind of destination failure. But we've got destination ring of fire right now. This is going to be set number three. We'll do brawl ball and knockout if we see a victory here out of wash team. But at the moment, everything's coming up Millhouse for stamina. I mean, it's looking great for them. This is a good mode for Stamina to finish things off. And if they want to play hyper-aggressive, yeah, they can play hyper-aggressive here. Wash Team, it's hard to exactly identify where their strengths lie because we haven't really seen a whole lot from their side. It's been real quiet on Wash Team's side. So they will get the last pick this time. Might open up some opportunities, especially for some of their more tank-oriented brawlers. Pain absolutely comes to mind. Here's the Lou pick from them. And this is also a pretty story pick in uh, this sort of region of NA West. So I'm anticipating Washington to play this really, really well. I do understand some of the counters that s will often go for, though. This could just be one of those moments where they say, okay, Sans, Zar, get on the stew. Could be. Oh, At the mind. moment, it's going to be <laughs> roughs. <laughs> Why is that? Never mind. Uh, well, Colonel Russ is just such a hard counter, and Penny is banned out, so there's just not really a whole lot of ways you can deal with those Russ bags. Okay, never mind. Here's Stamina with the Janet. I don't really see <laughs> Stu following this, though. Bell is going to be the one following up. So, yeah, no Stu this time around. Long-range stuff out of Bobby or, or Bell and Gray, and then... Well, more long range stuff. Technically, she's in the sky. It's not that long range. It's close range. But you know what I'm saying. So we've got a lot of safe damage here for STMN. I think that's my big takeaway. 
We don't see a lot of the area denial that I like to see in a in, in sort of a quintessential hot zone composition. Usually I want to see some like glue or some honey molasses, just some nonsense there. Uh, instead, we just have outright brawl. Mm-hmm. STM men are coming to the table saying we win team fights, no gimmicks. Uh, we'll see if it pays off. It's a big question mark, really, because this is another one of those situations where I think that Wash Team, they've selected some good brawlers that have a lot of potential yes. on this map, but do they really work together? Eh, I mean, I also think that there's some pretty reactionary play here. They have selected the Colonel Ruffs into the gray, but Lou is one of those picks where if he gets outranged and you're not getting a supers, then there's no point in playing him because he's only good because of his super. His shot isn't really that good. His gadget's not usable unless you have your super. It's unfortunate. If he's able to get some good dodges and line up those shots, it'll be a much different story, though. Well, Bobby right now completely avoiding what Payne's bringing in the mid lane on the Lou. And Czar kind of doubling in the mid lane. Now Sam's showing up. So a lot of stamina points here in the mid just this early on. About a third of the way done here as Batuches gets pulled and pushed. Sands again on the good side of things as Bobby long range classic. Oh, wow. Sam oh. teleport over to the right side. Flashy stuff. They were not ready to let go of that right lane. Oh my gosh, Sands, chill out, man. Even the gadget popped on the pain too to keep him out of there. Bobby now comes in for a piece of it, but Aliana shuts him down. This guy is dedicated to keeping this right lane clear. Now Czar is also looking to pick a fight. A little teleport in from Sans there to take things down. Last bit of sandbags coming down as well from Alianas, but they're quickly dispelled. It's just teleports all over the place from STMN. You don't often see a team using each other's teleports this often, but STMN have the team fights. It's like you said, they win team fights. And even when this ice is down on the ground, they'll still find a way to push back in. It's looking like a win for them already, but Wash teams still have a bit of time to respond. I love the way that Sans is using this teleport. Obviously, the team is milking the heal from the port for sure, but really just making sure that they can pop back Oof. and forth. They're not trying to surprise the opponent, which is usually what we see out of that gray teleport. They're really just using it for quick repositioning, almost like a, almost like a combat blink, and it really paid off really, really well. Another quick victory here for STMN and I honestly like the composition from Washed a lot, but you made the point originally. Lose just kept it range, and that's it. That's the whole. That's the whole thing, man. Pain just can't do anything. That's the thing, yeah. If Payne wants to connect these shots, he has to get within Bobby's range, which Bobby is going to not allow if he can afford it. And, and he's <laughs> got to get good dodges. And even when he tries, Czar, Sans, they know that they can hop in and punish because this mm. guy is just a sitting duck. We will see, though, take down on Wash Team's back lines. Bobby has to be forced back. Betches will find an opportunity to sneak into some of these bushes. Payne gets a takedown and a super all the way back at S Team and spawn. But Sans has that teleport. It's like you said, the combat blade in and maybe out if he gets the teleport. Alianas is carefully guarding it. Take wow, down from Zar. Man. A little switcheroo here too. And STMN are back in the lead. I was just going to highlight here how Wash goes ahead and gets this and gets a big... They get to play the game because Stamina just lost. Sans get, does the same thing he does in game number one but loses the matchup. And Bobby dies in mid doing the same thing he did in game number one but loses the matchup. And that allows Wash team to get in. Stamina here have a an ego draft where they are expecting to outplay their opponent and that's exactly what they're doing. 50% to 29 and counting upwards for the red team. They're on match point and it's been like 13 minutes, man. And, and on top of that, this is some of the most unhinged gray gameplay I've ever seen. Sans not going to get out of this one, it doesn't look like. Alianas pops down the sandbags. It's an easy kill for him. Little supply drop down for Betches gives him a whole lot more health to work with. Stunned and also slowed down with the use of that super combined with the bear trap. Bizarre. Oh, now the two of them! His back lines teleport in from Sans. It's a takedown. Last one remaining is Aliana's final set of sandbags, but you can't do that versus Dar. He's got a piercing shot, and STM in could finish it out here. This is huge for Stamina. Honestly, playing with their food a little bit as we see two players off the point now trying to zone. Actually, I'll take that back. With the sharpshooter composition, that's kind of what you have to do. Bring the fight to the opponent. Stamina, though, lose out because of it. 
And so now Wash team counting up from 50. Two kills on the side of Stamina, and that should all but secure it. Elianis, just a dog with a gun. He's able to get one, but not two. And Stamina get the whole dang match, and they're going to finals. Star-studded roster and a brilliant resume to it. They, as they've added one of the fastest matches that we have seen this entire month to that resume. What a performance. Pulled absolutely zero punches. We're going lightning fast. It's like I said, they're just teleporting all over the place. It's unhinged, the amount of <laughs> teleports that we saw. It's like, Gray teleports out, but at that same exact moment, here comes Bobby teleporting in, constantly refreshing those ranks. It's not something that we have seen in competitive with Gray, and I loved every bit of it. It just went too fast. Can we uh, cycle onto those grand finals? I want to see him do it again. No. So what we saw out of Stamina here, I think, with, with specifically with the gray play, was really, really, really cool. Because like you said, we had, we had two things that we just haven't seen that much of with respect to the teleport. One, the, the tag team wrestler thing, where like, yes, Sans goes in, they bring him down to 10% HP, and then, well, now there's a whole other brawler here. But also, they did the two-person teleport, where you just get TP'd on by two different brawlers. And look at that. There you go. You just get exploded on. Like, there's nothing to do when two sharpshooters show up in melee range shooting you twice. What do you do, man? Great usage of the teleport. Clearly, Stamina have been hitting the books. It's very interesting. I am a huge proponent of a coach, but them getting rid of their coach might have forced the guys to do some of their own homework and X's and O's. And so a change for them works out. Change for Wash team does not work out. You might notice Frixie isn't here. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> MVP is voted on by you guys at event.brawlstar.com. Bobby Zara, Sands. For my vote, it's Sands. And for your vote, looks like it's going to be Sands. <laughs> Wow, I mean, and, and honestly, if we decided it by stats alone, this guy would still be the star player, racking up kills like it's nobody's business, just teleporting all over the place at some points. And then if we roll back the clock and look at the footage from Hard Rock Mine, dude's kind of running in a straight <laughs> line for the vast majority of it. And he's just nasty like that on the Sandy. Wonderful stuff. Love watching these guys play a great performance. And all around, I'm looking forward to seeing what these grand finals look like. Coachless, but seems like they have tapped into what brought them to that former glory. Got to agree there. STMN earned their way into the finals in what might be our fastest semifinals here in the BSC. But we've got one more coming at you. Another matchup to see who plays STMN. We'll bring Kenny back in. We'll be right back after this. Welcome back, everybody, to NA West, where the action has already started, but it's keeping on heating up. Kenny, it's good to have you back here, man. We're heading into our second semifinal in this region. Second one, I'm hoping it's a little bit more action-packed than our first. Stamina decided to speed run things a little bit. They are already energized and ready to go for that grand finals appearance. On the other side, though, two very strong foes. A little revenge spot, possibly, for Raconic Esports under a new name, of course. And then Dog Walkers are two-time grand finals champions of 2023 so far. Going to be a real opportunity for some fireworks. We'll see if it delivers, though, because Dog Walkers last month looked really convincing against this team. Yeah, I was going to say that too. It like was really, really showy. And we even heard 
patching himself say, honestly, we trolled a little, which is not when he, what you want to hear if you're a player for Reconic Esports NA. They got some serious opponents coming for their throats. Patchy, Chino, Charles, you're familiar with the guys already if you've been keeping up with NA West this year, and if you've just been in the NA scene lately, because these guys have stolen the number one title in NA West lately, taking number one after number one position in absolutely deserved. They've been playing out of their minds, but seeing what s might have to offer them should they advance past Reconic Esports NA into the Grand Finals, it's gonna be tough to keep that spot. Yeah, on the other side, Shine, Counter, Chepo gonna have to do their best under a new name. Maybe it'll give them a little rejuvenated confidence this month. But Dog Walkers are a lot to handle, like you said. I think it's one of the most fun teams that we've seen. But on the other side, Counter, a real player, has joined the fold in this NA West season. Shine, of course, a big veteran of the game as well. Now rocking his brand new jersey here, too. Again, congratulations to those guys. And Reconic Esports returning to the NA scene. I think this has potential to be a fun one. I think last month's 3-0 is not showing what Reconic Esports can bring to the table. I think they're a better team than that. Do I predict them to win? Not necessarily. I still think Dog Walkers have proven more than enough to say they are favorites to make a third Grand Finals and possibly even win another Grand Finals in a row. But Reconic are better than what we saw last month. I think so too. And I think also we saw some really good features in that match between these two teams already. Specifically, we saw Reconic last month being West Coast having um, gotten some good out drafts among that, I think. It was a little upset setting to see just that right Poco with the Rosa go down in the grand finals in that final set. And I think a lot of it came down to understanding that they had the better draft and then kind of after that thinking, yeah, that's the win condition and then getting a little greedy from then on. I think that they probably watched back that quite a bit and have hammered out some of those mistakes. Just a prediction of mine. Predictions on y'all's side, 72% of you saying Dog Walker's victory. A lot of Reconic fans out there, I gotta say as well, We're still getting started on Layer Cake though. A little bounty action to kick us off. I'm excited to see them play some bounty too. Again, dog walkers, we both mentioned this at times, but they're some of my favorite players to watch. I think their drafts are really fun. They play what they ultimately like. And we had a lot of fun last month kind of chatting with Patchy in the interview, talking about what the mentality is behind the team. This is a team that's not afraid to get angry with each other, to get emotional with each other. It's like a brotherly kind of relationship, right? They're very open and honest. And sometimes they even pick brawlers that the other person doesn't like. At the end of the day though, we still saw them win with Demortis on bounty. Do we see it here on Lair Cake? I would be shocked. But since it's dog walkers, I'm open to just about any brawler showing up here. Yeah, pretty much the same mentality on my side. Like, what, what do the dog walkers pull out of the bag of tricks this time? Well, uh, it's going to be quite limited. They are facing Meg, and that's a difficult brawler to deal with. We've seen how effectively it can be dealt with, though, without specific counters. We saw it replicated in NA East, and now it might be time to bring it over Weast. Dog walkers still have one more selection to pair up with this Penny, which is a very consistent, very safe brawler. But they also need to be thinking about what exactly do they bring to the mid fight. They've gotten rid of one of the best ones. Uh, in fact, two of the best ones, Tick and Gene. So their options might be kind of limited here. Yeah, definitely a strong choice of Penny here. Meg on the other side, we've said before, it's a force to be reckoned with, and it feels like a very similar start to a lot of drafts we've had throughout the weekend across the world. We see a Meg, a Penny, and a B in some form, shape, or fashion in those top three picks. To me, it doesn't really seem like there are any overpowered brawlers in Brawl Stars, and that's kind of the consensus I got coming into the weekend from at least the pros that I got to speak to, but Penny, B, and uh, Meg, of course, going to be at the top of that kind of tier list that we've said a lot tonight. It's just what it is, right? Meg getting a big boost. We saw Amber get a boost as well. There's some other brawlers kind of lurking. RT got a little bit of a balance change, but is still around too. I think these are just the brawlers we're getting used to, and they're locking those up pretty quickly. Shine picking the Sprout, though. Definitely a good one for this map. Certainly so. Got to be thinking about what are some brawlers that can fare well in close range versus both Meg and Sprout. And that, I think, is what dog walkers are going to select for their final option. I do believe that counter pick is the way to go for them, not just to play things safely and consistently. That's also pretty in line with the brand, the identity that dog walkers have cultivated surrounding themselves. <laughs> this, I'm not so sure about, but I'm strapped in for a fun ride. 
Oh, let's do it. Shelly's here. She's even better than before. I've seen her practice a ton in NA. Oh, I'm excited to see what she can do. This is not an intuitive matchup in my mind either, Ready? It will do well if they can get close to Grom, but I'm really curious, man. Just because you get a boost of Shelly, it's still Shelly, right? Not the easiest thing to do. No natural counters here, I would say, either. Sure, they can whip out the Clay Pigeons and be a long-range brawler for a hot second here, but I don't know if this is the spot I would have thought to bring in Shelly. If anything, I will say it's a nice way for them to deal with a brawler that gets up close, personal, can deal with Meg, can deal with Sprout in close range. Problem is that they're, yeah, gonna have to face some pretty long range brawlers. Patchy has some wall break available to him too, which could pose issues later down the line, but no major wall break for counter to face versus, which I think will be a great asset to him. Let's see if they get that blue star to start off the game. Shelly is pretty fast, but she's not gonna get that easy avenue up to mid. Shine also at the helm of the Shelly, I think proves that this is a pretty serious pick. They really believe this is going to win, so we'll see how the execution turns out. Blue Star already. No, they just got to sort of run it back, play defense now. I believe Shine on that Shelly will have a lot of defense potential as Counter also picks up a kill, and they start to compound this lead that they already have. Wow, Chepo just overrunning them right now, finally getting knocked out of the mech form. But Shine, of course, with the new Shelly rework, it's going to go from being kind of that normal speed tier brawler into what they call the very fast brawler. And then you add a speed gear in the mix, Shine is going to be sprinting up this map. Five star lead here, Raconic Esports starting strong and Shine popping that very pivotal clay pigeons as well. They're gonna need to see Chepo get a mech as well if they wanna do some serious damage again. But for now, they can slowly retreat, hold positioning, and with a minute left to go, they're going to find themselves with a pretty considerable lead. I have to wonder, though, is this a choice to retreat? I almost feel like they would prefer to stay at mid, and dog walkers are slowly walking them backwards. Counter also going to take a lot of damage here. Big boom coming in. Shine not going to connect that super. Doesn't get the slow from Shellshock. And now dog walkers are in the lead, but they're not backing up either. They want to keep this lead, and they want to turn it into double at minimum. Chepo is going to get those first bits of damage in up the left side. Charles is ready with a whole lot of damage on his side, too. Chepo popping the gadget to have a bit more resilience. Take down onto Shine. Shine, counter almost soon to follow. And Chepo has to stay in this position if he wants to afford enough room for Raconic Esports NA to keep pushing up and somehow take back the lead that dog walkers have accrued. It's only going to get tougher, too, as Shine's going to run out of long-range options without gadgets. 12 seconds to go. Counter pushing forward. Shields all around on this right-hand side. Pick up. Chepo gets one, but it's right back there, too. Still 8-7. to seven, Throwing down the walls, getting rid of them instantly, though, with the respawn. Everybody in a corner. Everybody needs to hit some shots, but it's ultimately Chino getting the best of it there. Dog Walker starting strong. First game going their way. Awesome stuff for dog walkers. I really did actually put my faith in Raconic at the beginning of that game. I don't know why I thought that Shelly was gonna work, and I also don't know why they thought it was gonna work either. I haven't really seen it make any major plays. There are other ways to deal with tanks, things that get up close. There are other stuns that are available to you besides Shelly. We'll see if Raconic Esports in A are able to make use of it this time. So far, Chino rotates onto this lane. There's pretty much no counterplay for Shine, so he has to go to a different lane himself. Raconic Esports get that blue star. Chepo still needs to stay alive to hang on to it. He's also got a lot of range to work with to get that mech back, but he doesn't have as much resilience. Now he's just able to kind of hang out here too. Counter trying to craft this map the way he wants it to be. Chepo, no mech form, but can just kind of spread forward against Patchy, who does throw down the Grom Bomb, but Chepo manages to stay alive just in the nick of time. Whoa. Charles had something different to say about that, though. A huge shutdown right there, and now a lead for Dog Walkers. And now Raconic Esports NA are forced to play aggro. If having Shine on that Shelly, which relies on playing aggressive, was not already a problem enough, they're getting take down as Dog Walkers play a pretty mean D. Defense. Chep on the right side also taking a bunch of damage, still staying alive, has that swipe at the ready, but I don't think he's going to be getting that close to anyone, especially with Patchy consistently holding things back on the right wing. I think we're going to need to see Chepo do even more here, especially when you're playing Meg. That's a big momentum brawler, a very powerful one at that. So it needs to be leading the way for the team, just like Counter did there. Goodness, a lot of hit shots there. Still down a blue star, but dragging them ever so much closer. Now Chepo might be making his move here. It does have that super in hand. Counter gets another pickup in lane win. Two stars now in favor for Raconic Esports in A.
Dogwalker's gotta get a kill somewhere, and within 20 seconds, it's really kind of the magic number in Bounty. You can start running all the way back to your spawn and have just enough time to run out the clock without getting too dangerously close to enemies. Chepo's taking a lot of damage, though, and we'll see Patchy has that Grom Bomb. He needs a combo, though. This might be the perfect time. Here it comes. Shine, take it down. Dogwalker, swing it back with one second left on the clock. A blue star victory and a set win as well. Ooh, came down to the wire, but they seem to always find a way. The Grom Bomb clutching up there and demonstrating why it's such a powerful super. It's a reason that Grom's been prevalent through Brawl Stars recently. He's just so darn good at getting those long range, especially in things like Bounty. He can really keep his distance. You know, the shot's easier said than done to dodge, especially when it's in a pro player's hands. And when you're backed up against the wall like that, that Grom Bomb fans out pretty wide. So not an easy situation at all. Well played by Dog Walkers there. I think well picked too. The Grom is just so, so good here. And Counter tried to make it work with the use of the Sprout Wall. Just wasn't all there. And even when Charles had that super down, it wasn't really accessible for Counter. He tried in a lot of circumstances to get that turret down when it was placed safely on defense. And he was prevented from switching lanes. It was placed too far away for him to successfully reach at least reliably. It didn't really come together for Reconic Esports NA. I liked the ideas though, except for the Shelly. I'm not really sure what that was there for, and it didn't really work either. Zero kills, 67 damage. Yeah, time to go back to the drawing board. Whoo, 243 DPS from Patchy. Goodness, I mean, you can tell, right? He was really just letting it have it on the other side throughout that entire set. Felt like Patchy was constantly doing something. Sure, the kills on both sides, not lighting up the leaderboards by any means, but at the end of the day, that's a big part of it, right? He was still doing some solid work, putting the pressure onto Raconic Esports. So for me, Grom gameplay was a big factor there. Oh, no doubt, especially towards those back lines at the end of the game. You saw just how valuable that was, clutching things up and having the combo ready. Could see it appear also on Knockout as we head into Flaring Phoenix for the very next set. Definitely got to be considering some of the throwers here. Grom, Sprout always in the discussion. Even Barley is worthy of discussion here. But more importantly, some of the mid brawlers, right? We see a lot of Gene here. Scout those bushes. Dogwalker say, yeah, none of that. But Reconic once again with a Meg first pick. It didn't make it work that first time. Chepo did get some really good positioning with it, though. So maybe they're hoping to make that happen again. No surprise, it's going to be Meg once again. Our very, very similar drafts going down as always. RT, a common culprit of showing up in the ban and pick phase. Just everybody kind of playing the same grouping of brawlers, it feels like. But there's a reason why, right? It works. Meg is somebody that now is even showing up in Knockout. And now we get to see a flare of what we saw in our last map. It's going to be Sprout showing up here this time. It's going to be the Dog Walker's choice of thrower, though. And you say no surprises here, and I think really this forces Reconic Esports' hand where they have to go for a thrower. Now, Grom luckily is open. This might be the brawl that they select. There's still some other options. Tick is out of the question, though, so Barley is really the only other option they can go with, except for Willow, which I see being is uh, not really too safe of a pick. They also need to consider what Dog Walkers could go for as their final selection, not choose something too vulnerable. Yeah, here's the Grom, as predicted. It's much of the same. We see three of the same brawlers that we already saw in the last set. It's just a symptom of the current meta too. Yeah, I mean, both are pretty solid at what they do, too. Sprout, somebody that can drop that wall, really put your teammates in some uncomfortable positions. Meanwhile, Grom, again, we saw in that last one, has such a powerful super, especially as the fog starts to close in and that green smoke gets closer and closer. Keep in mind, it does so much damage. So if you have a big, open, wide Grom bomb, there's nowhere to dodge. It's just free shots for you and your teammates. So the in-game situation, definitely going to be keeping an eye on that. But Pam, somebody we don't get to see all the time, but whenever I see it, I feel like it usually impresses. This is true. I mean, you're able to get some good value with that super as long as you place behind a wall, which, yeah, they're here on Flaring Phoenix, and a couple of them are indestructible, which is, I think, where Pam is going to be setting her sights mainly. Until then, it's all about getting that super charged up without charging enemy supers too much. And this is where I think Charles will actually get a lot of value in that 1v1 matchup. Amber selection from Dog Walkers. We've talked about it. We've seen it all day long, how good it can be for getting free wall break, or, well, I guess bush break more specifically. We'll see it probably run up one of these lanes, get that Scorch and Siphon active and ready, super down the middle, and eliminate a lot of enemy cover. 
Yeah, I think the more time that goes on, obviously we're very fresh in the new balance changes and these new maps showing up in competitive, but this just seems like a really solid spot for Amber. There's bushes that she can burn up and open. So back when this map was originally in the map pool, she was already prevalent, but now she gets a little bit of an upgrade, right? You get slowed down if you step into the gasoline, which is very difficult when you only get one life per game. I think that's a sneaky last pick there for Charles and his teammates. Well, let's see if he's able to execute on it. So far, he does have that Scorch and Siphon down. It is sitting quite far back. A little thumbs up there, too. As he's slowly charging up his super. There are a few places he could put it, too. Really more just a couple. That mid area on the left side or on the right. Shine still trying to farm up this super. Nothing important just yet. Charles has that super on the right side, and it pretty much forces Chepo to switch positions. He's not able to play this effectively. Is kind of considering maybe playing this lane, but doesn't want to do it as he not only gets slowed down, but will get burned too. Hedge on the left side. It's a good outlook for the dog walkers. Gino clearly not wanting them to walk up this mid area and Charles just throwing down the gasoline. It's really going to slow down enemies. So the more time that goes on that he doesn't burn up, which I think that little check mark on the right hand side indicates that he's probably not looking to do that yet. Finally taking down the mech shine, getting burned up a little bit. His entire right hand side is going to be very tough. Scrap sucker going down. Charles cleaning up left side kill as well. Dog walkers in beautiful positioning as counter throws away the round. And he tried to deny that super to Chino, but he managed to get it back in the last second there. And he doesn't have any gadgets left, so it was very important that he recovered that at the end of the round. He'll be able to block off this left lane if he wants versus Shine. There it is, Chepo occupying mid this time in counter, going for the lane switch on a right. Patchy does have this super if someone gets real close to him. Not likely to happen. Chepo also defending on the left side. Big stuff for Reconic as they now find themselves in a 3v2, a very winnable matchup. Yeah, and Patchy just looking to get real aggressive here. I think maybe just going for a super, not really wanting to deal with this 3v2 situation and just doing his best to get some shots on the board. Charles slowly just going to back it up, doing his best to charge up a super of his own. I think he did squeeze one in there as well to hold on to. So Charles going to have one here. Patchy now generates one as well. This is going to be a solid start here for Dog Walkers. 1-1 overall. Next round takes the game. Another lane switch, too, from the Dog Walkers. They look to get a slight advantage here, Chepo. Very aggressive on the left side, healing up with the gadget in the process. Charles is forced to back up, actually. He doesn't want to burn up his own bushes, and he's also forced away from that last gadget that he threw down over there. It's not good for him. It's going to be tough for him to earn that super back. Meanwhile, on the right side, Chino's blocking things off versus counter, who has his super. He has that survivability in overtime as that poison starts to close in, which is probably not too far off at this point. So I'm slowing it mid two as Charles has covered it in a lot of oil. Reconic Esports in A pose no distinct advantage here. Yeah, this is tough, right? And I think health points matter a lot as this match starts to go on. Pam, a very beefy brawler. Chepo, if he can get back in that mech form, going to add about 6k plus HP to their side as well. And Counter has that super charged up. Charles releasing one of his own. No connection there from the Grom Bomb, though. That's going to be huge as this goes forward. Patchy does have his super available as well. If he wants to take on the Jackie positioning, Chino going to need some serious dodges. Chepo squeezes in a mech as well. And here comes the big beetle charging down the map. Chino all alone going to go down. Down. Rakonic Esports, great plays. Brilliant bounce back for them too, as now they've shifted the tides of momentum in their favor. I think the mech with the uh, Meg, I think that provided a lot of value here and had so much survivability. Combine that with the Pam, and they looked indestructible at some points. Had to commend the dog walkers for some of their interactions too, but it looked like it worked really well for just that very first round. Then Reconic Esports NA started to wisen up to what are the optimal matchups, and then started to get the win from there. We see Chepo trying to rush down Chino around the left side, though, and well, Chino and Patchy had this in recent memory. They're not going to let that happen again. Meanwhile, though, Charles falls on the right side in a 1v2, and it's a great start for Reconic Esports NA. Reconic really showing what they've got right now. I think this Pam Scrap Sucker matchup into Amber is one to definitely keep our eyes on, too. That gadget can really just take away from Amber, as her reload is, after all, a little bit different than most brawlers. It's more like one continuous reloading shot rather than somebody like Chino or RT that get three. It's a very different, a very different play style, so I think that was a really smart pick from them as well, and maybe even an added benefit of picking that Pam. 
Now Pam also looking to accumulate that super towards the end of this round. Chino and Patchy hunkering down. Could be the super coming in soon. Could block off counter. No, take down with the use of the Grom Bomb. Patchy barely alive, and there's just no winning this round. They're going to have to forfeit it for now. Walk into that gas and restart for the next one. Rakonic Esports NA managed to make it away with, well, a Meg Super. Not that important. The big question is how close are they to that Grom Bomb and that healing turret once again? Patchy also. It's going to be shifting onto this lane on the left side, affording Chino the opportunity to push over to the right. It's much more optimal for dog walkers to have this lane layout. Charles is going to need a super here. Does charge one up now. Trying to make this map the way they want it to be. They've got the sprout walls. They've got the gasoline touching the ground. And Chino going to do even one better. Pushes Pam all the way back. Thankfully, Counter can still lob up some shots over these indestructible walls, but not easy by any means as Chepo has no easy firing lane. Chino cycles in yet another one, and Patchy's able to march down this left-hand lane. No kills just yet, though. Charles is probably setting up for the first one. Counter actually has a huge amount of KO potential. If he gets Chino hit just once, he can knock him out with his super Chino. Also, just looking for that next super. Could block things out. Chepo in close range could get taken down. Patchy, no, not able to get that final shot. Never mind, taken down. Burn on the right side. Shine falls. And Dog Walker still got a horse in this race. They tie up the game score with one round apiece. Rakonic Esports could be holding their breath here. A big takeaway in this next round would allow them to tie up the leaderboard. Otherwise, they may be facing a similar fate as last month if they're not careful. Charles now grouping up with the teammates, throwing down some more gasoline on the ground. Can start a wildfire at a moment's notice, and if not, can just slow down enemies' game positioning for teammates. The Amber Supers, a huge role in why they could end up winning this. They need to earn it back, though. I mean, they've already covered up so much of the map in the fire fuel. Charles rotates over to the left side. It's the only part not occupied by a bunch of oil. Patchy on the right side also occupying this lane, trying to keep Chepo back in this left pocket. Will be able to march forward quite a bit. Patchy's not able to react too amazingly. He will be able to pop Chepo out of the mech, though. It's a good development for them. Chino takes a lot of damage. Luckily for him, Counter didn't have a super to get that last bit of damage. Take down on the right. Chepo falls. This is a great look for the Dog Walkers. They just have to win this 3v2. No easy way to walk it up either. Ooh, encounter just gonna have to toss it away. Dog walkers tying it things up here. Now we're gonna have a third game on our hands. Great response here from the dog walkers. I think that this was played pretty intelligently when you take into consideration the development from one game to the next. It's one of the interesting things about this sort of power match format where, yes, it's the same brawlers for every single game within the set, but you still have these developments that can take place with predictions of who's on what lane and knowing, yes, we need to double things up here, we need to go for a pinch and things like that. And it's propelled dog walkers to having a real chance of taking this one back. The reset as everybody's getting their footing underway. A bunch of tags going down. Everybody's going to want those supers. And Charles going to be the first to grab one here. He's going to on his right-hand side playing against Shine. Again, watch out for that Scrap Sucker gadget. But Charles can keep his distance and just kind of throw down the fire on the ground. It's not going to matter too much. Now Meg getting cut off here too. Sure, has a lot of HP. But if all the Brawlers can line up shots, it will be nice for them. Great recovery there from Counter, I think, helping out the teammate too in the Watchtower, giving them a little extra visibility. Now it's actually Dog Walkers on their back foot. And I'm not so certain about how they'll be able to bounce back from this. Charles will be able to get rid of the Watchtower at least. Takes a lot of damage along the way. Counter also going to fall from that fire. Good development for the Dog Walkers, but they're all forced back in the right side. Shine, no super. Chepo has one. A whole lot of health to work with as it's beamed down by Chino, Charles, and Patchy. He's completely blocked off. Will get some pot shots in here. Shine tries to make a big play with the Mama Squeeze, but it's not enough. It's a round win for the Dog Walkers. Ooh, that was a little closer to your call than I thought it was going to be. Yeah. I mean, it looked really bad for Dog Walkers there for a moment, but the Amber Fuel gives them the kill that they need. Patchy goes into Jackie form and puts down some serious work. Man, that counter takedown there was really crucial for them on that last one. The Grom Bomb going down here instead now. I'm sure he would have wanted that in the last round and doesn't get the kill here either. Tough stuff for the side of Rakonic, who started this set so strong. 
They could still finish strong, but they're at a deficit at the moment. Chino and Charles on the right side combining forces. Hopefully Chino being able to get a more optimal matchup versus counter. As long as Charles is able to throw down some more fire fuel. He doesn't want to prevent himself from dealing damage on a lane by avoiding burning up too much. Will still be holding on to this and operating very, very carefully with it. Chepo also popped out of the mech on the left side with no shield in sight. Is huge for the dog walkers. As long as they can finish this off easily, they'll have a great chance of winning. Though a takedown on the Charles is not looking so hopeful for dog walkers. And even when she's gone, Amber is going to be able to contribute a lot. It's going to be slowing down the enemy. Still a 2v1 situation regardless. Now 1v1 Scrap Sucker being popped. Patchy doing his best, but Shine keeps the distance and gets a strong kill there. 1-1 one, one this round determining our set winner. Down to the wire here. Shine also has that super big amount of value for him and the team. He's probably not going to pop it until it provides him a lot of value. Could wait till overtime. Could use it to push up effectively. Pushing up seems to be a bit more of Chepo's territory as he tries to do so versus Patchy. Getting tagged up effectively, almost actually shut out of that mech, which was devastating in the last round. Big stuff in from counter two with a Grom Bomb, but Patchy catches him off guard on the left side. Charles now in with that fire. Not enough to kill Pam there, but does get the takedown on the right side. Chepo also falls in turn, and Dog Walkers take the set win. Dog walkers overcome once again. That was about as good of an opportunity as any for Raconic to pick up a set. And even when they're challenged most, somehow, some way, dog walkers end up getting the kills necessary. They're an impressive team, man. It's really difficult. 2-1, definitely better stuff from Raconic than we've seen the last month against them, again this month as well. But still, even at what looks to be some of their best, dog walkers are getting away with it. This is absolutely true. I think that also, this is a very Dog Walker centric story, but Reconic have offered up some serious fire to back it up. I mean, they went so close to taking this entire set. They were just one round away and one misplay. It seemed like one player getting a bit over aggressive cost them the entire thing. That said, I mean, it was close every other step of the way too. It is the micro plays that separate these two rosters. So while Dog Walkers do have a 2-0 lead, Reconic Esports NA are a serious competitor for their position. Yeah, I think so too. I mean, we're starting to see what they can really do here. We've seen some of these guys in land settings as well. They're really solid players. It's just dog walkers who are on top of this region right now. I think it's gonna be difficult for anybody to take them down. And now with the 2-0 lead, Hope slowly dwindling, I would say, for Raconic. Not out of it yet, of course. They're pro players. They've been here before. They're all experienced. This ain't their first rodeo, but man, dog walkers, when you see stat lines like this, seven for Patchy, seven for Charles, it's not just one player that's a problem. It's the whole dang roster. Totally. Every single one of these players has a moment where they are the star player. They are the guy. He's him. And for this time, uh, I guess we'll either award it to either Patchy or Charles. I will personally say that a lot of my attention was on Charles. The Amber gameplay seriously dictated the pace of that entire last round. Reconic Esports NA tried a lot of ways to deal with it. They tried every single other brawler on that lane, and sometimes it worked, but most of the time it didn't. It's a set win for them, and they have the wind at their backs heading into set number three. 2 0 scoreline so far. Just got to get the win here on Gym Fort to end things. In in a lightning match. It's another map where I'm looking out for Amber. I think Amber can be really strong on a map like this. And it's gonna be Meg, the first pick overall regardless. Meg is somebody that's really powerful here too. We had the indestructible walls in the mix. It's a lot of control based and a really a similar start to what we had compared to our last draft as well. RT once again showing up. There's the oh. Jesse again. It's something I mentioned a little bit earlier, but the new mythic gears that are coming in for the pets, her turret is considered one of those. So it can even get a little bit of a boost. Jesse was shown up here earlier and in a east as well so i'm starting to see the vision for why jesse shows up and in addition to that too ready i mean we've been around the game for a long time this is something that used to be played in the olden days this is true and she used to be a pretty strong counter pick to strong brawlers like pam which we've already seen reconic esports in a pick so maybe they'll be reconsidering now patchy of course also big fan of the jesse too have seen this guy play the jesse before when she was weaker and still try to make it work there so now that she's gotten a, a pretty significant buff here it's going to be a huge development in how effective she is. Crow now on the side of Raconic. Going to be shutting down any ideas of healing, perhaps. Shine also having this penny. Can't really argue with that. It's a favorite of the guy, and I hope to see him pop off on it. But Dogwalker still have a counter pick that they can use. 
They're going to get one more choice here in about 15 seconds to make a very important decision. The kinds of decisions that make or break a team. But thankfully, they're sitting comfortable, right? It's 2-0. We've seen these guys pull up some crazy picks before. I'm curious to see if they do anything interesting here. Hmm. Nope. They just picked a really good new brawler that got a nice little rework. Amber, I think it's going to be a problem here again. I mean, we've seen these brawlers pick repeatedly. We've seen Meg first pick every single set from Reconic Esports in A. We've seen the RT. We've seen the Amber a bunch too from the Dog Walkers. Hey, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. I think also Chena's gonna provide so much value on these lanes. Not only is he able to burn up these bushes, but he can get some pretty good sneak attacks from those sides too. So I'm a little worried for Reconic Esports in A here. However, I will note that Dog Walkers picked Amber into Crow. And I'm now kind of starting to understand this is a big part of why that crow was picked. Deal with the Amber. He's a known really hard counter. He's already rotating over to that right side. We'll see how Charles deals with it. Yeah, Charles kicking things off here. Going to be taking on Shepo Lane, like you mentioned. Crow, the one tasked with handling Amber. Meanwhile, RT dealing with the long left-hand side, but a big, beefy counter currently marching his way throughout the map. Chino with a good connecting few shots here, but Shine's going to be the first to set up a turret. I think going to be a very important factor here of which teams can get their supers first. If it's Jesse turrets and they can put down some summer shots from this surfer, it's going to be a tough one, right? But instead, it's Penny that goes up first. Now they can apply the pressure, get some incendiary shots on the ground, and, well, it's complete control for Reconic. Certainly is. Reconic Esports have been spawn trapping these guys. Dog Walkers probably having second thoughts about picking that Amber into the Crow. Though they will be able to rotate lanes over. Charles trying to utilize this lane play also. Take down Chepo dead on arrival. But not really a loss of control for Reconic. We will see a gadget popped by Chino. A bit of value there with the pet gear also in play. But Shine still has all 10 of those gems. They can get a slow and steady retreat. It's an easy win for Reconic. Yeah, I just got to survive these last few seconds. Chino, though, could line up a few shots here, do some work. There's one Shine no. doing his best to dodge. No way. Oh, it was so close. But Shine ends up surviving. Wow, I really thought that could have caused some chaos there. But ultimately, that was about as simple as it looked for any team here tonight. Rakonic out of nowhere, just dominating our game number one of Jim Grab. True, and I wonder how much of that had to deal with the lane matchups that we saw at the beginning of the game. It was immediately Amber onto Crow, and well, the rest is history. We did see moments also where Charles tried to rush it down versus Mag on the lane, but he was going really, really aggressive. Counter was using his range to his advantage. Big stuff from Charles already, though. Already burning up some of those bushes, getting the ignition onto Counter, and a big pinch on the guy too, sends him packing. It's a 3v2, but Charles has also slowed down and taken down from the poison on the right. Good call from Chino, actually, getting a shot onto Chepo. He's gonna get out of here with three gems. He could still get jumped on by Crow, though, as he finds himself pretty low and pinched on the left side. I love this different approach coming in from Dog Walkers, too. Sure, it hasn't worked necessarily so far. His counter is going to be charging down the side, getting some big pickups, but they get aggressive in the mid. They try something different. Kind of the same result so far, though. It's still Reconic Esports in A, now with seven gems in their hands in a clear lead here in game number two. Chino still might be able to circle around the right. He does get tagged up by that mortar a little bit. Charles also trying to utilize some of the slow to his advantage. Might be backing up just so that someone can rotate on their lane. No, actually, fire, burning down counter. Looks like he will be able to survive through that, not popped out of the mech, so not too much value for the dog walkers. Dog walkers will be able to push in, grab a couple of gems for themselves, Chino being the one carrying them. We'll see Patchy also try to make a move for the top side. Charles around the left, trying to burn up some more of those bushes from counter. Bit of a misplay, though, as he wasn't able to get any value onto him. Chepo also jumping to the back right. Chino, really, really low health. This could be a surrounding move from Reconic Esports NA. They engulf their enemies and look to get this one backed up. Ten gems headed straight for the respawn. Shine once again, going to be the ones in control of those gyms and slowly backing it away. I don't think Chino's within striking a distance this time. Reconic Esports make things a little more interesting, not repeating their last month here. New name, same players, different result. It's going to be 2-1 here. Still lead for Dog Walkers. Not out of the woods yet, though. Not even close. I mean... 
first of all, we learned a few things in this set. The Meg, okay, it's not a lose condition. It seems like the Meg hasn't really worked too well today. And in this one, it was one of the main things that won that last set. Let's also talk about the Penny. It was so oppressive at mid. Once that turret went up, Dogwalkers had nothing to respond to it. Maybe they thought that with Chino they'd be able to reflect some of the shots in, but Shine simply repositioned himself so he never got hit. Chino almost had a moment here to get that last bit of damage on Shine and interrupt the countdown, but even then, I still put my uh, money on Reconic Esports NA to finish out that last game. I think Dogwalkers got creative with a comp and maybe not the right way here, picking Brawlers into known hard counters and then trying to make it work from there. Yeah, I think the early games were a big factor there too, right? Even when they got really aggressive, they tried the natural in the first game, you know, left, right, mid kind of lineup. Then they stacked the mid and sure they have a good start, but ultimately Reconic are still able to make their way and come back. I think a very, very solid comp uh, composition for Reconic Esports there too. Only five kills for Dog Walkers, not a ton going down. Shine and Counter make up 11 and Chepo all by himself did what Patchy and Chino could do. So I think overall that's really just reflects how strong Reconic Esports looked in our set number three. Yes, in particular, I point out that Charles didn't manage to get a single kill in that entire last set, which doesn't speak to Charles's ability. It really, I think, exclusively speaks to how that draft went for Dog Walkers. Like I said, they pick the Amber and the Crow. I just don't usually see that in Brawl Stars competitive. There's got to be a reason for it. And I think we're seeing precisely what the reason is. Now we're going to move over to Parallel Plays. This is always a fun map to watch. I think it's something super dynamic and one of my favorite hot zone maps of all time, just because there's a lot of different strategies that you can make work here, right? Now we get some balance changes that shape things up a little bit. The draft always makes things a little spicy. I'm sure we'll see some of the similar brawlers we've seen earlier, right? I'm sure Amber is going to make her way into the band stage or the play stage. And I'm sure Meg will do the same. I mean, it's been the first overall pick, what, three times in a row now? So we'll see if anybody wisens up, bands it out. Looks like they do. Dog walkers are about done with the Meg. Yeah, so long Meg, but hello Penny once again. We saw how dominant she was in the last game and might carry on to this one. Another Amber selection from the Dog Walkers, though this one has more depth to it. Keep in mind also the double crow ban. No more of that action. It was definitely uh, recognized on the side of Dog Walkers that we do not want to play the Amber into the crow, but also they do really want to play this Amber. There's, like I said also, sort of repeating myself here, but more history beyond this. Last time Parallel Plays was in competitive rotation, Amber was one of the top picks. So I think that this one is pretty solid on this map. Yeah, Amber makes a lot of sense to me here too. And I honestly don't mind the bell either. You get the nest egg so you can trip opponents, give yourself some more lane control, has that long distance. And with the bounce shots getting in there too, can definitely help the team out. So bell historically, somebody that's definitely shown up here quite a bit. We also know that the dog walkers can certainly play that brawler, but on the other side, we get a much more aggressive brawler. We get stew. This is kind of the X factor that I look for in compositions. If you can pop off with the stew, odds are your team's probably winning, but if it's not, it can sometimes hold you back. So we're gonna have to see counter or whoever ends up playing this brawler for Reconic Esports do a really good job here where things could fall apart. I'll tell you this right here and now for free, that's gotta be the Shine Stew. Shine loves this brawler and he's pretty darn good at it too. So it would shock me if anyone else were playing it. We'll see what the response is from Dog Walkers because there are ample counters to Stew available. I think Colonel Refs is one that comes to mind. Keep in mind though that Chepo is playing a brawler that can slice right through those quite easily. Same exact thing could be said for Penny with her piercing damage. So Dog Walkers will have to get a little bit more crafty with how they plan on dealing with the Stew. It also rules out, never mind. I, I was going to say it rules out tanks, but they're just going to do it anyway. <laughs> Look, the dog walkers are going to do what the dog walkers want to do. It, it is yeah. what it is, right? And I think they're a very, very strong team to try and run this tankier composition. This is going to be kind of that aggressive factor that somebody like Stu brings to the table, just not with as much HP, right? They're going to be trying to get Sam, I'm assuming, to play a more offensive role. They could have him sprint down that right-hand side. I could totally see Patchy kind of helping out a little bit of just about anywhere, too. But I think Amber could be some serious defensive measures here, especially with the way that the fuel that she fires on the ground now works. You can slow down enemies, you can just keep it on the ground and really cut some people off. It's going to make it much harder for Stu to skate on this map. 
Yeah, well, no, we just got to see how exactly it operates in practice. We get right into it already, positioning on some of these zones. Capture that home zone first, and then play aggro for the enemy zone. With some of these indestructible walls in place, too, it's going to mean that Patchy actually has pretty much free reign over the left side. Counter still trying to get something versus Charles. He'll get that takedown. Maybe now focusing on the Chino as Patchy completely shifts gears over to the right side for a bit of free capture. Takedown with the use of the super. Now just play sort of the survival game. As Chepo can hit him around these walls, but still get stunned out. There's just nothing shutting this guy down. Batchy might be the most skilled ring around the Brosies player I've ever seen in my life. He's just <laughs> dominating this upper right-hand side, which is a big factor, especially in this. It's easier to get your own uh -oh. home base, but Patchy has trekked to the other side and still can't take him down. He's 1v2ing, 1v3, <laughs> finally hits the floor and goes back to the spawn, but dog walkers do a ton of chip damage on to that hot zone. They're forced to play some defense, but a lot of work cut out for Raconic here ahead of them. Man, when it comes to taking down Patchy, it really does take a village, or maybe actually just a duo in this circumstance. Patchy got very aggressive there and ultimately paid the price. That was his final gadget as well, so maybe he'll be able to make use of it as we head into the later stage of the game at Dog Walkers are now dipping below that 20% left to capture, with Chino and Charles now storming the point with Chepo left to pick up the pieces. It's not looking too optimal. Ch Counter doesn't even have a super to push in initially. He might get it for free, but Dog Walkers continue to accumulate things. Yeah, now Apache with, might have enough HP just to walk this forward. He's just sprinting no. up. 6% is all they need. Okay, Chepo cleans it up quick. They still give up a percentage, but Shine's going to have to tag down on this left-hand hot zone here the rest of the game, and Chepo and Counter are going to have to defend against Patchy this whole time. Here he comes sprinting up once again, slowly recharging with his super as well. Just a few more percentage points, and he goes down. There might be an opportunity. They gotta address Shine on the left side, but they don't really seem too focused on it. They're trying to take down Chepo and Counter to open up this avenue for Patchy. Big super in. Patchy is superless, and Charles tries to take down Shine. No, just at the edge of his range. Shine's gotta get this takedown. Counter now dashing back and forth in the zigzag maneuver. No way. They just took that back. Unfortunate for the dog walkers. They're not making that mistake again. Ooh, I'm getting some chills already. You're definitely wanting that one back. If you're the dog walkers, they started so strong, and I think the Sam's actually ending up a really good pick. I totally see why they do this. No real direct answer. He can just kind of overwhelm them with his bulkiness and even gain some of his HP back at times. But right there, they just got beat on defense. Raconic staying at disciplined and not giving up. A huge opportunity they've now found for themselves, and dog walkers now gonna win two straight if they want an opportunity at this grand finals. Well, Patchy's got to heal up over here. We're dealing with counter. He's also burning too. Goes for that final bit of destruction. Will stay alive. Even gets to pick up the knuckle busters afterwards for a bit more of a boost of HP. Chepo taken down. Chino and Charles firmly on defense. Much different approach from the dog walkers this time. Going straight towards Reconic's zone. Going for that spawn trap. Much different from what we saw in the last game. But now actually we'll see shifting gears. Patchy going for that bottom left zone to accelerate the path to victory for dog walkers. Chepo in a tailspin, taking down one brawler, going for a second. It's a trade, but ultimately a winning of lanes for Raconic Esports. This is pretty close right now. In terms of percentage points, it looks pretty even. However, Dogwalkers have claimed quite a bit of territory on that right-hand side. So as they start to hunker down and Patchy claims his own, it's going to really show how much of a lead I think they have. But Chepo doing a great job once again. The Super's paying off for Carl. They clean up Patchy here too. Chepo now responding once again. Raconic Esports could be on the way to another comeback. Very much could. Counter is burned up, but he's not going to get taken down just yet. Good tank there with the speed zone. It was final one, though. It has no more gadgets left to spare. Chepo forced to move over to the right side, and he'll try and get some good damage in versus Patchy, and will be able to capture some of this point as well. But a 2v3 is what awaits him on the other side. Raconic Esports in a gotta get Charles and Chino off this point. Chepo tries his best, but it's just too late, and we're tied up in the set, but we are at a match point. Whew, this is going to be a toughie once again. It's Raconic Esports going to have to put a halt to the Dog Walkers. They did a good job again in game number two, but at some point, the Dog Walkers are just playing too well there. They couldn't make the comeback this time. Their first one was heroic, and it's going to take some similar heroics here in game number three if they want to drag this on to a fifth set. Last month, Dog Walkers didn't drop a single one. They've already taken one off them from the board. If they do it again, would be something else.
Apache's going to get a first takedown around the left side. Counter falls as a result. Chepo also all the way back. Charles could get that takedown nice and easy. There it is. Burn on to shine. I we'll have to make him play a lot more defensively. Apache still moving over to this right side. Counter trying to contest him, but it's not really going so well. Never mind, actually, he's more focused on getting towards this enemy capture zone. Apache might be able to dispel him. Counter gets a bit more damage in here. Slow down, mutually assured destruction. But Reconaki Sports NA do boast the advantage for now. Jeppo trying to get a nice flank here too, a little flying hook. Gino though hitting some serious shots right now. Another nest egg tripping up Jeppo, a kill as well as Charles cleans up alongside him. And now three dog walkers standing tall, standing strong as Shine claims his own side. But it's Chino doing some serious chip damage. And once again, here comes Jeppo, here comes Counter. Patchy has a lot on his hands as Counter is just going to be circling around him. Still staying alive though, it's Patchy who ends up getting a huge defensive stop here. And now the dog walkers can march it on forward. The rest of the dog walkers come to the rescue here to try and finish out this match point, but it's not looking super hopeful. Reconic Esports NA are just 13% away from capturing the whole thing and pushing us into a set number five. Counter being eliminated on the right side, though, does pose some good moves for the dog walkers as they've inched a bit closer. 13% separates these two. Shine now with the turret down on the right side, firing cross map at Charles. He's got another thing to deal with here, and Chepo is just adding to that number. Takedown from Patchy and a good reaction. But Reconic Esports NA got 3% off of that. They still have to be careful watching that right capture zone as Patchy is just going to town. Reconic still holding strong on defense here. Another penny turret touching the ground. It's gonna make things harder for Chino, Charles, and Patchy here, but he's got a lot of HP to work with. He's doing something about it. Pops the gadget as well. Misconnects the super though, and now counter going to fall as well. Chepo, Shine trying to hold on as long as they can. Here comes the tailspin as well. Chepo getting a pickup, and they gotta do so once again, cycling out life after life. But it's Patchy once again fighting his way up the right. Shine, nevertheless less gets the takedown. Shine's playing some serious defense on this right side. He's still going to be watchful of that slowing oil. Patchy has no gadgets left. He has no way to get really in close proper range with Shine. He's also trying to bait out some of these shots onto the salty barrel. Here could come a big move. Shine now with a knockback pushes Patchy back, but he keeps on healing. It's Shine versus the world. Dog walkers could finish it out here. The spins are out. Ten seconds remain. Reconic Esports could bring it back, but the healing is just there. And dog walkers take the win. They take the match and they're going on to the Grand Finals. Oh, it was so close, but ultimately, Dog Walkers once again getting the job done. Certainly a stronger month from the Reconic Esports fellas. A lot more impressed with what they saw, and they nearly drug it to a fifth and final set. But not this time. Dog Walkers versus STMN happening for a third month in a row. Not as decisive this time for the dog walkers. I think we saw Reconic put up much better of a fight this time, and it makes me hopeful for them going forward. Still though, we need to see these guys in the grand finals again, like we did last month. This time they weren't able to make it through the dog walkers, and that makes twice some new rivalries cropping up in this region between our top four teams. And this was a good show as well. Absolutely. I'm really impressed. I think a great bounce back from them and kind of alluding to what I said earlier. You know, I didn't expect Reconic Esports to come in and win this one. After all, Dog Walkers have won it two months in a row. They should be considered one of the contenders here to do it once again. But they were certainly stronger than they were made out to be last month. Awesome to see them putting their best foot forward. A great fight. But ultimately, Patchy is simply him. My gosh, 18 kills on this guy's side. My goodness, someone signed these guys. The Dog Walkers is a free agent's roster, I might add, and they're number one in NA West, certainly putting in the work and putting in the hours to take what's theirs, putting up some stats to match. Beautiful performance from the Dog Walkers, places him in the grand finals, where they'll once again face STMN. And is it proper to call these guys rivals yet? Because yes, STMN kind of are the big dogs, but the Dog Walkers are at number one in the region. It's a rivalry we'll have to see unfold. For now, though, Patchy being ground in MVP. And for me as well, Reddy, I think that's a great thing to bring up. Rivalries take two sides, though. I'm curious to see what F Dot has to say about that as well, because STM men have not managed to get the best of them quite yet. Yeah, real close here. As far as the, can we call it a rivalry? I say yes. I think Stamina and Dog Walkers have kind of been, Stamina, 
was it was one of the teams to look at. Then you patchy one of the up and comers to look at. It's sort of like old guard. Bobby's been playing since 1992 <laughs> versus the new guard of patchy showing up last year. And so I think that's definitely as they both ascended. Yeah, that's a rivalry, man. That's exactly what we call it, and that's exactly the type of grand finals we've got in front of us. It's Patchy and Dog Walkers versus Bobby and the rest of Stamina. We'll see you after the jump. And it's going to be STM in versus Dog Walkers here in our grand finals. Really interesting stuff, right? We call it a big rivalry. It's the top dogs of this region playing against the Dog Walkers. I mean, ready? It's something special here. It's something we've now seen for three months in a row. And in terms of predictions, I think people are going to struggle with this one. Well, we'll take a look towards it. That was a quick break, right? We've got player or, uh, character predictions coming at you. I have gone with stamina. And tough one. I think this is definitely a close matchup here already. I think DW has always been able to kind of pull out the stuff. And honestly, in recent memory, I might have called this for dog walkers. I got a little afraid as we got into it. But after that performance today, with how quick stamina went in, I think they might be the guys. I'm still thinking stamina here. I'm still sticking with my guns because the dog walkers, as strong as they are, STMN are that uh, times two. I think, I think, I think this month, especially after what we saw at land, what STMN had to offer uh, in person versus the rest of the region entirely. So I'll put my faith in them this time. If the dog walkers really do bring something different and unseen to the table, they might be able to upset them. But with all the changes that have taken place, all of the uh, extra game circumstances that have been cleared for stamina, I think they really are prepped and ready for a clean victory. Well, I'm prepped and ready for a clean finals. So let's go ahead and jump on in. Stamina, STMN, Dog Walkers on the other side. Patrick Chino and Charles just coming off of a pretty arduous semifinal. Where Stamina, on the other hand, well, they really didn't need to play that much Brawl Stars. One of the quickest set wins in monthly finals memory here. And Kenny, watching Stamina, what is there to be said that we haven't mentioned just yet? Yeah, I mean, it's kind of crazy, right? I'm curious to see what the people at home think about this situation, but they just come off fresh off the heels of a big land victory. And now a little pop up here from Bobby too, getting us all hyped up. Look, this is the one team that's had their number. STMN have been fantastic. You see them here speed running it through a match against a really formidable foe. Wash team is a great roster, but they made it look so easy. They have come ready to play today. They look their best all year long in San Diego. We were fortunate enough to get to win is that in person i'm kind of riding hot off that right just kind of a little recency bias sure and i think dog walkers deserve more respect from us but ultimately i don't know it'd just be wild to me to not see stamina claim one of the first three grand finals wins could be certainly a lot on the mind here and dog walkers don't mind being in the finals again but Ready, watching that last semifinals, things almost got away from them. Kind of a scary situation. And yeah, same perspective here. I mean, dog walkers, there are a few times when they can almost let things slip, right? They can be inconsistent at times, but that's a similar issue that has plagued a team like STMN. So it's not really a death sentence, right? It doesn't determine their cap of performance, but it does make me uh, place fewer chips on their table when we're talking this specific matchup. I think that STMN is fully back to 100% now and dog walkers are still just about where they were headed into this. So really the bigger question to ask here is, is 100% from dog walkers equivalent to 100% from STMN? Yeah, I think dog walkers and their inconsistency is really attributed to their lack of experience in juxtaposition to some of the other squads out here that have been doing it for years and years and years together. As we see more and more dog walker competition, I think we'll see more and more consistency out of them. That's sort of what you learn from playing against some of the best in the business, like the tribes and the Chaz Max and the, and the Staminas of the league. And so that's what we're going to be jumping into here right now. Kenny, as we sort of set the table, what's your thoughts as far as dog walkers consistency and how they make it happen here in the finals? 
Look, it's BSC competition. No, they haven't been consistent in other competitions, but ultimately they've won two in a row for a reason. I think this is starting to become part of their identity. And I think a real prove it month. I feel bad for these guys almost. They've done it two times in a row. And I still feel like a lot of people at home, including myself, are going to pick up STMN. Should they be the favorites? Honestly, maybe. But again, I'm an analytical guy and I still can't unsee what I saw from STMN. And the people at home are going to think similarly too. Dog walkers certainly deserve more love than that. I don't feel 100% confident in STMN, not because of that, but because of how well Dog Walkers have played in BSC. Right now, we'll see. Well, don't got to ask the question. That's what we're doing here in finals. We're going to take a gander at some of these matchups. We say goodbye to Ready, Set, and hello to game number one. Gene, the first selection overall as we jump into dry season here. Bounty, sure, a nice pull can certainly put players down. And across the way, there's going to be a penny. Nice choice of Penny here. Colonel Ruffs, the doggo, joining in on the fun. This is an S team in Brawler, often picked. I think makes a lot of sense in this map, too. There's a few different directions they can go with this. And also claiming this Brawler, I actually really like. Sneakily, they could have gone with a Gene and Colonel Ruffs combo on the other side and gone for the old strategy F dot of just kind of pairing the magic puffs with the Colonel Ruffs star power allows you to passively build up your teammates' HP. Would have been a really dangerous compensation. So not only do they get a solid Brawler, they also take away from what Dog Walkers could have possibly we done all right a thrower here in the barley ton of damage a little bit of mid control for sure but curious to see who they pair this up with barley not the best at following up off of a gene pull here comes otis and so a composition fully charged here with that mute man on the other side what's your take on dog walkers draft I think it's interesting. You know, Otis isn't the first brawler that came to mind for me here, but he's just really solid in general. I think this fat splatter gets you some extra area control, too. Obviously, if you can hit his super shot, too, still the starfish can hit you with the mute button. And if you can't shoot your shots, well, it doesn't get you any kills. So I think overall, still a pretty solid composition. It's not the most traditional thing. Sure, I'm still not super used to seeing barley in a bounty. But in this day and age of Brawl Stars, it is what it is, right? When these indestructible walls hit the field, naturally, a lot of these throwers have been buffed through that. Great though a great way to try and answer the barley with that teleportation and also something that we saw on display earlier on stmn in their semifinals just the great teleport play was incredible sands was the one that was playing the black and white earlier on we'll see if he's going to be reprising his role i hope so it was just fun to watch and as we take the field it's going to be Bobby on the gray with Sands in mid on Colonel Ruff. So a little bit of a swap here. Let's see what Bobby's got. I think he's going to show some good skills here. The man has displayed time and time again that with those sharpshooters, single shot brawlers, he can be a real force to be reckoned with. They claim the blue star. Now backing it up just a little bit here. I feel like this map's been very defensive here today. It makes sense too, considering Sands is going to be trying to power up teammates with that passive star power that I talked about beforehand. But for now, Patsy going to be able to just lob some shots over a good super there. And Bobby's getting yeah. even more powerful with extra HP and a super. Oh, and the big pull. That could have been really bad for Patchy. I love how dog walkers are really making this comp work. This indestructible wall. Barley, if you play in the mid, not going to really do much because, well, there's not really much wall to leverage as a thrower. But if you push STMN onto their side of the map, you're really able to hide behind that indestructible wall and make things happen. Unfortunately for dog walkers and their fans, STMN battling out of their position. There's a pull out of the dog walkers, and Chino makes it four to one. Dog walkers. Powerful plays for dog walkers, and well said by yourself, too. Patchy's going to be able to take advantage even his spawn side with this five pronged wall that's indestructible. You got to be careful, though. Pulls can be a factor. Patchy nearly getting claimed there once again. Does get tagged up, but now all three of them are going to be grouped up here. The penny turret was helping the cause a little bit. Sandbags on this right hand side, and ultimately, dog walkers are going to have to hold on to their three star lead here. At this point, Stamina is waiting for the countdown. They've tried to play it. And now they've got to wait till it comes down to that last moment and go in for the all-in push. A dozen on the clock. Super on Bobby. There's the teleport in. He goes by himself. Everybody turns towards him. Czar from the left and Sans from the right. Nobody dead just yet. Two seconds to go. And it's a kill on Stamina's side. Game over. Six to four. Stamina make the last second play work. 
That's exactly right. Gotta make the last second push. Sometimes it's all about timing it. That's a big factor in Bounty that we've seen this year and STMN executing that so well. Being patient, not panicking. They've been in this spot before. They are hungry to prove themselves in this spot. I know teammate OG sitting on the sidelines got to chat with them this week. This is a matchup that they wanted to see. They are looking to prove themselves not as the best in just ESL, but in this BSC region too. Honestly, for me in that game one, stamina, the end wasn't even the difficult part. This is the hard part. When dog walkers have you where they want, like I said, on your side of the map, how do you respond? Stamina needs to really push up out of here. They're able to do so kind of easily here. Still no footing. Blue Star in the pocket of dog walkers, by the way, and Czar in the pocket as well. A great pull and a great kill by the rest of them, three to zero. Wow, Chino just showing up when it matters most. So talented with the gene pool, some maximum range certainly being displayed right there. Once again, STMN gonna have to try and make a little bit of a comeback. Over a minute on the clock, lots of brawl left to go down. And Patchy gonna be throwing down the fiery flurry. It's gonna push Sands away as Bobby moves forward. Zar tries to gain his team some positioning. Dogwalkers once again gonna have to find their way out of this situation. Now, last time we said talked about how they needed to hit the the last second play, but there's 40 seconds this time around. Stamina can just play this a little slow, look for the kills, fortunately, for them and their fans. The other way, Zar's deep behind enemy territory. No way he's getting out of there alive. Gets a nice trade, but it's still eight to two. Kenny, 22 seconds left. Yeah, this is going to be a tough one here. Dogwalker's now with six stars in their favor. And the countdown's beginning. This time, Dogwalker's not nearly feeling as much pressure as they did last time. Chino flashing a super patchy, flashing a super doesn't quite hit the pull this time. Now they're being backed into a corner. This could be an opportunity for STM. And as Zar hits some piercing shots, Chino now marching it forward. Low HP, few stars going down and hitting the field for each side. But it ultimately doesn't matter. STM in falling short on this one. Dogwalker's for game number two. The duel in the top left, Penny wins it. Penny falls down. I think we see a much different scenario, but great job coming out from DW to kind of make things happen on their side. And so we go to a game three, put two on the clock, and the Blue Star has gone to the Dog Walkers. And this time around, a little bit more of a battle for it. As Charles gets pulled briefly, Sands is able to capitalize. Bobby steps up and grabs Blue, and STMN has the lead. They come out commanding right there. Bobby hitting shots. Czar was not getting a kill on that right-hand side, but Patchy was certainly feeling a world of hurt there. A pickup plus a blue star. That's exactly what you want to see if you're STM in. And now they're in the driver's seat with a lead, sitting comfortably behind these indestructible walls, and now an even more powered-up Bobby. Waiting it out. Probably a scary choice for stamina, but ultimately the right one, as long as they don't get pushed in. Bounty can be very passive, as it should be. But right now, Dog Walker staying very active. Bobby with a missed pull. Good dance and shoes by Dog Walkers. <laughs> yeah, the footwork is certainly something to watch right now. Everybody with some movement. A big pull through this time, though. Charles going to fall victim. It's Sands with the pickup here. Four stars on his noggin as well. Bobby with a teleport at hand. Chino going to need to hit some more big pulls here if they want a chance to walk away with the set. And there it is. That's what we've seen Bobby try time and time again. The player kind of clips through the wall. There the pull is successful. The player gets pulled on through. But now half a minute to go. Five to zero for STMN. And Dog Walkers thought about guessing, getting aggressive, but then they step back. That second guess, honestly, I like the choice. Not a lot of, uh, there was too much time on the clock to get that aggro. Now with 15 seconds to go, Dog Walkers are going to have to do something about it. Seven stars now for STM and they have been muted, though. Bobby slowly dwindling an HP, a pull going through, but it connects to the wrong object. It's the tar barrel instead. Charles low HP. Bobby with a quick pickup here can play defense for his teammates and successfully does STM in taking our very first set here in the grand finals. Real, real smooth stuff there from Stamina. Love the adaptation. You know, the Barley choice was strange, but as soon as you jump onto the field, you see that line of, uh, of indestructible wall. I think it started to make a little bit more sense, but they had to stay on that side of the map, and Stamina realized that 
they shouldn't. And so they really <laughs> not only leverage themselves, find themselves out of it, but also just played it a little bit better. So Stamina do stretch it to, or Dog Walker stretch it to three, but Stamina ultimately take the set. I was really impressed with us team. And again, they've just looked like in peak conditioning since that land in San Diego that we saw them. And I can't unsee it. They're just so good. Green and Sands as well, getting a lot more playing time, it feels like. It's something OG talked about with me the other day. They're going to play who they think is the best players available. And they feel like right now that Sands is, well, playing really solidly. The people at home even found him as an MVP candidate earlier today. And for good reason, he's really grown into a great player. He's definitely somebody that I love keeping my eyes on every month. He's Definitely a major factor here in that STM in victory. All right, now dog walkers have to kind of fight back into it. Charles with a ton of DPS, Patchy four put downs. Patchy, usually the hard carry for this team. I don't know if I would call him that in this last one. Certainly a team celebration, but we'll hit we'll hit field goal here for brawl ball. Historically. Sam has been pretty good here. They look for control. What's the take on the other side of the field? What do you expect out of dog walkers jumping into Brawl Ball? You know, there's a few chaotic brawlers that I think could hit the ground here. I'm looking out for Willow. I'm looking out for Dynamite even. I think there's some crazy stuff that can go down. Instead, it's going to be STM in with a very safe and traditional M's. This map has been pretty crazy to watch in practices to see what guys are scrimming. This weekend, we've seen Willow show up several times as well. And Dog Walkers are a team that ultimately are going to play what they think is best for them. It's not always about getting the hardest counter in the world. Sometimes they just want to play what they're comfortable with. We saw that with the Sam that they picked earlier in the interview last month with Patty, yeah. he alluded to the fact that sometimes they're just going to do what's comfortable for them and I think I trust their judgment at this point especially considering they've got two grand finals wins already this year without a doubt listen like the, it, all tier lists are, are are malleable due to so many variables and I don't have enough time to get into it but at the end of the day comfort picks is a real thing and you can bring your you can bring your brawler up half a tier sometimes even a whole tier by just being better than the other than the uh, than the opposition and I think that's what we see sometimes with players like patchy I think that's what we see sometimes uh from Sands, even, to be honest with you, on some of the oddball picks. But Patchy going to be uh, teamed up here with the spike. So a lot of slow control on the side of Dog Walkers. Stamina on the response. And so far, so good for both sides. I think very normal stuff, but I'm waiting to see if this calm enters a storm immediately after. You never know with these teams. They could catch us off guard. They've certainly done it before. Bonnie likely going to be their choice of mid here since they've selected this brawler. Going to add a nice little depth of range for them in this mid area. There's some narrow left and right hand sides, especially those indestructible walls. But ultimately, you do need a little mid to long range. And they do pick that up with both of these brawlers. Penny, Bonnie, two solid choices for me. Last selection over here for the red team. Max is banned out. Interesting that both squads have banned out the Nita. So really, I've always uh, seen Nita be very attractive in heist. What makes her double banned here at field goal? couple things. One, to uh, try and take down some beefy brawlers like Ash does really well into tanks and also just a really easy one to kind of paint those left and right hand sides. And they do have a tank counter on the S team inside technically. M certainly serves as that role, but if Ash can get up close, it's all but over usually for M's, especially when she runs out of those gadgets. So I think dog walkers, there's the storm, man. That's the spicy pick. It's the pop off of brawler. If it works, they're probably doing great. And if it doesn't, if S team in can keep Ash under wraps, it's probably going S Team's way. Honestly, very fitting for Dog Walkers, kind of like the Sam. You know, if Sam does it, cool. If he doesn't, oh well. The Ash, kind of an all in strat, unsurprised to see the difference maker be on Patchy as well. Dog Walkers on the bottom side of your UI in blue, stamina on the top side in red, and it's Dog Walkers on the top side scoring against the opposition. Patchy just made it happen.
<laughs> Patchy clashing with the former teammate there. Sands couldn't quite hang on. Just so much HP to work with. And again, Ims is always going to be a safe pick, but it's never easy playing against a good Ash. Patchy now just lurking on this left-hand side. Sands has charged up a super. Bobby has one too. Once again, it's going to be STM on defense. We're going to get a little color correction here. It's going to be STM and now on our blue side. They're down zero to one to dog walkers in the red. Big play, left side. Bobby with an important defensive kill on Apache. If Apache stays alive, it's likely the end of game one. Instead, a little less than 90 seconds to go here. Instead, I'm gonna have another shot to enter on in. Charles gets popped. Apache on the chase of Sar. Bobby's making sure there's no one for Apache to pass to with the mid lane kill. Everything thrown out, and now, Stamina is still pushing forward because they know no chance to score due to the respawns. And Charles forced to throw down a super on the left-hand side, too. They're all in their goal right now. Desperation super coming out of Patchy here, too. And now this ball being dribbled forward. Sands may have an opportunity. Pivotal dodge right there and a nice pickup from Bobby. Zar has a super available, throwing down the penny turret. It allows him to bounce it back and bounce that ball in the net. Zar ties things up. 1-1. One, one. STM in now, seriously, in this game. 30 seconds on the clock. Chino with the ball, passing up field, trying to set things up, leaving Ash just a small amount of room to push up. Instead, Bobby's gonna recenter. Here comes Sands, slowing things up. Bobby to the backside, takes down Chino, but Charles answers quickly. And Patchy just running it down mid, taking down Sands as well. Czar creating space, and the respawns! Charles is good. Bobby knows it, and game over. We go to game two. Patchy was quite powerful in that matchup, especially the end game, able to hold on there, overwhelm the enemies with aggression, with rage, with HP, and it ultimately pays off. Nicely done there. They're two-time Grand Finals champions this year for a reason. They are not letting stamina off the hook easy. Not at all. Love this play out of Dog Walkers. Again, a lot of space being created here for Patchy, and Patchy is executing with the space that he's given. B's going to slow everybody down on the defensive side, wait for a little bit of the heal, and Dog Walker's going in. Chino getting bit down causes Bobby to bite back, but all of a sudden, Bobby gets exploded. So does the rest of the team, and Dog Walker score early off of a calculated and meticulous plan. These pushes from Dog Walkers have been relentless. Now Sugar Rush trying to just get something going for STM in there, trying to juice them up with a little energy, with a little bit of a comeback. This is a good start for them. Chino falling in the low HP. Charles having to recharge on his own. Nice connecting shots from Czar, as now they're going to have some extra pressure with the Penny Turret. Patchy, though, marching it forward, does manage to stay alive for now. A nice dump off from Chino as Patchy's going to be able to pick up this ball. Bobby falls as a result, and now they can still play goalkeeper. It's going to be a rock and a hard place, though, as Patchy just has to dump it off to this left-hand side and try and guard it with his life. Czar playing it safe there, not going all the way in. And the ball castled on the left-hand side. Dog Walkers have one, and they've got a last 70 seconds here. Patchy falling down to the hands of Sands. And here comes the rats, and rats off to you. Charles gets it, Chino walking down. Honestly, don't even have to do it, but you might as well. Trick shot's good. 2-0, and Dog Walkers take the set. <laughs> no way. What a shot to do it, too. I couldn't tell if he was going to be able to walk it in. It came down to the wire, but instead just says forget about it. Puts in the flashy play, the flashy goal. I mean, that's going to be a serious play of the day candidate there, maybe for the entire weekend. I mean, yeah, that's basically, I mean, that's that's the Brawl Stars version of a nutmeg, right? Like right through the legs type deal. But honestly, jokes aside, yeah, I'm probably having some fun there. But real talk, like you said, are they going to be able to walk it in? Is he going to shoot? That's a decision the defensive player has to make. And Dog Walkers just outdo it. Real, real strong stuff. Specifically, real strong Brawl Ball stuff. Again, uh, this play that we were watching, this was drawn up in a notebook. You know, this isn't a, an on-the-fly thing. They push the ball up, they put down molasses, and then they execute after the heel. Really, really well done by dog walkers. I think this is 
just sick to watch as well. Oh my gosh, I can't get enough of that action. I, I think he could have walked it in. I think it was a close call with the respawn, but ultimately, Charles was just a problem. Let's address it. 11 kills. That is absolutely Woo. ridiculous. Woo. 254 DPS as well. Charles just, he's him. Getting it done. <laughs> Beautiful stuff out of Charles. And again, that's what I was talking about. This composition is built to provide space for Patchy. Two players control, and you let the core go to work. But the re and, and that's kind of the team identity. But the other two players are not slouches. When I say role player, that is not a slight. It does not mean you are not a star. Charles, absolutely the star of that Brawl Ball match and a big part of what makes his team this strong. Reset, Kaboom Canyon, and Amber's gonna be our first selection overall. It's the world we live in right now in Brawl Stars. Amber with a nice little addition to her kit. When you step on the fuel, you're gonna get slowed down. So when she's on the field and alive, she can be a problem. When she's off the field and the supers and the puddles are on the ground, she's still a problem. She's just constantly lurking, constantly a threat and quick draft going through here. Everybody seems to know what they want. Meg, no stranger to this weekend. Bell back in action as well. And here's an 8-bit being picked into the Bell, which is a little interesting. Hey. Bounce shot can mess with the turret quite a bit. My man Brock being selected here. You know, Brock's been one of these brawlers that there's a lot of talk about. People keep asking Brock question mark in chat. Finally selected here, Kenny. Yeah, and I think for a good reason, too. I think there's a little versatility that Brock brings to the table. One, he does so much damage on that high safe. It's something that every composition needs, in my opinion, in heist. If you don't have the it factor to get yourself some damage, you can play area control as much as you want. You can play defensive, but one little slip up in those situations, and the other team's just going to pummel you with high safe damage. So Brock can use the jump gadget if he wants to get over walls. He can use it for wall break to get the map the way he wants it to be. A good counter pick here, though, I think. Sands could work into some of these single shot bros. Amber going to kind of torch through these spawners, so I think it's going to take some proper yep. laning. They might just be looking more for Eve's ability to float over that water. I think that's exactly what it is. Just allow her to be a little bit more mobile in this match. This might be the first draft where I think the better comp is the one without Meg. Agree or disagree? Ooh, that is a spicy question. I think, you know, Sand's going to be a solid choice here. Eve, again, I think into Amber, not necessarily the best, but I think it's going to be all about the laning. I certainly see where you're coming from. And I think I might side with you just a little bit here, but right now it's STM in. If you disagree, oh, say it, bro. It's, yeah, maybe I should have just taken it back. Should have come with STM in <laughs> as a hardcore winner right there, because right now they're charging down the map. 15% lead. I, 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 you know, Dog Walkers left the Meg open. Led me to believe they have a way to control it. Obviously, Patchy on the Amber can slow it down, but they used the defensive oil this time around. Stamina are the only ones with damage so far, 15% as Mag Meg won on the left-hand side. And now, see, Patchy has the oil in that left lane, slowing Bobby down. That's going to get add a ton of control. But now it's up to Dog Walkers to turn that control, Kenny, into offensive prowess. Yeah, and Charles now going to be the last line of defense on this left-hand side, and Bobby's going to get the pick up there. It does slow them down, but if they're ultimately winning the lane, they can still get up the map all they want. Patchy doing his best to deal with Bobby, but just so much HP to go against Charles once again in a very difficult situation as Sands gets a few chip shots on the board and a continued lead here for STM in now way past that 25% marker. Tough stuff as Patchy has popped here. Bobby forced out of the mech. Charles puts down the stim, but taken down. Stamina still pristine heist box. Patchy, Chino, Charles unable to penetrate the defense of stamina. Strong stuff here for best team, and they are certainly fighting on this one. And sure, they've got Amber on their side for dog walkers. We love the Brock pick that they have. We were even complimenting them just a second ago, but stamina shooting skills too much to handle right now. Charles been on this left hand side in trouble all throughout this game. Now going to be forced away here as Patchy's doing his best, but S team in just refusing to back down right now. Charles getting lit up by Bobby in the mech. See you later. And maybe on paper. You use the Amber to slow down the mech and just punish it. But we're here in practice, and I'm talking about practice. Bobby's out here, game time. 
Oh man, it's looking like game time still for STMN2. They're just continuing to get takedowns and Chino unable to do more than 3%. It was all the damage they had throughout that entire game. Amber can apply pressure, but if you can't pick up kills, if you can't move across the map, does it even matter? No, clearly not. I mean, clearly not, man. <laughs> this this was, like I said, I, I, I saw, or at least I think I saw, what the conversation was in comms. You know, let them, sure, we'll bait them into a meg pick, and then we can slow it down, deal some extra damage with the 8-bit, and just chunk it. But, no, Bobby's just killing you, man. Great stuff out of Bobby. Sands is also extremely accurate at the moment. Look at that. From a distance and able to get it done. Nice job to Amber there, picking up a kill, but still, it's just Bobby in a monster truck, driving down the map, finally some action going down. Bobby trying to get his super, gonna be able to stay alive. 33 HP would have taken some insane dodges to escape that inevitable fate. Now Patsy just running away from a little 250 spawner. It's something that Eve can bring to the table. A lot of those little spawners can add up, especially with the bu the, the boost that she got now getting a fourth one of those as well. It'd be a real problem, so at times can still be a bit overwhelming, but right now, nice. Just once again, Bobby, same old, same old, driving the truck, getting the kill, marching up the map. Zar combined with Bobby there for, for heavy damage and then also makes a defensive play. Zar in this mid on Eve has been really, really powerful. And all that said, this is still the first damage on the safe that we have seen all game. 7% by stamina, much different than game number one. Dog walkers, I think, have not had the pressure this game, but they've still done a much better job of protecting their base. Agreed. I think that's well said considering, but now it's uh, starting to get out of hand a little bit. They need to catch back up to this mid area. Chino with the respawn certainly helps the cause. A rocket rain going down, but no takedowns. Not a serious amount of connections either. Ooh, Zar might be pieced up on this left hand side too. Chino now forced away. The nest eggs doing a little work here to help out. Bobby, big pickup left hand side. Charles forced to play defense on the right, and now it's right back in the driver's seat for STMN. A little bit over half a minute, 18% done by the blue team. And again, just how do you deal with the damage out of Bobby? And of course, Zara's is combining. It's just a long range and Patchy's just unable to compete to do these diagonals. Yeah, they even open up the map a little bit too. So Brock doing that for them, they can just hit these sharpshooter shots and they've just been the better players so far. 10 seconds to go. This is not an undoable amount of percentage points and Charles is going to do his best here. Here comes Chino, needs some serious shots. Rocket rain on the ground. He That's enough. reach through, they pull it off. Dog walkers come back in game number two. And that's what you were talking about with the Brock, the ability to just launch huge damage at a moment's notice, on demand, just like that. Brock wins it. Usually we look to Colette for that like on demand, oh no, I need the damage, just push the button. But Brock gets it done there. Agreed. I think that's well said. And I think one of the reasons that you mentioned that you liked it so much in the draft, too, I, I think Brock is just really solid in general, right? Especially if you're hitting shots. If Chino can keep charging those supers, they can put themselves in positions to where he can launch the rocket rain. That's several percentage points like we saw there. That's really easy. Sometimes one push is all it takes, just like we saw. And Dogwalker's done a much better job in game number two on defense of preventing Samina from really running away with it. If they can do that again and time things just right, Dogwalker's may have a fighting chance in this set. Oh, absolutely. I mean, especially after the last one. Patchy trying to lock things down, but instead the left lane again winds up winning. Bobby, though, getting torched by Patchy here. The damage not enough to take Bobby all the way down, finally after the fact. And so 20% and counting as Sands is able to find some shots as well. And the lingering damage on the ground. So 73% left for DW. Nicely done there. Patchy certainly contributing to this game, but a strong start here for S team in terms of percentage acquired. It's going to be Patchy now burning up Bobby. Going to be falling out of that monster truck momentarily, and this is where he has to make it count. Patchy already cycling another super here too. He can go ahead, drop it down, put pressure on the other side by having the fuel on the ground, or look for those kills that he's gotten earlier. Zar, though, just refusing to miss right now. Bobby back in huh. the big truck, and now looking down the sidelines. It's going to be a kill on this right-hand side. Shots going down for Eve. One 
number, Bobby as well. And now we're at sub 50%. This is where things can start to get really hairy for dog walkers. And a much different game than game number two. Dog walkers now having to fight back against 60 plus percent. A little bit different than 17 or whatever it was. It was sub 20. And so dog walkers certainly looking up at a mountain right now as they have the lion's share of the damage to deal before they're able to match their opposition. Kenny counting down from 22 now. Dog walkers have to make their push. Yeah, and they're going to need all of this clock, and they need to start applying some damage right now. But Bobby is very healthy. Zara is hitting shots. Now they even have some hatchlings to protect away. The they're going to be trying to do their best shots going down from Chino. There are some percentage points, but they still have plenty to work with. And with only five seconds to go, it's not quite enough. A hero's effort there, 16% ultimately being the difference maker. But the lead too strong. A sigh of relief from Bobby breaks a smile, and now they come away with the lead two to one STMN on top right now. Great adaptation from stamina here. You know, in game number game number two, they had a little bit of a lead and going, getting aggressive is going to cost you, right? And so you do some damage, you figure maybe we can sit back. They did not expect that quick burst out of the Brock and so they lose at that last second. So game number three, they make the adjustment to be a little bit more aggressive, look for a little bit more safe damage because they know that dog walkers can just blitzkrieg bop up the mid. And dog walkers did that again in the third game but it just wasn't enough. They hit like 50%, whereas Stamina had 30%. And so a great adaptation there from Stamina to go a little bit harder there on the aggressive side in game three to bring them the set victory. Yep, I think that's perfectly put. You know, they had a monstrous amount of percentage already dealt in that safe. And as good as dog walkers are, they needed all the time in the world. And S team and stagger their sums just enough, play just enough on defense as well. Just hold them off. It was close. Maybe a few more seconds dog walkers comes away with that. But it was still, I feel like, part of S team and's plan there. I don't think they would have been nearly as aggressive. They played the clock to their strengths. And you can see it here. A lot of damage being dealt, but ultimately at a perfect time. Great job to S team and I think they're really showing why they have been so strong throughout these months while they were so wow. strong in LAN and while they're going to have a great chance here to take away their first grand finals of the year in this next set. Sands might have missed four shots the entire game. <laughs> like, real talk, that is incredibly high DPS. 14, 14 kills. Hear my natural accent come out a little bit as I'm just, just astounded <laughs> by these numbers here, man. All Everybody killing it, but... The accuracy out of Sands was on display. And we go to Crystal Arcade. We'll hit Hot Zone if dog walkers make this one happen. But it's gem grab time. And I have no idea who's going to take it. Because even in that one, dog walkers put up a great, great fight. And so bands are out. Nobody wants to play against Ash and the RT ban on the other side. Cute of dog walkers to ban out the Sandy, by the way. Yeah, and I think honestly an okay ban too. I think it's something we've seen a lot. Sandy is certainly a lot stronger than he was. Did get a recent-ish buff, not in this balance change, but in a previous one. And of course, the Rude Sands are a real problem. You can also go with the Healing Winds, so a versatile option at that. The stunning gadget that he has too, putting the enemies to sleep. Sandy could be a real threat, especially when you have that first overall pick. You can kind of be a little bit more flexible what you ban, right? If you're S-team and you have to get rid of what you absolutely don't want the other team to take first overall. So they didn't necessarily have that luxury that Dog Walkers did. Instead, they go with a Janet and an M's for STMN, a penny pickup for the dog walkers. Ooh, and the big Meg entering the building as well. That's mm. two very powerful brawlers to kick off this draft for them. So, I mean, last time we saw Meg get through the draft, dog walkers were the one dealing with it. And, well, they didn't deal with it. Now it's STMN that have to deal with it. And I'm kind of eager to see how they decide to play against her. M's and, and the Bonnie. We'll wait to see who the third selection is, but Dog Walker's finishing off their composition with a little bit of spike. And so some area control here. A nice look. Stamina on the clock. 
I think this is actually a really wise decision from picking at the Spike. I like Meg, obviously. She's been really good this weekend. It's something we can't harp on enough. But Spike's certainly somebody with as much DPS as he does. Historically, that's been one of the ways to address Meg. So they not only pair this together, there are a lot of aggressive tankier brawlers that can also put a halt to Meg. And Spike, of course, since he can do so much damage, just can use that super and slow them down. It might make things a little bit easier. So kind of a two for one here is that's exactly what they're going to do. They're going to go Daryl as a way to try and I think deal with this Meg. They're going to have to roll on the Spike. He's got that Ooh. life plant, though. So I think both sides kind of ultimately know what they have to do, right? When you see the Spike go down, as to men gotta still send it it's their ultimate choice daryl was not the first one that came to mind for me by any means but i think for both sides this definitely makes sense daryl kind of a classic here for stmn who wins the draft i think it's dog walkers you, you've had me ask some really tough ones here but you know despite last time what i said it's all going to come down to gameplay of course but I, I do really like this spike pickup got some great distance on the m's needs to keep some distance of his own now but take away a counter into patchy bobby's gonna have to pop off with the daryl if he does it could really go their way and a strong start here as well for bobby patchy in a lot of trouble now gonna be pinched here wow a big pickup and sometimes that's just how the cookie crumbles gameplay ultimately all that matters that's a great play by the daryl it's exactly what he was selected for if i'm patchy i don't give him that opportunity again bobby goes deep one more time but it's defended by the dog walkers i think bobby was really successful because it was that wall play p.s stamina's had mid control seven to zero at the moment every gem going the way of stamina till now Yup, and the longer this goes on too, the harder it gets for Bobby, right? Sure, he can charge up those super stills, but the more gadgets that he drops, it only gets more and more difficult. And now that Dogwalker's gaining control too, really the only mobility they can rely on are super. Czar has one where he can take to the skies. Bobby has one where he can roll on enemies. But Sans can have a real hard time here keeping up with the distance of somebody like Charles, like Chino, like the HP that Patchy brings to the table. But Bobby still relentless. Patchy holding on for dear life though, as now Czar's looking to clean up this kill taking flight doesn't quite connect dog walkers very close to making this one a tie i want to say that bobby needs more help going in but i also don't think bobby should ever hesitate i think you need to kind of go super patchy on cooldown essentially right like that's the game plan playing this daryl so far it's worked out nine to six for stamina mid control is nobody's as stamina is fighting in it, they kill the gem carrier, and that might be enough for stamina as Chino falls down. Oh no! Dog walkers have 10 seconds to chase down Zar, and it's just not gonna happen. As Sans does a great job of distracting the red team. And that's game one. Stamina. Match point. This could be their first dog walkers might finally be dethroned. The Daryl gameplay, unbelievable. I think like you said, he just seemed to have it on a cooldown, right? If I have super, what do I do? I click button, I roll forward, I mess with Meg. You can see what the shotgun brawler could yeah. really do there. Something that, you know, Shelly sure has a shotgun too. Why not pick Shelly? Well, Daryl can roll. Daryl can be more versatile in that sense. So I think not only a good pick, they had a handful of options, but Daryl was the one they ultimately chose and they did it into a spike too confidence and great gameplay coming from Bobby. And I think that's why they were ultimately able to take that first game. A lot of homework being done here by Stamina. Ash, excuse me, Meg winning the fight in mid. Bobby has the super and puts down the mech. Goes for the other side as well. And coast to coast, Bobby getting it done. <laughs> and pinning as well. Stamina, six gems to Dog Walker's none. Oh, that was such a good play from Bobby. Barely surviving that as well. Charles couldn't escape. Barely surviving? Either. And now it's Bobby as well. Eight gems in their hands. This is starting to get out of reach here as STMN are commanding this game number two. Well, big damage. This time it's Sands here. And just great use of the M's. Ten gems in the pocket. Three on Bobby, seven on Czar. So Dog Walkers have two targets. Sands is dead. Chino pushing forward on the right-hand side. Patchy with long range, not going to be able to catch up. And here comes Chino. Three seconds. Zars in the air. Bobby's tanky is all heck. And that's going to be it. STMN are your North American West victors for the month of April. <laughs>
After being swept last month, there's some sleeping giants, right? They traveled to San Diego. They found their stride, and now they take it home, and they do so in the BSC2. Bobby just looks thrilled right now. Very deserving oh, yeah. win. And again, they've been working very hard for this. San Diego finally went their way. They get it done in land, but in a West, they just couldn't quite find it. Dog Walkers had won this one twice. People were starting to ask questions. Are Dog Walkers really the best team in this region? And now that STMN have done it, I think that makes that question a little bit more difficult, but for now, it's absolutely STM as they've taken this month. I really, really like stamina's off the field prowess here. The draft has just leveled up. This was never the worst part of their game, but I've said to Bobby before, y'all need to the draft, and it looks <laughs> like they've worked on it, man. I love the Daryl tech into the Meg. This is thinking outside of the box, but not being insane. It all makes sense. Backing it up with the gameplay as well. Just listen, the plan. When dog walkers left Meg up, I said, cool. They did it intentionally. That's a choice. How do they play into it? And it was the Amber idea and it didn't work out. STMN does the same thing. Cool. They made a choice. The Daryl thing worked. Great stuff by STMN, bringing it from the notebook into the battlefield, executing and taking the whole month. Great way of putting it too. I mean, it's not like it was just crazy enough that it might work. It was, well, it kind of made sense. I mean, they were ultimately yes. kind of forced to make that pick. It's not like it was some unorthodox crazy brawler that we've never seen before. You know, there's a plethora of brawlers in the game at this point. They choose one that made sense. And you can see that both sides, I mean, some heavy firepower going down for sure in the DPS, but the kill category really leaning, leaning towards STMN here. I mean, yeah, absolutely. And gem grab, you don't always need to get the kills. Sometimes those TKOs where you force the player back is good enough. Obviously, killing the gem carrier is a big deal. But here, you know, this was really just SCMN playing the objective. We saw one or two gems on the side of dog walkers in most of these games. And Stamina found themselves with five plus gems most of the time before dog walkers got involved in mid. You know, it's 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 this was one of the more lopsided dog walkers matchups I think I've seen. Usually dog walkers kind of die with their boots on, but stamina really went to work specifically here in gem grab. Yeah, when it comes to voting on MVP too, I mean, especially after seeing that Daryl gameplay, it makes a lot of sense to me that the people at home would choose Bobby. Three excellent choices, but I think they made yep. the right one here. The Daryl too good. Bobby, just a real factor throughout all four of those sets. An awesome player to watch. And I think going to be one to hear from later on. Well, later on, I mean, scratch that right now. Bobby's MVP and Bobby's my boy. Bring me the interview. There he is, man. What's good? Mr. Chicken and Rice himself. Grats on the dub. Taking down dog walkers, does it mean more? Mm -hmm. It does. Definitely means a lot more than uh, than any other win, yeah. Why is that? Because we were talking a little bit about how this is sort of a rivalry, you know, kind of like old guard versus new guard. You're 100 years old. Mm -hmm. Patchy just jumping on. There's a lot here. Talk me through it. Um, I mean, they've just beaten us twice. That's that's really it. Uh, we get really salty when we lose. We flew over to West because we thought we'd be able to win here. Um, and they've been doing a really good job at not letting us do that. So, I mean, they're really good friends. You know, no shade to them, nothing like that. Um, but, yeah, we just really wanted this win. We didn't want to go down 3-0. Talk to me about Meg Dominates, right? We saw mm -hmm. dog walkers. We saw uh, dog walkers kind of leave her open and try to deal with it with Amber, and you just didn't care. Now you guys left Meg open, and you picked Daryl. How much work went into that? What's that look like behind the scenes? Oh, it's crazy, man! Shout out to Luki. Uh, two, three days ago, we were in a voice call, three and a half hours till three thirty in the morning, just strategizing, um, trying to figure out what we want to play, what we don't want to play, and we got everything we wanted today. So, I mean, it worked out really well. I want to commend you on your uh, ability to answer that question without showing me the playbook. That was a little bit of a, of a bait. So good job keeping it close to the chest, man. But going <laughs> forward, you know, mid-season break, obviously some big tournaments on the line. What's, what's the game plan for Bobby, STMN going forward? Um, if you know, you know, we did the ritual again before this monthly final, uh, we got another win. So we're now five for five with the ritual. So, I mean, we're just going to hang loose, you know, do our thing, try and do it before Japan and, you know, just hope for the best. Well, there it is, man. I'm excited. Congratulations to everything and, uh, all the big wins. 
Shout out time. Your go. Uh, shout out dog walkers. Um, on top of the gameplay, you know, they're just incredible friends of ours. And uh, they've been really nice and just really cool throughout the whole thing. You know, win or lose doesn't change our friendship at all. So that's uh, really nice that we have that with them. And then just shout out to everyone that helps, you know, CMG, um, I'm blanking, Alec and, and Unbreakables, just all of them. Like, there's just so many close friends that help a lot. So just, you know who you are, big shout out. We love it here, man. Congratulations on the dub. I'm, I'm liking this rivalry between you and Dog Walkers. Congratulations on the win. It's fun, man. Thank you. Bobby, always a good dude to talk to. He's been around the block, like I said, and, you know, seen some ups and downs. But ready this month, certainly an up for stamina. Certainly so. I mean, what a ride it has been for Stamina. And you heard what Bobby said. It's like, okay, they, they beat us twice, right? The rest is STM in, but it's still, you know, at the end of the day, they're quite good friends. And this has really shaped up the standings in this region as well. We saw the first couple of wins go over to Dog Walkers. Now STM in advancing to that number one position. With the long break coming up, I have some big questions. Do we see them stay in that position? That's certainly a question that you need to ask. I don't have the answer. Anyway, this is what today's tournament looked like. Wash team made it to Stamina by taking down B1, but Stamina made it all the way through. TLG West played against Raconic, which is kind of fun there because TLG West, that's where Frixie plays. So a little bit of a kind of matchup there, but Raconic loses out to Dog Walker, so much ado about nothing. And then of course the four set match that we just got a chance to kind of watch. So a good show nonetheless. After all that, Dog Walker still sitting pretty on top, Kenny. Stamina in number two and Raconic in third. ST men clawing their way back up the leaderboard just a little bit here, but you know, nonetheless, it's still going to be about the same in terms of placement. The point differential, very important though. Dog walkers have won two of the three months, of course. ST men have now claimed one of their own, about 50 points separating them. But a big thing to look for in future months, you know, we've gotten very similar brackets multiple times now, but an STMN or a dog walkers early loss, say in those quarterfinals or the semifinals, could really cause some chaos. So definitely look out for that. Say dog walkers and S team in match up against each other early on in one of these months, it's going to change everything. Well, after this one, great performances by everybody kind of standing up. But of course, we have one particular stand up play. And of course, Reddy wants to talk about it. Yeah, I mean, we can roll back the tape and do a little play review here. A huge play from RVM, which was really, really impactful for the victory of Chazmat Gaming in A here. Not only was this such a close match, but we saw Chazmat Gaming in A playing at the top of their game. RVM making it work on the left lane all the way over to the right, and he held on for life on that right side, keeping that turret up and healthy, and even managed to take down Tyron on that left side. I think we saw really a masterclass in performance performance from RBM in just this one moment. Well, great stuff out of RBM. And again, Chazmac, their first monthly finals victory, full stop in North America, for sure, the, the Brazilian team won. But this Toast team, I mean, that's huge, man. That's huge. So great performance by RBM, earning Chazmac's victory here with the rest of the squad, for sure. And also, as a side note, shout out to Charlie Mack and the Chaz Mack organization for sticking with the team. This squad has always had the juice, but this is the first time they bring home the trophy. Also, MVP for the guy with play of the day. I swear we didn't write it. Anyway, this is the way the World Finals race is looking at the moment. Zeta Reply and Navi are your EMEA representatives. Of course, Shadampo and Crazy Raccoon out of East Asia. And then Zest, DW, and Tribe are the ones representing South America and North America, respectively. So a little bit waiting on mainland China. But then, of course, we have our last chance qualifier. And these, Kenny, are all the squads vying for position. That is a lot of good teams on that screen. I mean, we see some good ones from EMEA, some that didn't even make it to the monthly finals this last month. There's a shakeup going on in SA West after today. Definitely check the VOD on that. Was quite the month to watch. And we saw ST Men win this thing today, a semi-final team from Worlds, and they're still only in the LCQ race. Going into halftime, a lot of these teams are going to have to evaluate, reevaluate what they're doing. And it's going to be a complete change. It all comes down to the line. We've got three months to go, and I can't wait because truly, I don't have the answers. I don't know if any of these teams, how they're going to turn out.
Well, I think that is ultimately why we turn up and tune in to all of this nonsense. Not nonsense, just chaos. That's the word I'm going to stick with. Anyway, that does it. Ready, set, last licks. Man, I mean, what an amazing series of storylines that we have wrapping up this sort of... uh, Season before the long break, we have s advancing to the throne again. We have CMG finally getting that victory. There's a whole lot to think about over this upcoming break. We know that Brawl Stars loves to change on a dime uh, month after month, so it's going to be a fun ride. And I'm going to check in with you guys in a couple of months and see just how much the game has changed. It certainly changes every single time we show up. But the one thing that doesn't is you guys out there in chat just being the best. Without you, we'd just be us. So shout out to you guys all the time for hanging out. Shout out to my co-commentators for doing all of the hard work. Shout out to the people behind the camera that keep the lights on. And like I said before, shout out to you, Brawl Stars Nation. Tune in next time, June 24th, 5 a.m. for the APAC Monthly Finals. Till next time, peace and much love to you. So powerful against slow cannon Bonnie. As the stun woman falls down, Janet takes to the sky, doesn't get the kill against Toast, and now the battle is the way of Toast. And that's all Chaz Mac needs to confirm the game, the set, and the match. Zuan has no gadgets, but does have some dodges. Toast with a final takedown. RBM and Fate constructing a fortress on the right side as Levy taken down. The spins are out, the pins are out. Chazmac Gaming NA are your monthly finals champions. Two kills on the side of stamina, and that should all but secure it. Elianas, just a dog with a gun. He's able to get one, but not two, and stamina get the whole dang match. Here could come a big move. Shine now with the dog back, pushes Patchy back, but he keeps on healing. It's Shine versus the world. Dog walkers could finish it out here. The spins are out, 10 seconds remain. Reconic Esports could bring it back, but the healing is just there, and dog walkers take the win. Chino pushing forward on the right-hand side. Patchy with long range, not gonna be able to catch up. And here comes Chino. Three seconds. Zars in the air. Bobby's tanky is all heck. And that's going to be it. STMN are your North American West victors for the month.